Good morning and welcome to the THQ Nordic live stream here, live obviously, at Gamescom 2022 in Germany. Good morning guys and girls, how are you doing this fine Friday? I'm doing pretty well, thank you for asking. I think where you live it could either be, like here in Germany, 10 a.m. or maybe where you live it's like 4 a.m. <laughs> where do you live? Where are you tuning in from and what uh, time is it where you live? Because I'm very curious who of you are watching it like the earliest time in the morning that's possible. And of course I'll be answering all of your questions so I hope you brought some with you. Uh, we waiting for games in Russia? Okay. And you're hungry. Well, that's something. Um, California, 1, 7 a.m. Why is he alone? That's a question I ask myself pretty often. <laughs> Sadness. What is planned for today? Well, you can get the schedule with the command exclamation mark schedule, and then you'll see what happens today. We'll take a look at it uh, together in one or two minutes. Mm. Lithuania, Texas, 3, 9 a.m. What the fuck are you doing <laughs> right now watching this? You should go to sleep. Oh, or maybe not. I shouldn't tell you to stop tuning in. Stay, Just stay here. Leave the stream open. Take a nap. Just enjoy it. Denmark, 10 in the morning. Good morning to you as well. They're going to reveal the new South Park game? I don't know. What's up, Daniel? What's up, GG Money 321? I hope you're doing great. Good morning from Norway. Next year I am at Gamescom. I can only advise you to go to Gamescom as a visitor um, every year, I suppose, because two years in a row now it didn't, it just wasn't here. Gamescom um, didn't happen. And now when it happens again, this year, it's, well, it's bigger than I expected, to be honest. The halls are more cramped. Um, last day, yesterday, it was the first day for the public, not only for press and so on, but for public. And it was, well, the thing is, in the halls, it was, it was okay, visitor-wise, but in the, where you, well, go from hall to hall, you know, there were so many, so many places where far too many people <laughs> wanted to go up the small stairs. So that was something. But aside from that, I think it's, it's less crowded than the games comes before this one. Are you doing AEW Fight Forever? Today, I'm not sure about that, but we will again stream one of the wrestling matches, the wrestling match that is today. So if you are patient and nice, you can watch the wrestling match at 5 p.m. CEST today here on stream. How is going to um, Gamescom as an only English speaker? It is pretty normal, I suppose, because I'm a native German speaker, obviously, but I <laughs> because I don't know whether people are native Germans or English speaking people. Um, I always start by saying hello. And then, cons considering how they react, I'll continue in German or English. But most people here speak English pretty well. Or try to at least. So you won't have a problem here speaking English. Mm. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. Waiting for Warhammer. I can't help you with that, sadly. Um, please show the customization for the car in recreation, please. It's a must. I think we will today. Let's take a look at today's schedule so I can help you all understand what you're going to experience at this stream this morning or this day. So at 10, spoiler alert, the morning show with me. At 10.30, we're taking a look at the booth and the different demo areas you can use to play the games we are showcasing here. Then at 11, there's Tempest Rising with me and Jakey. 11.30, a long slot 
um, from Spellforce, Conquest of EO, which I'm hyped for. Then 12.30, Outcast 2, with me and Unicorn. 2 p.m., it's SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake, with me and Mina Kicks. Then The Valiant, with me and the devs as well. So we're taking a, a closer look at the Valiant. Brad will be here as well. Then Recreation at 4 p.m., the booth tour with Dirk again. He'll stand in front of the Alone in the Dark booth and do some silly shenanigans with them. Destroy All Humans 2 reprobed at 4.30, 5 p.m., the live wrestling guys. Whoa! Then at 5.30, Piranha Bytes developer talk. Then Stuntfest, All Elite Wrestling, or um, I can't say for sure yet, but I think it will be All Elite Wrestling. I can't say for sure, so don't be too disappointed when it changes spontaneously. There are, it's live, everything is live here, and, well, things are changing by the minute. But you won't notice that. You'll just relax, you'll just hang back and enjoy what we're going to show you today. Mm. JC Vasco, I can't give you that, to be honest. That I cannot do. Um, I will see a new Sacred 4 game. Yes, yeah, Sacred is a pretty awesome franchise. I played the first and the second one, but I can't say anything about a fourth one, to be honest. I would like it as well, very much so, but I can't tell you anything about it because I don't know anything about it. Um, I wonder who's gonna fight. We had all the wrestlers fight yesterday. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, who do we have here? We've got Evil Uno. We've got... And that's that. We've got Cold Cabana. And we've got two more. I don't know their names, to be honest, because I'm not such a big wrestling guy. Angelico. We've got Angelico here. And one more. Peter Avalon is here as well. That just someone whispered in my ear and told me this information. So, but I don't know which of them will play or wrestle against which. Mm, can't believe Gamescom lasts until the 28th. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> this is the third day of streaming and I'm already wasted AF and tired. But do I look tired? On a scale of one to 10, do I look tired or do I look, yeah, how tired do I look on a scale of one to 10? Please let me know and be honest. Thank you very much. Nine? Well, fuck. <laughs> uh, waiting for remaster Destroy All Humans 2. Destroy All Humans 2 reprobed will happen, like I said, today at, I think, 4 p.m. Nope, 4.30 p.m. You look like you uh, need more sleep for today. Yeah, I mean, I could do a sleeping stream. I could, right now, if you want me to, just lay down on this couch, sleep for a bit, and you watch me while I do that. What do you think about that? <laughs> Where is Summoner? I don't know. Um, sleep stream. Yeah. Some people are going viral doing that. Maybe I can do that as well. But I don't think I can sleep very well with all this commotion behind me and I would definitely wake up when the wrestling fight starts because well you can't imagine how much is going on there when wrestling starts you can see the ring right now and all around that ring people were cramped up and jumping and screaming out of their lungs for their favorite wrestler I didn't know any of them but it was quite fun to watch, to be honest. Coffee is great. I need a coffee. That's true. I only have water here in front of me, so cheers, guys. Will you fight too? Do you think I, I, I had a chance? Do you think I would, would beat Evil Uno or Cold Cabana? Do you think I could? I've got a pretty big biceps, to be honest. So, did you follow Gamescom up until now? Did you watch some Gamescom um, streams like THQ Nordic? Did you only watch THQ Nordic? Which games are you most looking forward to that you've seen on Gamescom? Mm. Yeah, opening night and future games show, okay. 
Nice. Was there anything interesting? Dead Island 2? Dead Island 2 is coming? I played the first one. Isn't that the... Um, the zombie RPG on a, well, deserted island? Warhammer Dark Tide? I need to try that as well. I need, I definitely need to try that. Um, once I've got some off hours. Spellforce looks very interesting. Like I said, we've got one hour with the devs, I think at 11.30, so look forward to that. AEW Fight Forever, yeah. Um, Starfield, oh, I don't know anything about that. Hogwarts Legacy looks dope too. Yeah, it, it does. But have you ever thought about the author? And then... <laughs> Last case of Benedict Fox is pretty cool, though. Yeah. Tempest Rising is at 11. Yeah, it is. You're right. Mm, AEW and SpongeBob are my top picks. Yep. They are. They are pretty awesome. SpongeBob we'll see today, I think, as well. So, you're in luck. Um, what's, what did I type on here on my moderation cards? You want to see how they look? Here, that's how they look. Awesome, isn't it? Um, yeah. What's the THQ game you're most looking forward to? I, I think I read some some games. Wolfgang Van Pelt on Twitch writes The Valiant. Like I said, I have also have a dev interview with Brad from The Valiant today at, I think, 3 p.m. CEST. So look forward to that. Um, like I said as well, I often say like I said. I should stop doing that. Like I said, um, I've, I see here Twitch chat and YouTube chat. So if you write in either one of them, I can see your message and address it accordingly. Alone in the Dark looks good. It does indeed. Parish, SpongeBob, as mentioned previously, thank you, the fifth Viking, for assisting me. Maybe you should, like, throw me in some... <laughs> some some English words from now and then, just so I can use them in my speeches. Um, one of my highlights, and I think we can also experience that and definitely watch that today as well, are the developers of the games, the producers of the games, um, who are just so excited for their games. The twinkling, sparkling inner eyes when they talk about how cool their game is, what they did with the game and so on. That's pretty awesome to see. And I can't stop looking into their eyes when they sit here on this very place of the couch when crypto um, just like gets thrown away by me when someone needs to sit here. He's, how stupid is that? Just by the way, how stupid is it that some of the guys here, I don't know who it was, gave crypto the crypto mask? What the fuck, guys? Let's, <laughs> let's take that off. Wow. Yeah, now he's, he's the real crypto again. Um, Tempest Rising, yeah. You're doing well talking and directing. Thank you, Joven Caesar. Thank you for that compliment. Can you say that on live? Well, I just did. As I said <laughs> previously, um, I just did, to be honest. And no one kicked me out or threw me over the balcony here, so I think I'm good. I like crypto. I do as well. Um, oh, there are still the favorites from THQ. AEW, Stuntfest. Nobody said Stuntfest up until now. Stunfest looks pretty promising as well. Need more RTSs. Well, we've got two for you in store. Stop complaining. We've got the Valiant. We've got Tempest Rising. What even do you want more? A happy cub? You should be a happy cub and stop complaining. You deserve a follow for that. For what? For drinking a glass of water? Thank you very much. I don't know if there's any command for my social media. Maybe they did that, maybe not. Nope. The tech guy said, nope. <laughs> there's no command for your social media, Daniel. That's a sad story. But the commands we do have are exclamation mark schedule, which will show you. What do you reckon? 
what'll show the command exclamation mark schedule? Maybe you can guess. Yeah, right, the schedule. Thank you very much. And we've got commands for all the different content creators that will come over this day. There are, I think, three or four different ones joining me on the couch here and some devs, like I said. Exclamation mark hydrate. Nope, that's not a command, but I should hydrate. You're right. I need a list of THQ games from Gamescom. You can find lots of games mentioned in the schedule, but I don't know if we've got a full list of them right now for you to look at. Is THQ working on any Disney IP? I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. And I really don't know. Best games that will showcase today for me on the Dark Outcast 2 and Destroy All Humans 2 reprobed. Yeah. But I want to see Darksiders. I'm terribly sorry. I, I'm not in charge of the developers. I'm not in charge of, of, of giving people the job to do Darksiders 4 or do some other game. If I walk up to them, if I walk up to the CEO of THQ Nordic and tell him, Hey, Jörg Georg from YouTube Chat told me that you should definitely start developing a new Dawn of War game. I think he probably wouldn't say, okay, let's go. I think instead he would say, what the fuck do you want? Please leave my property. <laughs> and that's not, that's not a thing I'm going to do. I mean, I, I will leave his property if he demands me to, but I won't um, ask him to develop a new game. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. When is Piranha Bytes and when is Alchemia Interactive devs? Um, Piranha Bytes will be on at 5.30 today with their developer talk. Jenny Pankratz is here, Björn Pankratz is here, and two others. <laughs> I think I forgot their names. But... Both of the Pankratzes and two others, two more people, will be here on this very couch. I'll be gone for that slot. They'll just kick me out, but, well, I'm happy to do a break once in a while. Um, you could try asking nicely. I definitely could. Maybe my charm... Is charm a word in English? I don't know. Will... Will... Um, will make them to. What you think about everywhere... I love everywhere, to be honest. DDGX28. Charm, yes. Okay, awesome. Um, are there any other questions I can answer you? I can help you with? Because, well, that's my job. And if we please could um, go to the live chat, guys, um, in the tech room, and not only show the top chat so I can see more of the messages, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah. And one more question I have written on my very smart moderation card is, have you seen the wrestling match yesterday? Because I've seen many more of you tune in for the wrestling match. Of course, it's maybe more suspenseful and exciting and so on than me talking about the morning routine. But uh, yeah, who of you has watched the wrestling yesterday. Yes! Um, many people, many people did watch it. Um, what time is it over there? 4.25 a.m. where I'm from. Yeah, well, enjoy the night shift. I hope I can make it more fun for you. Was there wrestling? Yeah, the fifth Viking. Um, there was a live wrestling match, too, in fact, behind me, right behind me on that wrestling ring. Maybe we can show that again. And on there, we've, we had the two wrestling matches live. And today there'll be another one at 5 p.m. So if you like wrestling, if you like watching muscular men that are half naked going at each other, that's the content you're here for. 
what is the one gaming moment that made you happy? I've had many gaming moments that made me happy. For example, my promotion to Diamond in my League of Legends climb. That was a pretty happy moment. Or <laughs> let me think about more happy moments. <laughs> um, uh, starting a new Quantic Dream game is also always cool. Or hearing about Spellforce, Conquest of EO being here and me being able to interview the devs of Spellforce, Conquest of EO because I'm a sucker for turn-based strategy and I will ask the hell out of the devs when we have the slot this morning. So I'm very excited for that as well. That's a happy gaming moment. Um, yeah, what do we have here in chat? What more is there to answer? Um, hello, Daniel. Hello, Lena. LL Cupido is in the Twitch chat. Greet her, please. She's the main host from yesterday. My wonderful co-host, Lena, is in the Twitch chat. So if you want to say hello, YouTube chat, then you need to go over to the Twitch chat. Um, are you missing me already? I always miss you, Lena. There's not a day, not a minute, not a second I don't miss you. Um, more VR games, please, and thank you. I'll try my best, Dark Angel 3. I'll try my best. I'll go tell them exactly that. I'll go tell them more VR games, please, and maybe that'll help. Yes, Daniel's missing more people to talk with in the studio, yeah. But I'm, I can talk to you guys. You're here, so I'm not alone. It's, maybe it's weird for other people if one would just waltz right in here and see me talking to a camera and if he doesn't know that I'm live he'll probably think that man is bonkers but because you're there I feel safe and I think I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm fine um, is there a quiz again um, this afternoon this afternoon there'll be a quiz a booth quiz in fact um, over alone in the dark but well, that's this afternoon and not right now. What games are you most excited for? I think of all the games we're showcasing here from THQ Nordic, it would be... Oh, there, there are many good picks. I love medieval or fantasy settings. So Spellforce, of course, is because I'm a turn-based strategy fan. I think is right up there. Then the Valiant looks pretty promising as well because I love, like I said, medieval games and it's also a strategy game, so that's that. The sci-fi gun setting of Tempest Rising isn't my cup of tea, but it's also a great game, just not one I would prefer to play. Um, SpongeBob looks fun as well. AEW, I don't think it's for me. <laughs> But there are many great games, and many of the games Alone in the Dark is one I need to play. I need to play immediately. Maybe I'll just stand up now, go to the gameplay area and play it. <laughs> because I'm really excited for Alone in the Dark as well. But yeah, I think that'll be my picks. Um, add in some game keys next time. What we can do... What we can do is, in the course of this day, I think we can do some raffles over the course of this day. Raffles for game keys. I can't promise you or tell you which ones, which keys I can raffle, but I can, I can, I think, and definitely I can say that we're going to give away some game keys during the stream. Not right now, but at a later slot, because I need to, well, discuss that with the other guys, but I think we can do that. I think we can do some raffles over the course of this stream, so uh, stay tuned for that. I think in the next two or three slots we should be able to uh, do a raffle. Um, let's right now not do a raffle because there's something else that needs to be going on because we just talked about the schedule. We just talked about what we've seen today or yesterday in the stream, what we've seen from the games. But I want to soon show you 
how the booth looks because as you see behind me there is a there no there there's a big LED screen over there with, I think, SpongeBob gameplay going on. Here's a very big LED wall behind me, which just, well, it is in the way. Let's, <laughs> let's leave it at that. It's just in the way. But there's an LED wall where you can, from outside, look at and be in awe because there are cool gameplay demos showed there. Um, and the booth is far bigger than what you can see from here. And Dirk, my co-host today, will soon show you what it's like being at Gamescom, being live here at Gamescom, and looking at the THQ booth. But I don't think he's ready to go yet because... Oh, he is ready. Someone whispered gently in my ear that he is ready, so... He will see the chat, I think, as well. So if you've got any questions or you want him to go somewhere, just tell him. Just tell him. And enjoy a closer look at the THQ Nordic booth at Gamescom and the different demo areas. Mm, and a very good morning and a warm welcome from you too, guys. Nice to not meet you actually but nice to have you here nice to be here at this fantastic booth as daniel already said my name's turk and i'm very happy to host this booth tour for you i got the chat right now here in front of me good morning lena and i don't know if there's anyone watching right now who might have been watching the stream in 2019 because 2019 i used to be up there in that studio where Daniel is waving to me right now. And I did the show for five days straight, 10 hours per day. And we had some amazing games there too. I think that was the premiere of Destroy All Humans, as in Destroy All Humans 1. Right now we already have Destroy All Humans 2 here at the booth. But let's not spoil too much. I can just say this is probably, this is probably the coolest booth all over Gamescom and I'll show you around a little bit so that you know what you're missing when you're not here. Um, if you're from Germany, of course, you could, you could still get a ticket and maybe come here, but only on Sunday because Saturday is already sold out. Um, if not, then just check out the rest of the stream during the whole week like we're uh, live, I think, every day from around 10 to 6, 7, 8 p.m. German time. And um, yeah, we show you all the games we have here at the THQ Nordic booth and also the fantastic booth itself. And I'm standing here right in front of the fighting ring. And why I want to start here is because yesterday, who did watch the stream yesterday when the wrestling action was on? Maybe just check with a plus or a minus in the chat. I just want to know because if you missed it, you definitely got to check out the VOD or the clips from yesterday because that was really such a cool event and probably one of the biggest events uh, all over the Gamescom, uh, Gamescom halls, right? You know, there's concerts and everything here, but the wrestling action, I don't know if I've ever seen so many people this year at Gamescom gathered at one place. They were all crowded around this uh, stage here, so anyone? Yeah, Lena, Lena, of course, saw it because she, she did the show, um, but it was indeed crazy. It was indeed crazy. You know, there were professional wet wrestlers in that ring, and I can already tell you that today there's going to be another wrestling show, to, so definitely make sure to tune in again because that's really, really a cool thing to see. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have anything special you want to see, but... I will just walk around and take a look myself because I haven't had the time to like look properly. If you want to uh, come with me and follow me in secret, you can see there's one, only one that we're steering right at it. There's only one booth we're not allowed to go in. That's the Alone in the Dark booth here. And um, what you can see in there is exclusively for Gamescom right now. So if you're not here, too bad. You won't, you won't, you won't be able to see it yet, but it's definitely about to come. Um, and right next to it, there's Recreation. Did you know who are also responsible for breakfast 
they have another one coming up and if you want we can take a look at the recreation booth over there maybe maybe somehow we manage to sneak in there and take a closer look if you're interested um, if you want to see one of the other booths just write it in the chat I'll make sure to watch it and um, have a have a look and try to consider your personal wishes and um, this is the best moment always when you're able to like skip the lines and just go straight along the people so follow me if you want to play recreation you gotta head through this tunnel here and now my camera guys will be in trouble because the light is so much darker here I will head forward the light is a little better here and we'll have just a brief look on what is going on here um, this RTHQ Nordic stuff and they're heading right away from us um, so when you're here at Gamescom you'll be able to play the game in one of those fantastic seats here right you're right in the driver's seat right now as no one is still entering the premise here I can leave my phone there I hope and no one will steal it and then you inside here uh, and you'll be able to play okay everything secured and locked so unfortunately so that's gonna be difficult because if I you know I have one I actually only know one possibility to store my microphone right now for you to be able to still hear me and that's a pretty inappropriate position <laughs> okay that's not that's not working <laughs> Okay, let's see here, guys. Um, I just want head, to head quickly into the game. Uh, I want to see how the experience is. It doesn't work. Or it, it doesn't work yet. Oh no, too bad. We can't start yet. I would have loved to play it here. Oops. Okay, I'm making. I, I'm destroying everything. I gotta leave. So that's where you'll be able to play it, like in a real driver's seat. That's really um, cool feature in terms of booth building and I definitely love that about the THQ Nordic booth it's so full of details you know if you can just um, show, show the corner over there um, Fabian they have they have like real car parts just I don't know wherever they got them and they just stored them here it makes it so much more authentic and there's another pile of uh, a pile of rubber I must say and um, yeah that's really really cool we gotta head out of here and we'll um, just wander around the booth and show it from the other side and right here as you can see there's some camping going on there's some camping going on and people are actually waiting in line for other games to play aha maybe we can ask them Hi guys, can I just ask you, what game are you waiting for right now? What game is it? Uh, Alone in the Dark. Uh -huh. You love Alone in the Dark? Uh, yes. Okay. I must tell you, unfortunately, you're a little bit too early here, because at my next booth tour, I'm going to have a Q quiz, and that Q quiz will allow people who are like in this position to fast forward to the front of the line but not right now that's really bad isn't it no yeah. but you like you like waiting in line I see you're, you're really prepared yeah <laughs> that's that's the spirit you know always bring your own chair thank you guys enjoy 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 the game um, we'll just head over and I definitely want to go over to the Spongebob booth because Spongebob was also one of the titles we had here in 2019 but it was the I wouldn't, say, wouldn't, I wouldn't say the prequel, but it was um, the remake of the original game. And now we have uh, the follow-up, the Cosmic Shake. I don't know. So I definitely want to go in there and see how it looks there, whether or not they have real... What, what will they have there? Sponges? I don't know. What the booth builders created might be interesting. Last year, the studio was in some kind of aquarium. So... The glass window of the studio was the aquarium where I don't know. Supposedly, maybe SpongeBob is um, is living. I don't know, but um, yeah, this is the booth over here, and maybe 
Fabian can now show you this fantastic exterior of the booth. And once again, I must say, I'm so pretty amazed how this thing looks. You know, it looks like, it looks like a freaking amusement park and they just build it for this week of Gamescom. And they build it, I don't know, in a few weeks of time. We saw the last days of construction down here and it was, so, it was really, really cool to watch how they um, transformed like a rough building structure into this piece of art, I must say. But actually, it's really full there, so I don't know how we can get in there. We gotta be creative somehow. So, uh, Fabian, how about your flying abilities? Can you fly a bit for me? No worries, okay, cool. We'll try that. Uh, guys, are you cool with uh, watching the SpongeBob booth? Do you wanna have a look in there? Or do you wanna see something else? We can still, I mean, I can still take, um, I can still take wishes if you want. Can you mime a mermaid? Ah, so did you did you get in there, Lena, on your booth tour last time? I don't know. We gotta. So what, what can we do? Uh, maybe maybe over there. Maybe over there. There's a hole in the uh, in the breach. I, I will see. I will see. Okay, guys, we gotta just uh, quickly. We just gotta quickly move through here because we want to take a look in the inside. Can I? Can we come in, please? Thank you very much. What are you standing in line for? Uh, for SpongeBob the Cosmic Shake. Uh -huh. Did you play the uh, the other game, the other yes, SpongeBob game? Yeah, I it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah. And and now, um, did you did you have a look at uh, what the game offers for you? Uh, yeah, I've even seen already the demo, demo being played yesterday, or was it two days ago? Okay, so you're playing again here. I've seen it. I've seen it by THQ, uh, by the uh, by the live stream. I see. Yeah, we are on the live stream. Oh, hi. Uh, <laughs> So this is this is like a, a real interesting um, uh, move, like from watching the live stream to being in the live stream. Cool. Yeah, it's it's weird now. So so what 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 what's next? Will you develop the next game? No, no, I don't think I will go to uh, Austria. Where's Purple Lamp? Um, are you are you maybe into speed running on um, the game? Uh, I might. It depends on what the movement has to. You know, I, I, like Rehydrated has some busted things, so maybe. Because last year we were discussing with the um, speedrunning community and what they told me was like when the remake came, they were really worried that all the glitches and bugs, they were just, you know, they were fixed and then they couldn't do their speedruns no, uh, anymore. And um, as I've been told, they, they yeah, they, they did it, but they put, they, they put some of them, they put some of them back in, in on purpose. Isn't that cool? Yeah, but they also busted it on day one, didn't they, with the uh, menu glitch. Like with, like with, was not even day zero. The game was on the come out. They busted it open. Thirty seconds a minute. What was it? That is really a speed run. Yeah. I hope you can speed run um, this uh, line here and skip okay. to the head of it. We we try to get our way into it, but uh, enjoy the game later. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay. Um, so we'll just try to get in here somehow. Let's see. We'll just want to take a look inside. Hi, guys. We're from the uh, official THQ Nordic live stream, and you're live on Twitch right now. Yeah. What's yeah. up, Twitch? How, how, uh, 100 prime Twitch subs. Yeah. To whom? <laughs> to me? <laughs> no, no. How's the crowd behaving here? How the crowd is? Yeah, it's fine, man. Um, it's pretty chill. It's pretty early, so uh -huh. that's that. But if there's one thing I can say, yeah. please get your wristbands. I know it's really annoying, but yeah, we have to, like, you got it, right? See, everybody's over six years old, <laughs> but man. You, but you can't give them out, right? I can't, nah, I can't. Okay, so if, if someone's here, like, who's looking, he's 40, and he doesn't have a wristband, you can't let him in? Sadly not, yeah. We did it the last days, but then we got, like, yeah. uh, uh, like the boss tell, tell, told us right. to not do it, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, as you said, rules are the rules, so you're just doing your job, that's fine. So guys, <laughs> that's just a tip, if you're coming to Gamescom, you gotta get your wristbands, or otherwise, you will, you will be, on paper, too young to play SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, basically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But what can I say? Thank you anyways, uh, enjoy the rest of Gamescom, and we'll take a look at the booth, right? Okay, let's have a look here, guys. Where are we arriving? Okay, this time, 
as you can see, this time it's not an aquarium. This time it's more uh, of, uh, of a housing of a building. And guys are playing here on multiple stations. I would say it's about, what is it, 20? Maybe 20, somewhere around 20. Are you guys excited for SpongeBob SquarePants for the new game? I hope so. Uh, let me know. Expert talk. Yeah, that's what definitely it was expert talk. Um, we only have experts here at the booth. I will interview only experts. They are experts in guarding the booth. They are experts in standing in line to play a game. And they're doing that really well, I must say. So um, that's, that's actually pretty, pretty fantastic. Um, yeah, once again, I think this is... I don't know if you have, have, do you have a chance to look at all the details. You know, there's, there's wood everywhere. Even the lamps, you know, they fit in so well. I'm not an interior designer, I must say. That's not my strong suit. But to have a look at it and just to wonder how they're doing this, that's really, really a cool thing. Um, and somehow, we got to manage to get out here and have a closer look at the rest of the booth. I think we're almost out of time, actually. Okay. What else, guys? What else are you, uh, do you want to see? We still have, like, five minutes time. We can have a look at one more booth. And, oh, we, we also got some uh, merch to give away. Maybe we can do that. What games do we have here? What games is it? Okay, it's uh, Alone in the Dark. It's Destroy All Humans 2. Um, and wrestling, yeah, maybe. Okay, so let's check out. Maybe we find the aliens here. There's some cryptos walking around the booth. Maybe we can head just over there real quick. Guys, can you let us through, please? We need you just somewhere here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, don't try this at home or at all. Okay, please join us here. Everything has to be in order. Don't skip the line, guys. I'm doing this. I'm allowed to do it. You're not. Okay, one more. Ah, okay, we're almost through. That was elegant. Thank you very much. So everyone's helping us out. Even though I am skipping the line here, they could be they could be mad at me, but they're not. I like that. So let's head over to um, the crypto over there. I definitely love it. It's one of my personal favorite franchises here at the THQ Nordic booth. I love the crypto aliens. I love the crypto cosplays. And um, as I said, maybe they're working around here somewhere. Last year, they just raided my stream at some point. I didn't know that was going to happen, but they did, and uh, yeah, it was pretty. It, it was pretty spectacular and worrisome for me, I must say. So have a look over there. That's the uh, destroy all humans. I, I always want to say the destroy all humans booth, but all of this, remember, is the THQ Nordic booth with like multiple stages and I, I, I want to say theme parks here. That's just so. <laughs> I'm, I'm still very amazed. Imagine coming into this hall and having a look at this fantastic booth and being just totally overwhelmed by it. Um, yeah, this year is really cool. So congratulations again to uh, the booth builders. And um, I'm sorry, Lena, I won't, do, I won't be doing the mermaid, but we can maybe do it together tomorrow. I don't know if you want to. Um, so let's see. Destroy all humans too, reprobed. Sure, the anal probe is probably back, right? And he is Cryptosporidium. Um, right from his spaceship. That's really looking so cool, right? Um, let's see here. Do you think that those guys over there in the line, that they would be happy to win something from... from Destroy All Humans 2? I think so. And we do have mouse pads here, and maybe we can have one of those mouse pads to raffle right now. Thank you very much. And I will have one of them impersonate a mouse, or maybe two of them, and the one who does it better wins the mouse pad. That's good, right? Guys, can I talk to you for a minute? Do you want to win something? I don't really know. You don't know because you don't don't know what you got to do, right? Uh, okay, so you're here for destroy humans too. 
That's an easy question. Come on, you can do it. Uh, no? I don't can really hear much. <laughs> ah, okay. It's too loud here. Okay, I can, I can shout louder. No worries. So, you here for Destroy All Humans too? I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. Okay, so this is probably not our candidate. Do you want to play for something? Do you want to play a game? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so first question was, are you here for Destroy Humans 2? Yeah. Yeah. So that's an easy question, right? Um, I got something here. It's a mouse pad. Yeah. Destroy Humans 2 reprobe mouse pad. And I do want to raffle it. Okay. But people need to do stuff for it. Okay, and as this is a mouse pad, I need you to impersonate a mouse as best as you can. You want to do that? A mouse. Yeah. So do you? So do do you? No, like a mouse, like a like a real like a mouse, a walking mouse, okay. like Mickey Mouse. Ha! Ah, but not Mickey Mouse, like a random mouse. Can you do one mouse? And if you're good enough, you will earn the uh, mouse pad. But whatever you want to do, it's your it's whatever you want to do. It's your personal decision to. It's your performance, right? I don't want to. I, I mean, I'm not the creative director here. You're just you like you're the star of the show, right? Okay. Yo, go ahead, please. You need you need the microphone, or you just is it a body performance, or you need the microphone? Okay. Uh, no, okay, cool. Then please go ahead. Yeah. We are seeing a mouse from what's your name? Alex. Yeah, we're seeing a mouse from Alex now. The best mouse he can do. Please go ahead. The camera's on you. Okay. There was a scary mouse, actually. Which, which kind of mouse was it? A German mouse. <laughs> a German mouse. OK, so this is a not German mouse, but you've earned it. A loss here. Very good, Alex. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of Gamescom. Thank you very much. That was good. He did good, right? So clap, chat. Clap. I hope you, I hope you uh, appreciate the effort here. I think he did really well. Maybe we can see more mouse impos uh, impersonations. For the, uh, that's, that would be good. Let's see here. Um, yeah, a German mouse. It was a German mouse. Was it, was it really German? I don't know. Um, I don't know how to evaluate that. Um, but yeah, we won't take a look inside this booth, unfortunately, because we're running out of time right now. But you definitely uh, uh, will have a look at it later. One of those booth tours, I'll make sure to show you the inside of Destroy Humans 2 Repro booth, because I just want to see it myself. So, as easy as it is. Right now, we will let's let's move ahead, just real quick, because I don't want to stand like in front of this wall. I want to stand right next to Crypto. Oh, I, I can't touch him. I think I can't touch him. So I want to stand next to Crypto without touching him, because if not, he will probably probe me, and I'm not up for that right now because it's too early in the morning. But we'll head into a short five-minute break, roughly five minutes, and then we're back with more program. We are live all day, all week here at Gamescom at the THQ Nordic live stream. Thank you very much, and see you in a few minutes. Hold the phone. What are these freaks want? Crypto! The Blisk! Blisk? Wait a minute. I, I thought we wiped the Blisk out. I have no explanation. But a few of them must have somehow survived! Not for long. Attention, Blisk. I am Cryptosporidium of the planet Furon. This planet is now a territory of the Furon Empire. And your asses belong to me. to fill me in on this whole Blisk thing, Pox. They're huge, hideous brutes with giant claws and withering alitosis. Imagine a cockroach mating with a lobster. Oi, enough already. You're making me queasy. Yeah, well, 
Don't you worry your virtual little head, Fox. This time they're going down for good. You want to get the disease, you have to shoot the spores. Let's throw you! Destroy them! Starting with their crashed warship. Bring on the Boom Boom! You are so cute when you do that. You saved the princess. Er, Natalia. You should probably go over and, you know, make sure she's alright or something. I think little Crypto just woke up. Told you. Look at all those snails the I monster kidnapped. Look, it's Gary. So how do we save Gary without that monster snail seeing us? Gary is the monster snail. Huh? They grow up so fast, don't they? These massive amounts of candy bars must have given him a sugar rush. We can't take him back home like this. We have to cut off his candy supply first. Already on it, buddy. <laughs> Extras were very convincingly beating me up.
Strike initializing. Please stand by. Land across your Asia, most heavily infected with Apollo. You have proven yourself loyal to me so far, General. Dynasty has waited long enough. Show me that my trust is not misplaced. Stop, we will uh, press and begin. Welcome back to the TH Nordic live stream here live at Gamescom 2022. You just saw Dirk exploring and showing you all of the booths and demo areas around our THQ Nordic booth. And while that was happening, two guys joined me here on the couch to the left, and that's Jill, uh, Jakey. Jakey, yeah, correctly. I, I say Jakey, right? Yeah, Jakey is totally fine. Jill is like real life name, but in the internet, everyone knows me about Jakey. So I'm in the gaming scene for like more than 10 years at this time. I go old games, uh, yeah. eSport. Normally shooter, but also ATS in my start beginning in, con uh, in the gaming community. So. Well, awesome. Then this game should be right up your alley. And beside him sits Jonathan, one of the developers of the game. Hello. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you so much. What's your function in the company? So I work as a 3D artist for uh, Slipgate Ironworks, the developers of uh, Tempest Rising, mm -hmm. uh, being co-developed by uh, 2B Games and published by THQ Nordic and Free the Realms. Awesome. And we're going to check out Tempest Rising. Many of you at home um, wanted to see this, and I think we can please you now. Ooh. This is the main menu oh. screen, and you just I'm exited sorry. the game. Just, awesome. I'm sorry. Um, let's, let's start Tempest again. <laughs> I just want to go back, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens. That was the fun part, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that um, you just saw our, our cool um, PC screen, and now you'll see the main menu again. We go on onto the campaign, sure. and we want to show you the first campaign mission. We can only play as the global defense forces here, right? We'll play hard, smart, or normal. What? Just play normal here. Just play normal, okay. <laughs> So yeah, at the beginning in my life, I was uh, the first game sort of play was also like Worms and later Command Conquer. So go to oh, RTS okay. and then to Warcraft, and then I go to the shooter scene at this time. So so yeah, like like you said, this is um, well, I don't want to compare it um, too much to Command and Conquer, sure. but it's there's an it's an homage to Command and Conquer, isn't it? Yeah, we see it as a uh, spiritual successor uh, to those old uh, 80s games, uh, RTS games. Oh, KKND Crossfire? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that was good old times. So, like, the game has been in development for three years, uh, yeah. but the idea for the game has been, like, up for much longer yeah, so than that, uh, because we just love the old RTS games and wanted to, like, make that again, uh, since we had, like, a dry period yeah. of those kinds of classic uh, RTS games. So we're just so happy, like, to actually finally get to working on one and showcasing it to, uh, to you guys. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to see to seeing what the combat looks like, but what's up with him? Who is he? What's his role? What's his deal? What is he telling us right now? So this is Commander, uh, Com Commander Fisher, uh, the uh, military head for the GDF, because the GDF is uh, actually um, being controlled by a uh, board of directors, and he's like the uh, head of the uh, military part of that. 
Uh, so the uh, GDF is uh, Global Defense Forces, uh, mainly uh, being the United States and Western uh, Europe. Uh, the world is taking place in an altered history, where in uh, the Cuba crisis, instead of it resolving like we uh, remember it, uh, it uh, ended in a nuclear war, devastating the Earth, uh, and uh, GDEF uh, sprung up uh, as one of the uh, uh, main factions taking over, uh, because it uh, is comprised of uh, uh, a lot of countries who wasn't like uh, totally destroyed uh, too much about the nuclear waste. Um, I see. So it's like in the real world at the like year 2040 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Awesome. And he's just telling us about our mission. This Sam Fisher, one in the YouTube chat says he looks like my Korean uncle. <laughs> Was <laughs> yeah. there any inspiration for the face of of, his, of Mr. Fisher? No, like it's it's more like getting a utilitarian look and get something that also shows like he is a bit uh, like his skin's not like extremely perfect because we have this nuclear w uh, fallout. So some oh. of that also in fact uh, like have, has, uh, has affected the population. That's interesting that you take these things into consideration when designing a face. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. And the cutscenes, what do you think about the cutscenes? It looks Jakey? really, really nice. So also the positioning for the camera looks like perfect. It's a little bit Half-Life feeling at the beginning where he's talking to you and the start scene. So it feels really, really deep in the game. Yeah. So, so one of the things we wanted to go through with these cinematics is just to get you into the ambience and like a little uh, preview of like wh where the mission takes place and uh, what is going on. Uh, uh, one thing we're really trying with Tempest Rising is getting that uh, visual fidelity uh, being really detailed and stuff. So in this trailer or in this uh, cinematic cut, all of the assets we're seeing, uh, for example, this tank or the uh, riflemans are all uh, the same asset we're using in game. The same level of detail, we're not switching anything out. Uh, it's the same character. Of course, the cinematics has been uh, pre-rendered uh, with some post-processing and stuff like that. But when it comes to like all the assets and the textures and stuff like that, it's the same you will see in game. So we have really like tried to push this uh, high fidelity, high quality into our game. Yeah. <coughs> and it worked. Yeah. It worked. It worked. Like obviously. We're so surprised like how well it actually worked with the with the new technology we're having today. Like just being able to do this uh, is amazing for us. And it looks it looks awesome. It you looks amazing. It's really nice. Also the details here, like with a little bit of dust is flying up. Oh, we have a happy first. Oh, we have first find contact here. That's yes. that poor guy just wanted to take a pee in the <laughs> in the bushes. So we are, <laughs> yeah. So we are inf infiltrating a dynasty uh, a base uh, taking place in Iceland. Yeah. So I landed like with four soldiers and try to find maybe the base or something else, players. Yeah. Right? It's you, okay. Is there also multiplayer? Yeah, or? Uh, yeah, so the game is planned to have uh, two campaigns, one for the GDF and one for the Dynasty, mm -hmm. and also launching with a, a full multiplayer with three playable factions. Oh, uh, awesome. And uh, with rank player too. What is the third faction? Can you already tell us that? Uh, we can't really uh, tell you that right now. We, oh. are, we are saving that for later. <laughs> I see. <laughs> These are the good questions that developers can't answer right now. But yeah, I see. I see why. And there are very, uh, there are many red barrels standing right there. Maybe it's stupid to set up a base so close to red barrels. Yeah, yeah put, put your tanks kind of <laughs> <laughs> close to it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the dynasty wasn't ready for this attack. <laughs> but they'll not be there in the final cut of the game. Will there they? might be, there might be some here and there. But uh, for this demo, we wanted to uh, show you a bit more than you may, uh, may usually see in the uh, first mission. Uh, just like to give you some more than just uh, a few units, but actually giving you a bit more in-depth look on uh, our units and uh, how the gameplay is going to be if, uh, also throughout the uh, campaign. I see, okay. I like also the drones here, it looks like the really future, man. Yeah, so that's our drone operators, the small guys with the uh, pistols. They have a drone, they deploy, uh, and it works as an anti-tank uh, unit. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. 
So if the drone is shooting down, they get a new one, or should I need a new unit for that? Uh, they will recharge over some time, ah, and yeah, they will yeah. launch a new one. Um, Siblek ask, uh, asks, can you play this with a controller, though? I don't think so. No, we don't currently have controller <laughs> support, unfortunately. It's, it's difficult for RTSs to do controller support, is it? Isn't yeah. it? yeah. The controllers are not ready. Yeah. Not the games. <laughs> <laughs> so I see, like, the Steam controller, you can play every game with what have a mouse. Oh. You have like touch screen on the controller. I see. Yeah. On the Steam Deck, I don't know, but the uh, Steam Deck is like going for RTS games anymore every day. So maybe this will be in the future a good way for that. There's some uh, red barrels, barrels you can shoot here. Uh, oh, yeah. But it's okay, so. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> don't and you I get a tank, yeah! Oh, yes. now you get a tank! So, so now since we destroyed the uh, SAM side, we are able to have a deployed some more units. So what we're seeing here is our medium tank, or hunter tank as it's called in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, just as a normal tank like we know from any RTS games, like your standard units. Then we have our specialist, the one on the, uh, the right side of him. Uh, so we have these kinds of specialists. Uh, these units have uh, specialized areas. For the, uh, for instance, this is our riot medic. So he specializes in uh, suppressing and healing units on your team. Okay, uh, these I kinds see. of units you cannot have like a hundred of, uh, or like a, a, lo a large amount of them. Uh, they're more reserved to being like a few uh, units you have, so that you don't like spam any yeah. uh, like. They also like um, paper stone. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, we're definitely going for that like rock, paper, scissor uh, model uh, of uh, doing gameplay mm -hmm. where units are not like completely overpowered but they are helpful in certain situations. So having a roster of uh, a lot of different units is better than having a lot of one unit. Yeah, yeah that's sure. smart. That's smart game development. So it's not only building uh, tanks and you can win easily, it's like more like you need a good mix up from everything here. Yeah. 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 Will there be any sea and naval units, someone asked in the chat? Uh, currently, we don't have planned any uh, naval uh, units in the game. Okay. But we have, uh, of course, vehicles, uh, infantry, and aerial. And aerial units as well? Yes. Okay, awesome. So also like a uh, hero unit? Uh, that's the specialist we're having. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. They're not a hero, as like uh, we might know for some other uh, RTS games, but they kind of work as an infantry unit, so they're still uh, a bit squishy uh, and not like specialized in that way that you mm -hmm. have a certain character with name. Uh, it's more like, oh, this unit just has a little bit more uh, abilities than the others. Yeah. Okay, I see. So like a sniper yeah. who's coming from back and can shoot single units. Yeah, for example, yes. The game, you establish it already, is a nod to the old Command & Conquer franchise. But what does it improve on in contrast to the old Command & Conquer games? So one thing we're doing is, for example, the specialist having that more speci specialized uh, units. We also have uh, tiers going up where like uh, units will change uh, considerably. Uh, there will be more experimental units, uh, giving more uh, special abilities and special uh, tactics uh, you have to employ to play the game. Okay, I see. Uh, other than that, we also have a sort of uh, RG, uh, RPG uh, element to the game. Oh. So when we were in the briefing scene with our Commander Fisher, we had the ability to choose uh, upgrades. Uh, uh, yeah, he asked me some questions, I can answer like a six uh, answer race. Also yeah. asked uh, specific questions to the crest, so... He's like helping and all the stuff, right? Uh, sorry, can I? And, um, he asked me some questions. I can have many answer possibilities. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, for instance, uh, the uh, briefing scene also contains these uh, multiple branching, uh, branching uh, questions. You can ask them just to give you some idea of what kind of uh, mission you're going into, what you should be prepared for. Also, some lore, lore stuff in there to figure out how the TDF, for example, views the dynasty and how the dynasty in the, the, their campaign, you'll hear how they think of themselves and think of the TDF. Uh, we're not going for a good guy versus bad guy. It's not mm -hmm. like dynasty is the uh, ultimate the, the bad guy or the TDF is the ultimate good guy. Uh, it's kind of a gray zone because uh, they're fighting over this resource and they have their own reasoning for that. Uh, that makes sense like for them and uh, you will get to know that when you play the game. Okay. Is there like a special resource I need uh, to build units? 
so right now we're just so, uh, here we're just showing off the units you can like go around destroy some stuff and like here but in the next clearing you will get to you'll you'll see some uh, uh, okay. base building sure okay it will also be a great part of the game i imagine yeah, yeah. it's one of the our well, focus areas getting that base building also down just like having a campaign from the old games like you go through with some units and uh, destroy some things and then you can get to have your base establishing it getting into the uh, enemy territory yeah, you someone asking what I do at the first uh, KKND Crossfire. It's like, it's, it feels like a little bit like that. The graphic style is really insane. But uh, KKND was like with aliens. I think you don't have aliens at all, or? Uh, no. no. Not, not. <laughs> <laughs> but they are maybe coming. Well, this looks like here's some alien stuff or something like that. So that's the uh, Tempest Root, the resource they're Tempest fighting root. over. Oh, so okay. after the nuclear war, like the uh, earth is, it began to crack with these big cracks opening and these vines coming up, growing these fruits on them, uh, which uh, turned out to be a extremely high uh, source of energy mm -hmm. uh, that they are wanting to get to con uh, the control over. Uh, and that's the whole conflict of the game, like getting this resource and uh, having control over it. Okay, but yeah, understandable. Everyone yeah, wants that resource to be stronger. What can you do with that resource just for war purposes or... So the GDF is a, a utilitarian a kind of a faction. So they see it as a way to solve the energy crisis after oh, the world war. That's honorable. Yeah, uh, while the dynasty, which is uh, the eastern part of Europe and uh, Asia, uh, the parts that's been most hit by uh, nuclear fall and where most of the tempest has grew up, see it more as their birthright, uh, since uh, like they suffered so much from the nuclear okay. war. They see these tempest vines growing in their land uh, as a uh, birthright. So they have a more spiritual connection to the uh, tempest. Ah, okay. I, I see. That's what you meant by everyone has their reasons yes. to get those. Um, let's talk a bit about the, the combat itself. Audrey underscore lol asks, holy cow, this looks responsive in terms of damage. RTSs normally suffer from a kind of spongy health problem. So the fights here, are they a bit longer in contrast to under, uh, other RTSs or? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. It, also, it all, all, always depends on like what units you bring to the okay. fights because there is that rock, paper, scissors. Some units can like destroy other units pretty easily. Mm -hmm. While like if you go in for uh, an infantry unit, complete. like the rifleman we're having, uh, up and against an attack, it will take a long time for him to destroy that tank. Oh, okay. like also the animations. Yeah. Yeah. Like so really pretty. <laughs> so, getting our, every this. Yeah, our cute little harvester. So, uh, and they have also energy bar, how, how much they got. Yeah, showing oh, yeah. how much uh, they have before That's they go cute. back. That's uh, cute. And you like can also see. Like the little details. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you can also see on the refinery. It uh, has a power for how much uh, Tempest uh, you have uh, oh. in, in your economy. Uh, oh, yeah. If you reach the top, you need yeah, to put like, build, more, yeah, build more silos <laughs> to have more resources. So we need a barrack so we can make some units, I think. Constructing. That's awesome. Oh, and we have also the defense button. Okay, so we have like categories. Yes, so we have like buildings, defenses, uh, infantry, vehicles, and aerials. Uh, Buildings and uh, infantry are unlocked uh, through other buildings. So you need, like, for instance, to get like a Gatling gun turret, you need the barracks uh, before you can build that. Uh, the game also features like asymmetry, uh, asymmetry between the two uh, factions. Okay. So like uh, that's both in like the unit rosters how they work. For instance, our rifleman, the most basic unit we have for TDF, uh, has a long has a it's a long range. They're a bit more expensive than the Dynasty counterpart, but the Dynasty counterpart can make a lot of them, but they have a shorter range. Okay, so you're you're telling all about you the the asymmetric faction design, the intricacies of combat. How how difficult is it to well balance this game? Because you've got the PvP matches as well, and you need to well think about that not one of the factions is overpowered. Yeah, so it's uh, it's always a constant battle, like tweaking uh, values here and there, oh, trying to figure out like what's the best way of doing it. Uh, we have uh, Wayward Strategies, uh, one of our game designers, uh, a 
known uh, blogger within the RTS space. Oh, okay. Uh, helping out on the game. Uh, and he knows a lot about, like, balancing and uh, unit rosters and getting that asymmetry just to be correct so that it's not overpowered for anyone but there's still some differences uh, in how you play uh, the different factions uh, to okay. overcome. Can you already tell us, because you talked about the riflemen of the GDF and the dynasty, can you talk about the riflemen from the third faction? No, you can't, can you? No, I can't. Oh. I really can't. I'm so <laughs> curious about it, but you well. You have to wait later. I don't want to wait. I like the chat. I'm one of you guys, chat. I'm doing the best I can. But this game is Tempest Rising for you, for the ones of you asking what game this is. They already release date or some like a demo or something like that stuff. So right now we only have planned for it to be released in uh, 2023. Cool, okay. Uh, we don't have a specific date yet, uh, but uh, always be on the lookout. You can uh, already wishlist it on uh, Steam, of course. Wishlist uh, games, guys. Wishlisting wish is a hell of a help to developers, and it just costs you like two clicks. Yeah. So that's that. Um, how many? There are also two buttons, so you can make favorite, and you can put it on a wish list. On a wish list, you get a mail when it's uh, coming out, a rebate or something. Yeah. And the other one is, uh, if it's come out, you get it automatically pushed to the front of your Steam page. So uh, who's helping? And Steam also pushes games um, that are wishlisted more. That pu it pushes them to the front page, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. We also have a, um, a Discord channel, uh, if anybody is uh, up for getting into the community for Tempest Rising. Nice call. Where do you get? Uh, where do, do they get the link to the channel? Uh, it's called Tempest Rising. Uh, I am not quite sure where we have the link, but I will uh, be sure to get that for you. But it'll probably um, be found on the social media of yours. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, like uh, you can go into the Steam page and like on the uh, sidebar, we yeah. have like socials. Uh, okay. There is the Discord channel as well. Awesome. So I built the uplink. It's like for um, it's for some uh, new stuff. It's for up, uh, un, uh, <laughs> upgrading, unlocking uh, Unlock. new units uh, to your roster in the infantry, for example, here. And also some uh, buildings it's like defenses. You will get a uh, rocket turret uh, or mortar turret, actually. A uh, sag okay, bag yeah, yeah. asks, oof, I can imagine this in the competitive scene. Are there already plans for the competitive scene? Is there any um, yeah, yeah, yeah. way would, of you to push? It would uh, it would unlock, uh, it would be released with uh, rank play as well. With rank oh, play, okay. Yeah. Nice. So like, uh, yeah, we, we, we just want to make a game for like the old, uh, old school guy who like the old RTS games. But would also with the new features to come out with new RCS games like rank play and like get that going for everyone as well. That's awesome. And some uh, control support for like uh, macros and stuff like that on your keyboard. So. Yeah, Chad, you'll see that you will lose a lot of time playing this game <laughs> once it comes out. Because many of you, I see you, are already writing like, oh, it looks awesome, nice game, I can't wait to play it. Oh, are you getting wrecked right now? Ah, uh, it's looking okay. I tried to overdrive them, and I think it works. So uh, you have destroyed all the SAM sites around the area. So on the left bar, you see like this ro uh, small red uh, marker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an airstrike. Since you have destroyed the uh, SAM sites, you can now call in an airstrike to destroy the gate. Ah, uh, okay. So Let's we'll come see. Coming here in a minute. In a minute. Oh, in a second. Sorry. <laughs> oh. In a minute. <laughs> here we go. Oh yeah. But now I get wrecked. You also... You but wrecked. I already placing some new units. Nice. So not that problem, but we need some ready. more tanks, maybe. And I built too much medics, I think. Game, please. It's Tempest Rising, guys. You can have a look at the schedule as well, if you want. Exclamation mark schedule to then see what time is it, and so see what game we're playing Unit right ready. now. Every uh, time it's that it's you see there is set in CEST. Schedule is written S C H E D U L E. Oh, Not wow. like that, Roger. <laughs> oh, I think I have an energy problem. My towers are offline. Yeah, so you probably will need to make some more uh, power plants. But they don't need any resources, right? It's like atom energy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it just uh, just counts spins up around the atom energy. energy. <laughs> <laughs> um, this stream gets uploaded. I think it'll be live this evening after we've done all of the streaming for today. And you can watch it as a VOD on Twitch or on YouTube. 
um, you can pick your poison. Um, I'm just happy to see that. No, that wasn't what I wanted to read. How challenging is the hard difficulty in comparison to C and C games? Not like more uh, more sandbags if I go too easy, and yeah. there are the red barrels. I mean. Of course, like there will be more units, uh, and it'll be stronger against you. Uh, but like, how uh, exactly we are treating the difficulty between like easy, normal, and hard, uh, we haven't like really uh, fleshed out yet. Uh, so I can't really go into much detail there. Okay. Uh, we are more focusing on the uh, core gameplay uh, for now. Yeah, sure. Focusing on core gameplay, maybe that answered my following question, um, but will there be a map editor, some people ask? Uh, I can't really disclose that if there's going to be a map editor, but we do know how important that is for uh, RTS games. So we are, of course have that in heart, but I can't really tell you if we are going to launch or have it in the game. But you grinned when I asked you, so maybe it'll be there, guys. <laughs> Just read his facial expressions. <laughs> um, how far away are we from winning this scenario? Because we are out of time now and we need to come to an end con um, concerning this slot. Uh, I think I can yeah. overrun them now. It's the last yeah, objective, right? Yeah, it's the last objective, uh, destroying okay. the enemy uh, construction yard. Awesome. While you do that, thank you very much for both of you coming in here, joining me on this comfortable couch. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jakey. Thank you. If you want to know more about Jakey, you can use the command exclamation mark J key, that's J A K E E Y. Y. Just like that. J K double A I. And oh then yeah, it's in English. It's A and I is crazy. And then you can follow him on his Twitch channel, for example. And thank you very much, Jonathan, for being here and guiding us through the demo, answering questions from chat. Thank you for having us. No problem. And we'll see each other again after a short break with Spellforce Conquest of EO. Initializing. Please stand by. Land across your Asia, most heavily affected by the fallout. You have proven yourself loyal to me so far, General. Our dynasty has waited long enough. Show me that my trust is not misplaced. There is a house in New Orleans They call the rising sun Where thousands of young to salvation have gone Oh God, she knows I'm one Don't let them get inside, Colbert they're not the good guy. Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. Maybe the dark man just likes it when you suffer. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition? This is madness! Are you crazy? Fall on your knees, where the man? to the man. 
madhouse, detective. Breaking news here in Sledgehammer County. After a sharp increase of car racing activity in recent days, authorities now report a staggering amount of items and racetracks popping up out of nowhere. Jan, what do you make of it? Well, Bill, it's like you say. Random bits and pieces of racetracks, along with all different kinds of items, have been emerging all over the county. And, wait, I'm just getting word that these pieces now seem to be rising into the air, forming an ever-expanding aerial racetrack and eclipsing the sky above Sledgehammer. Bill, I've never seen anything like this. You have to wonder, who is behind this, and where does it end? And welcome back to the THQ Nordic live stream, where are we right, right at Gamescom, Gamescom 2022, is it, in fact. And beside me, there are no more two people, but now one sympathetic guy named Jan. 
Yes. Greetings. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm glad you're joining me here because we're taking a look together at Spellforce Conquest of EO. And because I'm a sucker for turn-based strategy games, I'm very much looking forward to this presentation or this, well, gameplay demo that yeah. I am going to enjoy. I, yeah, I, I think, I mean, hopefully the game is easy enough so you can play it without knowing what you're doing. Easy um, enough. So I'd we'll, like a challenge as well. Yeah, so so we'll, we'll give you that and then, then we'll make it harder you know, every step. So we okay. already started with the battle actually. Spellforce, Conquest of Eo, if you guys uh, know anything about it, is uh, a 20 year old IP, or, or IP with 20 years of history. So it, it's as usually known for turn based strategy and role playing mix. Now we are doing something different. We are, we're using the two pillars of um, strategy and role playing. Well, we're doing a turn-based game, um, not a real. Well, Spell for the real time. We're doing a turn-based game, and we're also doing a lot of things differently to a lot of other turn-based games. So we're trying to kind of make a game that's fairly easy to get into, but as most games want to be challenging to play. But we're also making a game that's kind of different from the ones that you often get, where you know the the game. You've already won the game, but you still have to play 30 turns because you built your rocket. In this case, I've lost for you because I, I kind of made the situation impossible <laughs> for you to win. Um, yeah, nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, so you're, you're off to a good head start, I think. You, know, <laughs> you said you wanted a challenge. I, I thought we were going to start losing. Yeah. yeah. No, just, just so you know, this man started playing the tutorial. This man yeah. is a developer of the game. Yeah. And this man just lost me the tutorial. Just so you know. Yes, that's my specialty. <laughs> actually, actually, that's the nice thing about that is showing that the the challenge is actually real. So the game may be fairly may look easy to play, but if you actually are stupid like me, you can <laughs> no, even no. lose in the tutorial. But it doesn't matter because actually the tutorial is just sort of a um, an intro to the storyline. Um, because in Spellforce you're not um, you're not a faction, you're not a nation, you're not a king, you're a mage. And that means you're not really that interested in you know, conquering a large empire or building cities or all that stuff. You've got your tower, which is kind of the central part. This um, is my tower. Yeah, that's your tower. And I'm a mage sitting in that tower, like yeah. Saruman in Lord of the exactly. Rings. Exactly. So you're sitting there and you're letting other people do the dirty work for you. You know, you're not going to go to the battlefield. Of you course not. Like, uh, like I just let you play the tutorial for exactly. me. Exactly. I'm and not doing the dirty work. Yeah. And see if you if you get bad people like me to serve you. <laughs> you know, there's 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 no good personnel anywhere. Uh, <coughs> what kind of a mage am I? Because mages play a large role in the Spellforce yeah. universe, of course. We can talk about more um, concerning the Spellforce universe, the lore, and stuff like that later. Yeah. But what kind of a mage am I? Are there different mages? What's that yeah. all about? So um, there's three different types of mages um, and you can actually if you look up the at the upper left there there's a menu yeah. if you click in the on the tower yeah um, so you're sitting in a tower so there's it, you can build out your tower and there's three different kind of mages you can be and that um, these these mages differentiate themselves by two things one is the kind of spell schools they have so every mage has a primary skills, spell school and a secondary one and the type of stuff they can do. So you've got a necromancer script, which should give you a hint towards what type of mage you are. Am I a skeleton? No, I'm a, I'm ah, a, I'm so a, close. <laughs> I'm a so necromancer, close. right? Yeah, you're a necromancer. So you okay. can build out your tower to, you, know, you can add new rooms to it, so you can build a workshop, you can study. Later on, there's a lot more different rooms to choose from. Um, and that will differentiate. Essentially, you're building up your headquarter because you're not, you're not having a city, you're not, you're not expanding your influence, um, but you're building up your headquarter. And if you, later on, you can actually modify the workshop so every room can be modified individually with crafting. Okay. And then we go to the next step to the right there. Will, yeah. the, will the tower change depending the tower on what will I'm building? Grow. So the, okay. the, further, the further you mastery um, advances, the bigger your tower will be. And as always, you know, it's, it's a little bit about who's got the biggest one. So the, Yeah, who's got the biggest tower? And I'm on the best way to get there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is necromancy. Exactly. I can so so there's, yeah. there's magic and then there's kind of the crafting, the, the, what you do. And in this case, you're building undead. So initially, as a necromancer, you start out small. So you've got your sword. You can also just right-click, and it'll go to the, to the right slot. OK. Um, and you can build skeleton warriors. We don't want to build them yet. Um, we're going to show that afterwards. But essentially, okay. what you do is you craft different kinds of undead. And there's recipes for it. And you can have ingredients. And depending on what you put in, different kinds of undead will emerge. So um, I'm so like a very weird cook. 
you are essentially there's a cookbook for necromancers and you're just trying to find out what's happening awesome so story-wise you start off as a, as a young apprentice you come to your master's tower who's called you and the master tells you that um, he's got a way to conquer the all fire and the all fire is like the the stuff that makes everything is like permeates all existence so it's kind of a magical energy that flows through everybody in the world okay but very few people can actually touch a concentrated all fire it sounds dif uh, dangerous to it be is honest. very dangerous so as a human if you touch it you're just gonna burn up so let's not do that <laughs> and your master clever guy that he is he's found a way to actually harness that okay but and as that's the first battle that we've seen because of that the circle of mages which is kind of the the most powerful mages on the year on the on in the world they were after him, and, and you've seen what happened. Um, okay. But the, the most important question is, do I like those goblins or don't I like them? Because if I don't like them, I just want to give them a clubbing. So what happens is you found the traces uh, from the towers ransacked, and then you, you found tracks that lead to the goblin camp. Those fuckers. Let's Just kill go them. there and let's, let's find out okay. what's happening. What do we have in my army? We've got, oh, we've got goblins ourselves. I didn't say anything. I love goblins. Just please, please don't rout. Um, and what's this? Okay, necromancer's minions. Yeah, so there's, there's different kinds of, there's magical creatures in the game. And you're not, you're not playing a faction. It's not like, in, you know, you're not a, a nation or something. So as a, as a mage, essentially, you're not, you're not specific about who's serving you as long as they're serving you. Okay. And as a necromancer, Essentially, every living being is just an undead waiting to happen. So you've, you know, you're, you're not picky about who you choose as long as they serve you well. Well, that's that's pretty pretty true. This is also there are different tiers in units, of course. There's a tier two for yeah. necromancers, minions, and there's keywords like fantastic, I suppose. This yeah. is green skin or mortal. Okay, it's a mortal. Yeah, I see. Well, it's, it's a mortal and it's also. Um, Feral, which is kind of a wild creature, and it's a goblin. So okay. you can see that on the, on the upper, um, we've got you know a limited amount of stats. So we, we don't want to make it too complicated. We don't want plus 1.3 to strength or minus 0.7 to something. But it's it should be fairly obvious. These guys, you know, they've got uh, nine armor. They've got five uh, willpower, which is uh, their resistance to magic as well as their morale. So goblins are kind of not that brave. Um, mm -hmm. But the differentiation becomes really in all those special abilities they have, all those types of units that you have. And this is where it gets interesting because stuff happens um, where you can actually have synergies between units. Okay. If you know that they scare easily, you can have a unit that, that scares them. So you have fear spells or something. Then you can, you can find out how to break or how to handle specific enemies and also how to make your own stack composed of a number of units that, dif that hopefully work well together and differentiate uh, or complement each other. I see. <laughs> and I think we'll get to see more of the different units in the later parts of this demo. Um, I, I've seen just here within your domain, let me ask some questions about the domains. But yeah. first, um, what are we playing exactly, Ria? Is, is this uh, the start of a campaign? Is this the start of a single scenario? What's um, this? It's, an, it's sort of an, well, it's an open world campaign. So if you zoom out a little, um, you can see a little more. Yeah, that's our world map and essentially that's where you start. So you can see there is a lot of game around you to still explore. Yeah. Um, and it actually extends to the sides as well. Oh, of course, of course. So this is this is the world that's hopefully going to be um, reacting to you and that, that you can explore. So it's an open world campaign, but um, the, the landscape is actually, it plays in a specific place in Fiara, um, which is the world of, uh, or it's one of the continents in uh, on Spell, in the Spellforce world, mm -hmm. and um, you start out, and the, the, the map is actually handcrafted, but the content is procedurally generated, so you always find something different. You always have little adventures here, so okay. all the adventures are important in terms of there's meaningful decisions in them, so it's not just, okay, this is narrative and I just click away, you can do that, but you actually want to want to really think about what you want to do. So there's a decision in every tactical game is decisions. Yeah, of course. But stories also mean, have meaningful decisions. So in this case, you find the goblins in the camp. Um, you see them squabbling about loot, which means you've got an opportunity to ambush them. So if you really want to punish them, just go there. Or you can wait and watch and see what happens because, you know, you don't know. You've got goblins. These are goblins, you know, maybe there's... But they did there. something bad to me. I mean, maybe the smart way to do this would be, well, I'm a goblin, you're a goblin, let's join together, but they... They stole from me. They stole, they from, stole me. from you. Well, it looks like that, at least. 
Yeah, so and give me what you want to do. It would only be honorable to ambush them now. That's Let's try that. Combat yeah. preview. So there's a combat preview which says I've got a heroic victory. Yeah, so this gives you an idea about, because you don't want to have, that's another thing where we don't want you to force to fight every battle mm -hmm. when you already know the outcome. Yeah. So this is a relatively clear cut affair. You're just more people. So you'll, you'll be able to just kill them. So you can auto-resolve, or you can start the battle if you want, but I think this one we can just, yeah. can just skip there. Um, what happens there is two things. You, well, you won. Yay! Victory. Uh, you, one of your units got, you know, two of your goblins got a little wounded, so you, know, you may want to be careful in um, mm -hmm. further. And you also got some loot, and you got something which is reputation. That's the little shield with a question mark. So when you kill roaming monsters, oh, you're, okay. you're going to create positive vibes around you, um, <laughs> where the cities around you like you a little more. And you also found loot. Awesome. Um, where are the rest of his possessions? Yeah, so you've got a, one of the goblins survive, and you s sort of press him to tell him, you know, where's where the other stuff? Show me. So, yeah, okay. He and shows they talk you funny it. as well. Yeah. I remember you. Nice. Okay, so it turns out actually what you attacked is uh, your master's old servants and they ran away with your master's possession to protect them. So you kind of killed your master's old servants now. Yeah, well, it was my old master's servants. Yeah. They ran away with his possession. Yeah, so yeah. It no, was, it, I think it still was. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an employee-employer situation yeah. where they just didn't perform well and that's what they get for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's... So they tell you a little more about, okay, there's extra stuff, that's stuff that we hit somewhere else. So a lot of the time you'll see adventures creating new stuff in the game, new adventures that you oh, can, that you can I see. sort of further explore in the map and that it also tells you a little more about the story. In this case, you also got something which is a goblin camp because you killed the other goblins, so you now you sort of pro possess the camp and that means you know, there's a blinking thing there. there. Uh, oh, that means you can okay. now hire goblins within your domain. Awesome. Uh, if, you, if you had a dwarven camp there or human barracks, you would be able to hire dwarves or, or, or humans. In this case, you can, you can get your uh, dog goblin shaman, but you need to pay them. Um, and I need to recruit them, and that yeah, just costs that takes time. time. So it takes okay. time to recruit them. You train them up to actually serve you. Goblins are a little hard of hearing, so it takes a little more time. Um, but you also need to pay them, so you need to pay upkeep, which means you need gold, because otherwise they'll just run away again. They'll just run away again with my gold, and I don't want that to happen. Yep. Okay, I've got the goblin camp, and you said everything I'm like exploring here is procedurally generated. Yes. So if I start another run, Will there be the same goblin camp? Will there be the same stuff around in this fog no, of war? No, it won't. Be, there will be different. There will be different stuff around. This is a main story and this is a tutorial, so you'll see the goblin camp again. But you've got very different choices, depending also on what type of mage you are. So depending your necromancer, um, you may have the chance to talk to undead, or you may have the chance to be friendly or unfriendly to people. You know, I've seen one of the cities where your reputation actually increased because you killed the, the evil goblins. Oh, um, so if I kill enemies in their domain, they yeah. say, what a great guy. Exactly. You, there's, we'll have opportunities later on to ruin your reputation again, oh, so um, <laughs> uh, not a problem. Um, so yeah, so, so depending on you know, the situation, the setup, you'll, you'll have very different uh, ways the worlds are filled, very different adventures you get. But the main story kind of continues the way, um, the way it is. Okay, but I, a lot of choices. I was a bit stupid and ran out of the camp again. Yeah. So I won't heal as much as exactly. I could have. Exactly. The camp would have helped you in healing. All of the buildings and all of the things there have a specific cause. You try to get to the resources there, but you need a worker to actually mine the ore. Oh, um, okay. And goblins aren't good workers in that part. But this stuff, the, the glowing stuff, you can just pick up. What was that? I just you just, yeah, there's a, that happens always when there's a tower adventure. Sometimes adventures find you. You, know, mm -hmm. you can go out the world, find adventures, but some things happen to you. In this case, and we talked about it because you're a mage, you go to the library of your old master and you find his old spell book. Okay. And let's just try to go through that because that's a, that's a given. Let me see your <clears> spell book. And it tells you about the all fire. Mm -hmm. And tells you, okay, there's a source in the in the area, and if you if you summon a wisp, you can actually because you can't touch the all fire, but wisps can. So summon a wisp and meld it, combine it with the all fire, so you, that can be yours. Oh. So this is your spellbook, and some of the spells you already know. Yeah. Um, 
in this case, to, for example, you just click on Summon Enchanted Wisp. This looks like my <coughs> handwriting, exactly like it's, my handwriting. It's, it's, it's something we copied. We actually took your <laughs> handwriting and put it in the game, especially for this case. Here. I saw thump, thump, something was up yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah awesome. Um, and so, yeah, some of the spells, you know, some of the spells you have don't have any idea what they mean. Okay. That's your master's handwriting. You don't know what's doing. And then to the right, you see one of the spells that you actually can already kind of guess what they're about, but you need to research them in order to really master the, them. Can I research and summon the Whisper at the same yeah, time? Yeah, research and, and okay. casting is, is a separate thing. And you, you get more stuff as well. You get, uh, for example, the Necromancer script. If you go there, um, you can also, just the next page, there's also stuff, Ooh. something you need to do. So some of the yeah. times it's about doing the stuff that you know how to do and just getting practice. And then there's new stuff you find out about that. So it's not That's only awesome. research, it's actual practical application. Yeah, because what was it like in Age of Wonders back then? You just had this, I can research all of these spells and that you only clicked on the new spell and then you waited for 28 yeah. turns. So, so yeah, it's it's some of that's a research. It's like a tech tree a little, but yeah. without the tree. So you're not, um, it's, not a, it's not a linear. It's not, you have to have this spell in order to re research that one. Okay. But you get more spells as you progress. You can also get spell pages from other mages, for example. So if you, if you kill one of the, the enemy mages, you get their spell page, and that obviously makes your spell book much more interesting. Okay, did I summon a wisp yeah, already? Yeah, it's, it takes a little time. So one of the things, as I mentioned, we don't want you to just sort of power your way through. We want you to be able um, to, to experience the game, but we kind of limiting what you can do at one time. So okay. you've got mastery as a stat, and mastery tells you how much mana you can spend in a turn. Um, and currently you only can spend five mana and the, ah, the, the spell costs one. 12, so we need mm -hmm. several turns to do that. What um, is up with this? How can I mine this? You need a worker for that. Um, I, I, I know a way to get a worker. Um, if you just click, the, click on the next turn, um, it'll probably become quite... Okay. Or you can just walk there and just you know, c capture one of the things there, run in there, yeah. Let me get that. Oh, there's a fight. Shall we show the fight this time? Um, yeah, let's, let's do it, because okay. that's... that's different units and um, there's a couple of specifics. So um, all of the maps in the game, all of the combat maps as well, are handcrafted. <coughs> the reason for that is that every time um, you are on a map, there should be a different challenge that comes with a map as well. Okay. So you look here, I mean, this is, this is a very early fight, so you only had three units on your end, two units on the enemy side, so that's not hugely tactical. But if you had a couple of more units, um, if you see you're sort of in a canyon, you can go up there, but if you shoot upwards ah. with a missile, you actually at a disadvantage. So in this case, if you have a lot of missile troops, you want to position them up on the on the uh, on the precipice there, and then shoot down on the enemy, which which would make it harder for them to get there. Okay. Or in this case, these guys just go straight through the middle, um, and you've got a lot of melee troops, so you want to meet them hands on. And all those troops have lots of abilities <coughs> yeah. and passives, so yeah. it's not like okay, this is the first, the first, um, the first troop, and this is just a peasant, and he only can attack, and maybe yeah. is a human. But these guys have fire wielder, yeah. missile damage, mortal, yeah. human, white resistance. Yeah. So, so a lot of that's that's what we what we try to do with the game is we reduce the the um, the complexity of. You don't have like 15 different stats you need to understand. You can just watch these guys and say, okay, I, I can see they're melee or they're, they're missile guys or they have a magic spell. So some of the things are, are fairly obvious. But then it becomes interesting when you actually combine things and when you start with the abilities and when you lean into that. Um, these guys, the fire wheels, for example, have, they can throw torches, yeah. Um, and torches will actually burn, so you get continuous damage if you do that. So you don't, and they've got a short range. So if you had a long range unit like your Necro minion, who can actually missile um, some, some distance away. Oh fuck, I didn't missile. Yeah, you don't want to get too close. Oh, I, there's this, oh, the death yeah. bolts, of course. Yeah, yeah, you could have used those, but well, now you're in combat, that's fine as well. Well, yeah. <coughs> a couple of things. Um, there is, uh, you can see the, the little yellow arrows, maybe. Um, those, those are action points of some uh, kind. Yeah, the little points, they're action points. You can do three things. Two of them can be movement, one of them uh, can be guard or attack. And if you can't reach the enemy and you have got one action point, you automatically go to guard stance, which helps you defend against the enemy because um, guarding or l thinking about defense is actually part of the attack. You don't want to overextend yourself and just sort of get in a situation where the enemy can flank you. But let's see what's happening now. Did I do good? Um, Putting my, my mages in the front yeah, row. Yeah, that's always, always recommended, I think. <laughs> that's one of the time-honored recipes. 
<coughs> problem is now they're flanking you. So the first unit you actually looked at and you, you fought against, the second one gets three attacks against you. Now you're disordered, which means your morale is down and okay. you're a little scared. But I see the the attacked unit also fights fights all fights back. back. Exactly. Okay. If you go into melee, it'll fight back, which is why it's important to to be clever about it and make sure that you flank units so you attack with a stronger unit and then the weaker unit can flank the enemy and still get some damage in. Okay, I see. And I can't use them because they are all... They've got attacked. So this is a situation where because you ran into with one unit and you fought against two of them, oh. they took all the actions that you had and you had to use them for defense. So you couldn't get attack into attacking them. But do I need to use them for defense or can I also choose to... You can just choose to fully attack, but if you, if you move with a unit and that gets attacked from several other units, your next turn the unit probably won't have any, any action points left. Okay. Okay, and you. Let's talk about more about these um, combat maps. Yeah. How long does it take for them to, like, get repetitive? How many are there? Can you already tell me um, more about that? We we've got currently around 40 maps, I think. So every we, what we're trying to do is every area that you're in. If you're in the forest, you have several forest maps too that that come up randomly. If you're on grasslands, grasslands. So all the maps are specific to the situations. If you fight on a bridge, you actually have a bridge there. Okay, um, awesome. Yeah. So, so they they get. Of course, you see a couple of them several times, but um, they they the areas are not randomly chosen. They are actually always you fight where you are in the world. That's awesome. That's pretty awesome. So um, you already leveled up. Congratulations. Thank you very much. They they deserved it. They earned themselves yeah, this level up absolutely. by absolutely. I think I think they did the well. Yeah. And what shall I give them now? Are these like? Um, set promotion uh, options or are these like um, randomized as well? They're, they're semi-randomized so they always come from a specific pool so the minions have a specific pool of promotions they get okay and you always get two to choose from randomly of that pool um, okay so let's do for them yeah probably willpower because uh, or speed because they always want to they want the <laughs> they want to run away that's true <laughs> could be no let's do let's do willpower one yeah and give them i, I suppose that makes them deal more damage with soul catcher it's it well or soul catch is actually nice with because, you, because you get with death bolt exactly because you get souls from it so they've got an ability that you have a chance if you kill an enemy that you get a soul from it and the souls you'll need for crafting as an oh, necromancer oh they give me all the stuff I see. Yeah. What can they get? Healing, uh, armor. Let's give them some armor. And let's give those more melee damage. So, as you can see, with the level up, you start to individualize your units. So, even two goblins that start out the same way, once they get experience, they become slightly different units. You can you know, make them more aggressive or make them more resistant, stuff like that. Why can't I go here? Because I need this bridge. Because there's a bridge and you can't cross the water. Okay. When will, when is my oh in five turns? Can I do some some minions here? Yeah, let's let's maybe do some crafting because you need minions, right? You yeah. Need, so let's 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 create some undead, I think. Let's cook up some yeah. undead in the That's necromancer's script. Yeah, yeah, you, you oh. yep, on this to the right, to the right, to the right. Uh, yep, that yeah. one. Okay. Okay. So how does it work? Now I've got a little bit of stuff that you can do. Um, you right click on one of the souls. The souls is always the first thing you need. Now okay. the problem is now you can do skeleton warriors, but a soul has life. And mm -hmm. undead can't really exist when there's life in them. So you need to add at least one ingredient that has death. Okay. So that's like the, the purple ones. Yeah. So that's this. For okay, example. so now you could craft that skeleton warrior. But let's see what happens if you maybe put in one of those a couple of those red things. A couple of those irons. Yeah. The, the, yeah. So these ah oh, that's not enough unfortunately. So these are arcane essences. And then you've added life again, and then you can't craft it. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, you're probably gonna be left with with having to do a skeleton warrior for now because they don't do enough. You see these little uh, essences, these essence dots. There are certain thresholds, and once you have like three orange ones, for example, the skeleton warrior will become a skeleton archer. So it's gonna be a different undead unit oh, you can craft. Oh, and as uh, so, if you put more in there in this kind of yeah. Skeleton. So you can cook up mush. more stuff, and yeah. then and then there's you know there's maybe a vampire or maybe a ghoul or maybe something else. Okay, awesome. Now Let's I'll craft just those craft. guys for now. Yeah. There's a question here: um, if you loot the shiny things on the map, yes, the shiny things are definitely for looting. So if you just go there, but I just, just didn't do that stuff up. up until yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. Let's end my turn. Yeah. So remember this tutorial. So every turn something new happens for you. Awesome. Um, you get to know a little more about the backstory. Your master's been actually attacked by the Circle of Mages. No. Oh yes. 
And the question is, well, do they know about your discovery already? Um, whatever it is, you, you'll definitely need to prepare. So mm -hmm. you need to prepare for them coming. Maybe you know they'll attack you tomorrow. So let's see what you can do to prepare. And one of the things you need, as you can find out, you need the undead. But for that, you need materials. Yeah. The hamlet, which just popped up now, okay. that's actually a little village that apparently took some of the materials from your master's tower for themselves. Let's get them back. And again, there's meaningful decisions here. So you can treat them very differently. You can scare them into submission because they're kind of defensive against this and just want to send you away. Mm -hmm. You can tell them that you mean no harm, be a very friendly necromancer. Yeah. Uh, you can ask them what they're hostile, you know, getting to talk to them, learning more about them. Okay, let's ask them why they're so hostile, because we are peaceful beings. Yeah, yeah, the only, yeah, the only want to do undeads in peace, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. our army isn't as big as it used to be, so yeah. I need to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they stare at me darkly. Um, I sure you want that fight? No need, let me trade you for them. So they, they assume you want the stuff back, and they don't want to really give it to you. Yeah. So there's, again, different ways to s resolve that situation. Okay, let me trade. And they're, okay, you would bewitch us. No, I'd okay, never so do that. Okay, so they really, they, they expected worse of you. So, yeah, you're a friendly guy, okay. Um, yeah, let's trade. Okay, let's reinforce that. Of course not, you <coughs> fool. No, hand over your possession. Yeah, it's you could always go like, ah, okay. fooled you, but no. Okay, trade. <laughs> I just told you. Yeah. Okay. So, there's, again, there's different choices. If you have got gold, you can trade them for gold, but you don't mm -hmm. have too much gold. So, maybe you want to just cast some spells for them. So, yeah. trade that as a service. I'm pretty broke, to yeah. be honest. So, so let's more do that. mana is probably easier. So Ooh. now you've got a lot of stuff that they gave you back. You've paid some mana for it. And you also got some reputation because you are a friendly necromancer and that, <clears throat> that word gets around that you're a friendly guy. Yeah. And so the city will like you more. And in the city then, if you go there, you can actually trade with cities. You can hire uh, uh, armies in cities. I see. And if you're really friendly, they maybe give you some quests. You know, if, if you seem to be helpful, they may want more help from you. And now I can hire more units, can exactly. I? Exactly. So okay. you can hire a second unit if you can afford it. Maybe another necromancer's minions? Yeah, you can yeah, hire that one. Also takes a while. No, you, it was pre-selected, so you need to select oh. and then hire that. Let's there. hire yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's... Where should I go? Should I go here? Yeah, maybe pick up some mana resources. That's a shiny thing that you can just pick up. So similar to games like Age of Wonders, Heroes, Might and Magic. Okay, some awesome. stuff on the map is just there for you to pick up. Let's get this as well yeah. and end our turn again. Yeah. Shall we? Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about. Uh, let's talk a bit about what's happening right now and then about <laughs> another yeah. thing. So there's another thing you f you find that there maybe you need more personnel. So there's a watchtower near there, where you mit maybe can talk the people into helping you. There's a militia outpost. Currently it's occupied, but maybe you can you know get them to do work for you. Okay. Let's get some gold and then go there. What about while I am trying to get this militia tower yeah. under my control? What about this story? Do I need to play or be like? Um, do I need to know anything about the Spellforce franchise, universe, no. lore before I start playing Conquest of EO? No, not at all. I mean, if you do that, you'll recognize certain things. So okay. you'll know who the Circle of Mages are. You'll know the Circle of Mages in the future of the of the storyline will actually destroy the world in the Convocation. So you know that they may not be the nicest person. <clears throat> Do you want to get another fight? Yes, let's start the battle. Okay. You're a very nice person who just likes to get into fights. Yeah, I just yeah. love love sparring with people. Yeah, it's just sort of a friendly extension of yeah. hostility. Yeah, oh, of course. That. Yeah. No, um, and... So you don't need anything about the story. Yeah. The story will unfold. You've got a main story. But even that main story is is like, it's not heavy. You don't have to play a specific campaign. But it's more about... There's a certain, certain amount of decisions in the world that you make, and that will also change the world. I see. Um, but a lot of the adventures, you've got over 600 adventures, they are just there for you to experience and, and slowly get into it. And you've got the spell book, and we'll see later on, that also is kind of a, a law-keeping thing for you. They went through the palisade, maybe, I don't know if, if people saw that, so we've also got defensive positions where they just came out of the village <clears throat> that you can use to your advantage. And maybe now use the death bolts from the far. Yeah, that yeah, seems like a good idea. Oh no, let's right click, left click on the guys, right click on the yeah. That okay. Works. Soul cage, awesome. So that means when you go out of that battle and these guys are dead, you get a soul out of them. Okay, and now let's defend my sorceress here. 
If I end my turn, they'll automatically do the guard stance, don't they? Yeah. Okay. So if you still have actions left, they automatically will guard. Which is good because guarded units can't be flanked. Otherwise, if, if you, like these guys now, let's see if they go for the attack. The AI is not always, like, they're, see, they're trying to flank you, so. I see. So they're trying to get around. These um, nasty boys. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you've got any more questions in chat, guys. Yes, and please. Girls, just ask them. That's your chance. We'll I'm address here. them. Here's a very smart man that's working on the game, so. <laughs> I'm working on the game, that much is true. <laughs> Let's throw some death bolts again. And of course, if I'm closer to the enemy, the death bolts yeah. do more damage. So the closer you are, they do more damage. If you don't have an, an obstacle between you, they're, they're more effective. And of course, because you didn't move, you've got three attacks instead of uh, the okay. one that you had. So all the classic bat battle intricacies we know from Heroes of Might and Magic, from Age of Wonders and so on, from the round um, here, turn-based strategy yeah. game genre are here. But what's new? What is special about yeah. Conquest of EO in I combat? Think in, in terms of the combat, it really is the, the variety that comes with the different unit types. So it looks easy and, and, and when you play with a couple of units, it, you know, it's fairly obvious what you need to do. But it gets, it gets very, very different. Every battle is very, very different depending on the enemy composition, on your unit composition, how much you try to build a stack that works together okay. initially you're fine you've got you know you've got two melee units and a missile unit that's all you need to know but as the game progresses you get so many different opportunities to create synergies between units you can have a unit that uh, weakens other guys and makes them susceptible to death magic okay and then you have your death bolts that are much more effective than before so there's a lot of a lot of um, stack building that thinking that goes into that and also depending on where you are there's very different enemy types so uh, when you go out into the world, you'll find different landscapes in different areas. You got the watch channel, you can see that you now earn gold and research from that. Every turn? Every turn gets okay. something. So it's in your area of influence. Every building that you liberated from the people that were in the building, yeah. um, <clears throat> uh, every time you, you do that, you get something. You also have your spell done, so you can summon the wisdom if you just click on it. Oh, it was And here. right okay. click within your, within your area, within your domain. You can summon within your domain you can summon a unit anywhere you want how do i expand my domain by being bros with the city of lyraine or by being powerful what do i There's, do that's that's an interesting question um if you go with a wisp to the to the melt with the all fire thing oh did i just do it that by accident and we we expand our you can actually go there okay and that'll give you a little story about how that how that works okay and let what should the I wisp, do? let the wisp melt and look at it there's a little more research interesting stuff happening because you're, remember, you're mage. A lot of the time, a lot of your choices will be about who. How can I find more about that? But the witch can melt. The, the wisp can melt. So there's a above that. Yeah. So you melt with the all fire. That takes a little time, and then it will connect you and your domain to the all fire source, and that okay. extends your domain. I see. I see. These guys can just hang out there for yeah. a bit. I think. Yeah, that's fine. Um, if you go to the upper left, yeah, there's a new thing that you can now do, which is distribute Ooh. the power you get. Okay. So you can spec you, you've got your all fire, which is kind of the raw power that you get, and then mm -hmm. you've got three different things you can invest that in. Okay. Um, or in all three things at once, whatever, whatever you like it. <laughs> um, mana is used for casting spells, as yeah. you've seen, or summoning uh, summoning your your minions. Uh, research obviously is used for research, so you find more spells, you get more stuff. Mastery is, as I, as I mentioned, is how much mana you can actually spend in a turn and it also means how well you are able to control the all fire and that will grow your tower so the more mastery you have the bigger your tower will get this is awesome it just adds an, a deeper layer of like yeah. planning to your kingdom and not only to to combat like in yeah. other so this is really this kind of the games. strategy part where you go like yeah. do i want to be like, aggressive do i want to have a lot of minions so i need a lot of mana do i want to be flexible i need a lot of spells so i go into research maybe mm -hmm. i want to grow my tower faster or be able to cast more mana. So there's there's a lot of different options there. That's awesome. Do we encounter any circle mage? I know fighting them is impossible for a normal mage or will it possible for us? Yeah, so this is... this. Okay, Wolfsire knows his law. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the, it takes place in the storyline in the early stages of the circle. So, and that's also a question to the other uh, from Gaming Wolf. Um, so the circle mages aren't that powerful at that point. They are still early in their development. They just discovered the all fire. They don't really have full control over it. And that means, yes, you can fight them. They are more powerful than you currently. 
Okay. But one of the things you'll do... Oh, you, you, that's, that's a dangerous battle. Well, let's go ahead and fight them. Yay! I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> Thank um, you very much. And uh, so, story-wise, you can actually try to, to oppose them. You'll encounter them, uh, not all of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them will be initially friendly, like uh, Hokan, for example, who's kind of a, a bad guy mage. He won't really like you anyway. <laughs> there's not much you can do for that. Yeah. But there's other mages that are initially maybe more positive. And you can fight against Rohan Tahir, but you can't kill him. So the mages have their towers, but they are not like you. They don't have just one tower. They have several um, places of power. So you can destroy their place of power, but you can never actually kill them and break the law. But ultimately, because remember, the game is about being the best mage there is. Of course. And the best mages are in the circle. So ultimately, what you want to become is you want to become one of the circle mages. And there's very different ways to do that. You can impress the other mages by your knowledge, by your mastery. You can try and be the uh, most recognized mage, so you can have a lot of influence or, or, or um, a lot of the cities uh, you, you may have a, a good reputation like, no, with. No, can ah, we do you it? did it again. I just, oh, I wanted almost, to... almost. Oh, that's... I just wanted to click on those guys. Yeah because um, I wanted to see their movement range. Yeah, you can see there's a yellow eye now, which means you can fight, you can attack with a, um, with a uh, missile, but they are a little further away, they're long range, so that means you get uh, less damage to them than you would in, in close okay. combat. But let's do that. Yeah. And not again send them into the fray. Um, and well, they will retaliate quite they, hard. They will retaliate quite hard. So that's one of the good things about, uh, about the combat. You see a lot of the information is, is quite obvious. We're not trying to obfuscate, you know, you don't need to know all the details. You just, you know, hover, hover over what's there and go like, okay, yeah, maybe, you know, attacking maybe not the best choice at that point. Maybe I just let them come to me. Yeah. Um, because they'll use movement actions, and that means they've got less attack, fewer attack actions. You can guard, which means you can also have situations where you get, if you, if you have your arrangement done well, you can get a three against one, for example, against other units. Okay, I see. Yeah. There is no undo function, unfortunately. We, we trust you to be able to handle your combat and handle your mistakes as well. Um, no, that's fine. That's very fine. I'm also a fan of a challenge, so yeah. this so will be interesting. So it needs to be consequential. Yeah. But I, I just hope that I don't lose this fight right now because that's my only army. Yeah. It's um, admittedly a little bit of a dangerous situation. <laughs> well, fuck. But that's okay. Let's and see you can see this. that the AI, for example, they're, they're using archers as well now. But um, they don't do any considerable damage. They don't, because they stay back behind, they're like a little cowardly, so they stay away. And that means, for example, if you, if you went to the building and went behind the building, they wouldn't be able to get you. Oh, I was just about to ask that. Yeah. Um, so positioning is really important. As you can see, this is a bridge. You attack the bridge. This is a bridge map. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so every map has its own challenges, its own sort of defensive points that you can learn over the over the time um, you've broken the enemy which is good that means their morale is down that means they do less damage and they fight less efficiently awesome and i think you can actually kill one of the guys in the middle yeah yeah i think I'll which means they do don't that. retaliate as hard or you yeah. or i can, yeah, I'll, can, can will weaken they them. be weaker if i like lower yeah. their well their attack no the attack will stay the same so the, the okay. damage output they do is whether whether they've got five hit points or 100 doesn't doesn't make a difference, okay. they feel the same amount of actions. Can units hide in buildings and fire? I don't um, they think can, so. They can go behind buildings and fire from behind. So if you are, like the, the missile units from the enemy there, they are next to an obstacle. Okay. So they get protection from the obstacle, but they can fire over the obstacle at, f at full, um, full value. Oh, they attacked three times because they were beside me, right? Exactly. Well, those poor fellas, I think they're I gone. I think maybe the goblins are future undead. Yeah, but... Luckily, we're a necromancer, and, well, I think they're lucky as well. It's a good employer. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a permanent contract, essentially. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't, like, you don't... Uh, dying is not an obstacle to serving. Yeah. No, and that's great. Yeah. Let's do Absolutely. this. Weaken them. I think we, we should be able to overpower these archers in melee yeah. combat. Yeah, yeah. yeah, especially... You can see the skeleton units are really cool. So Necromancer has Undead, and Undead are resistant to physical damage, for example. Oh, so that's awesome. So they are awesome. much harder to kill by normal means. Yeah. They are very weak against white damage, so if you had a priest there or a, a white mage, 
that would really be dangerous to you. And there are attacks of opportunity. There are attacks of opportunity as well, yeah. So the guys try to circle around you and you gave them a good one on, on there. So after all, it looked threatening initially, but your superior tactics have won the day for you. Thank you very much. Also, that's, that's maybe one of the things where, where the Necromancer um, gameplay also differentiates itself. So it's not like the mage classes are just there for, you know, having different spells. Necromancer strategy is different. You need souls, you need to kill people. Yeah. You want to have combat. You want to be aggressive. You don't care whether you are undead die. You don't even care whether living units die. Because uh, if you get soul cage, if you get new units after battle, that just means they are future undead for you. Oh, there's a bigger soul now. Exactly. There's, there's, there's more souls you have, and, and they have different abilities as well. So depend, there's different flavors of souls that initially give you different abilities. Oh, I just need to tell you, you've still got some bugs in your game. Ah, you damn, need to yeah. sort that out. Yeah, there are fire bugs there. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Um. That's actually one of, the, one of the local stories. So what we have, we have regions that are yeah. they're, they're not hard borders, but regions have their own specific topics. For this region, Golden Fields, they've got a plague of those bugs. Yeah. As you can see, and they can actually, if you if you want to later on engage with the city, they'll tell you, well, we've got this plague, and maybe you can help us because you're you're a powerful mage. Maybe you can do something about that. Yeah. Um, so every region also brings sort of a little mini campaign with it, where, I see. where we can interact with the city and can interact with the adventures in the region, and that also furthers the story for that specific region. You know, you meld it successfully. Um, Which is now, awesome. Oh, and now my domain is growing. Yeah. And because you're now very famous, there's a hero coming. Maybe we do the hero and then. Yeah, we still pack need to in. do this. Yeah. What what's what is about what's. It? Heroes, very quickly in the game, um, okay. they are more powerful units, they, they can be added to a stack, so every step can have one more hero, which means it can be one larger. Mm -hmm. um, they also bring their own, sorry, just click away, it doesn't matter at that point, as long as you actually allow her to join you. Oh. Be, be my, my guest. guest. Yeah. Okay, okay. awesome. <laughs> um, because every hero, if you go to the spell book now... Yeah, mm -hmm. let me see about that. Every hero also, if you go to the right, yeah has their own story with them. Oh, hello. Welcome, Litra Storm. Yeah, so every hero has a different story, and that's that's almost like, again, another mini-campaign alongside your own gameplay, because as if you actually take her in, she'll bring adventures to you. She, every hero wants something. They have okay. a purpose. They have their own background story that you discover along the way, but that also unlocks new adventures. It, essentially, this one, for example, fights against new purity. Uh, so she was a member of them, and she's sort of a fanatic anti-magic cult, yeah. and she now wants you to fight them, which is something that you want to do anyway, so she helps you, that's great. But she also gets you into trouble with that faction. Mm -hmm. So if you follow her storyline, you might actually get into trouble with a faction in the world I that see. could be quite powerful that you maybe don't want to get into trouble with. So there's, again, meaningful decisions along the way that the heroes bring with you, and that's a new story that opens up, and every time a new, a different hero comes, so every gameplay, every place who usually has a different hero, well, not... Not to play a hundred times, but we've got a couple of heroes and, and that changes. And so the story and the campaign changes again. Okay, I see. That's that's awesome to like experience all these stories with the different heroes. I've got some, I think, two more questions yeah. before we say goodbye to each other. Um, the first question is, we've seen some units right now. We've seen yeah. some goblins, some weird like uh, thieves and some undead but how many units will be in the game at full release so currently we've got around 100 units a hundred um, and each and every one of them can be hired or created or summoned in some way by you okay as well as they can of course be enemy units what's the most powerful unit in the game um, a titan well there's several titans in the game but okay these are really hard to get and unfortunately most of the circle mages have them which is why they're very hard to attack okay i'll try to get my hands on one of those and another question how many different mages will there be and what are they so in terms of your own uh, you've got three different ones you've got the necromancer uh, so types of mage necromancer Artificer, who's kind of creating magical items. Okay. He's putting them into your troops, so you can equip troops with these items and make them more powerful, but then more valuable. So they, they're kind of the opposite of a necromancer, who's just, you know, kill everything, get killed, I don't care. And these guys are like, build very powerful small stacks that really, you know, we equip well. And there's the alchemist, who's kind of the middle thing, who can create potions, and those potions can be used in combat. So you can heal your units in combat, you yeah. can throw explosive potions, can create bombs and all kinds of crazy stuff. And... That's, these are three basic strategies. And then there's six spell schools, 
Okay. So a necromancer usually has death, but you can also build, if you don't want to have the archetype, you can build a necromancer that has nature magic, for example, mm -hmm. and experiment with that. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for the time. Showcasing Spellforce Conquest of EO. If you want to get your hands on the game, you either can play it here right now at Gamescom, behind me at the Strategy Corner, Hall 8, THQ Nordic booth, or you have to wait until... Sometime in the future. <laughs> you have to wait <laughs> until sometime in the future, guys. Be patient. Check out their social media, yeah. and I think you'll be up to date with every yeah. If you news. join the Discord, we've got a Spellforce Discord as well, on the uh, sub-Discord sub on the Discord. Yeah. Um, we hang around there as well, so if you've got any questions, just go over there, ask a question, and there's a good chance I'll actually answer them if I'm allowed to. Awesome. I'm very much looking forward to this game. It was a blast to play. And, well, we're going into a short break. And after that, we're back with Outcast 2 and some new guests. So stay tuned and see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. Thank you for staying during this very short break, in fact. And I am back again with two new guests right beside me. On the one hand, there's Uni. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. And on the other hand is a developer of Outcast 2. If you would introduce yourself, please, to the audience. Yeah, sure. I'm Tristan Ledieu. I'm a technical game designer on Outcast 2. Awesome. Thank you very much. And our goal is to showcase the first 20 to 30 minutes of Outcast 2, a new beginning. Your job is to play as good as you possibly can or to fail as hard as you possibly can. I'll try both. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and I think the game is fully playable with the controller, right? Yes. Awesome. Then this is your weapon of choice. It should be working right now. Yeah. Awesome. I just, I just go in. Like I just, just, get going. just go in, and um, you can tell us what we're seeing here right now while she, I suppose, skips the tutorial. Yeah. So you start in the outpost. You will just have to go out of the outpost. It's just to show you know the combat system of the game and the different movements you can do. So okay. You see all the indication. You can move around and look around. It's, you know, basic tutorial of a game. Love so you can it. shoot at the robot right there. Eh. Awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So you can switch weapon to get your second weapon, the easier one. If you've Ooh. got any questions, chat, just ask them and we'll try to address every one of them um, if they're smart enough. But remember, there are no dumb questions, just dumb answers. So <laughs> we'll try to inform you as much as possible about the game. Because I know that the fan base is pretty extreme, pretty hardcore, isn't it? Yes, we have some uh, long-term fans uh, really active on the Discord. Yeah. We don't talk a lot, but we saw you. We see you. <laughs> Outcast 2, will the game have a Battle Royale mode? Uh, Someone asked well, that. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not planned. <laughs> Maybe uh, one day in a uh, few years <laughs> or decades. Oh, what awesome. Is, what is uh, the other button, the other left shoulder button. Ah, Jesus Christ, yeah. I'm stuck. So you can use your shield, you know, to oh, protect it's against attacks. So, is the demo supposed to be hard, or is this supposed to show just yeah, that you can hear yourself? Yeah, the first yourself? part is supposed to show you... Uh, really bad. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's the start. I think it's there to show you how to heal, so... Yeah. yeah. I think that's... That's it. Yeah. A few more enemies that will spawn right now. Ah. Yeah, you should heal yourself. Oh yeah, I can. It's do gonna that. be bad. How are the controls, Uni? Are they pretty easy, or how do you get used to it right uh, now? I find it hard to like move. The movement is a little bit. Uh, I guess it's kind of organic, but um, yeah, like sliding around. And a lot, and as you can see, I'm like having a hard time yeah. like, um, <laughs> yeah, it can positioning myself, the start. and I'm trying to do. Oh, the you just jumped! I have a jetpack. Yeah, what happened yeah. there? That's What's that? It's a jetpack. You can jump several times using the energy of a jetpack. And okay. Yeah. And I imagine the jetpack will be a central part of the game that stays yeah, exactly. with you. That's your main movement uh, tool, basically. You okay. can, you know, glide. You'll see later that you can glide in the air. You can do several jumps. You can charge with your shield. You have a lot of movement uh, in the game. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, flying drones. And 
story-wise. Let's talk about, while Uni is owning those robots, let's talk a bit <laughs> <Right>. about, <laughs> about the story of the game, because um, it plays right after the Outcast 1 story. Do I have to have played Outcast 1 to understand what's going on right here? No, you don't need to. It's a really okay. uh, self-contained story, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, you have some references to the first Outcast in the game, but you don't have to play the first one at all to get the game. And okay. basically, it uh, happens 20 years after the event of the first game. I see. And why are we in this outpost right now? Oh, right now, it's a uh, so setup, you know, just for the demo. Okay. So you have to just leave the outpost, and then you will, will you will have some narration oh. to explain you. Okay, you have some things to do in the village, but uh, it's a really <laughs> uh, it's really made for the demo, you know. Okay. And this is the demo, by the way, that all of you could play if you're attending Gamescom, right? Exactly. We awesome. have a booth uh, right there, in all eight. That's great. Olokai does it again. I'm trying to talk while like trying to <laughs> get into the game. <laughs> it's not it's not easy, isn't it? Uh yeah, it's, I think it's fine. I just haven't okay. played a shooter on um on uh any console recently, so Don't worry, so. Oh my god, it looks oh, you get amazing. Used to it. I love that uh environment. Help! What the Help! Someone oh no! Help yes. Help. So you will see one of the creatures of the game, one of the mini boss of the game. What the fuck is that? Funny enough. Is He'll be devoured alive. Whoa. Or not. Oh. Funny, oh that God. happened to me yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. But it doesn't end like this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I have oh, to fight this? Yes, <laughs> at the end of the demo. <laughs> it's kind of a hard fight, but it should be all right. But does it taste good is the most important question. Good. Yeah? Awesome. So we've got a, a goal in mind now. So. Ah, that's how I did it. Okay, we have a, okay, we have a glider. Yeah. Like one of those, one of those animals. How they? How, what are they called in English? Flying it's like squirrels a thingies. The the worm, you mean? The 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 animals that look just like that. Yeah, like oh. flying squirrels. Flying squirrels. Yeah, yeah exactly. right. You're the expert. Yeah, I'm just, well, I'm you just see, an expert in squirrels. And you, see, you, you cred go, Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that just didn't yeah. look good. If you go down the uh, down side, uh, <laughs> down words, yeah. You quickly gain speed and <laughs> you yeah. can crash. Uh, <laughs> it's really uh, fun at, uh, at the beginning. But you got the wrong information, stranger. We don't drink lampe in shots. Lampe okay. Is best served in what lampe and what is? Buddha? You have a translator. Yeah. If you press RT, it explains you. You know oh. quickly all the ah. specific names. Yeah, that was uh, also part of um, the first uh, outcast that they really tied in like the alien language into the yes, exactly. um, into the human language, I guess. So and uh, yeah, it made for a very good immersion. That's yeah. what I so I didn't pay attention, so I'm gonna pick whatever. Yeah, you can pick invader, <laughs> zombie. Yeah, what planet did you fall from? So they're famous for drinking yeah. a lot? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they produce all the alcohol of the I have a friend land. that's the same. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, so he's just introducing the village and... Uh, yeah. Evil Alex says, thanks for bringing back Outcast. I think he means, on the one hand, us, the stream, but on the other hand, you as the developers, right? So. Bringing back Outcast after such a long time, how did that go? Well, so uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because you have to, you know, please the old fans and keep the vibe of Outcast. Yeah. And also, you know, look at the modern stuff and try to not uh, do the things that didn't work or are too old school to really be fun right now. So it's a good uh, balance to find. Sure. Why not? Yeah. And I'm sure there are many hardcore fans that want to see this and that in the game. How Are you pleasing them a lot? Or do you say, 
well, it's our game, we do what we want. Later, it's kind of Very buff, well. you, okay. you, we have to listen to their feedback because we don't, not, we don't want to, you know, to displease them. But we also know that sometimes all hardcore fans want to, you know, to have a game without quest markers or without anything. And we still want to keep our liberty to please a more casual and, okay. uh, you know, a new audience that would be uh, quite... Uh, <laughs> would find quite hard to play a game without all, you know, the modern uh, game stuff. So, yeah, yeah we I want see. to please them, but we know where, when to listen to them and when to uh, not listen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I struggle from development. <laughs> uh, they have a really cool outfit. Looks so nice. I just walked around it to just have a look. <laughs> hey yeah. Hey there! Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty enthusiastic. <laughs> I don't feel so good, Sham. Can you fix it? I don't feel so good. I don't feel so good. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can talk to the Chamas uh, in the game to heal yourself, you know, without using it items. That's yeah. nice of them. But uh, is this part of the, like, do I have to talk to them to get, um, like, to get further in the demo? Yeah, you have to talk uh, to choose the Garonda topic. Mm -hmm. So, Peace out, oh shit. Peace out, yeah, <laughs> you have some <laughs> markers in different uh, NPCs with the Garanda topic, and he just, you know, okay. tells you uh, what the Garanda hey, is and where he is. Yeah, okay. What can you tell me about the Alpha Garandar? <laughs> it's a place, giant underground. I know that's oh the. Oh, okay. I'm shaking just thinking about it. So, what are you doing right now? You're just sorry, asking them about. About the area, about the village, about the Garonda, or what yeah. is happening right there? Yeah, I'm just uh, supposedly I'm supposed to ask about it to find the worm, and then okay. I guess fight it. I That's see. What I'm supposed to do, right? Yeah, exactly. So I just keep asking about the worm. Yeah. Okay, so you can you can select the same option. You have se you would say you have several characters. Uh, uh. You're done with uh, with him. You can just go to another character. And ah, okay. Yeah. I mean, we can also just ask him 20 times. Yeah, what sure. The worm is. I thought, exactly. I thought it was like a Dark Souls kind of thing where you just oh, have to keep asking. Oh, yeah, not at all. Like. Yeah. <laughs> you can see on the top right, you have the map. So oh, the that mini shows map, you, yeah. you know, the small markers, uh, the white uh, squares, diamonds. I was just stuck on the platform for a second. Yeah. Evil Alex asks, maybe you can answer that, will there be Easter eggs, levels or characters from the first game? Oh, you have some reference. It's a completely different uh, region of the world, so you recognize some places you heard, uh, in, you heard about in uh, the first game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a really different place. You have new characters and new, uh, new uh, areas and yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And we're mm. looking for that guy now. Yeah. Marzo. So the dialogues are really important in the game. You know, it's really a strong part yeah, of the game. You know, all those dialogues and you those topics. You will really learn a lot about the law. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I also saw that uh, people were so into the first game that they started making this uh, fan uh, fan project, and that's so nice. Like, it's yeah, like a really, really cool compliment. Like, that yeah. people want to continue the project because they love it so much. We have a lovely community and really yeah. invested uh, in the franchise. Yeah, you you can relate to that pretty well, right? Because you're a developer yourself. Yeah, I'm a um, game uh, character artist. Yeah, <laughs> and so. I think every developer wants to have such a community, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, communities that inspire to uh, make the product better uh, or uh, continue with the product after you release the first one and uh, in general just giving good feedback and yeah. constructive. And yeah, just really showing you that they enjoy your game. I think that's the best compliment. I mean. It just feels so good because it's literally the reason why you do it, to express yourself, but also to, um, yeah, like, make other people enjoy the time with your, with your uh, product in the end, so. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. And they even, I heard that they even, what is that for a cute animal? Hey, yeah. Oh. Can you ride it's those? It's a Tronha. You can ride those in the yeah. game. Yeah. You, you were yeah. able to do it in, first, in the first one, right? So. Okay. Um, what I want to say, 
is that the fans even <laughs> like established sure the game's now, language sure. or did that how did that happen yeah so in the first game you know you we had fans you know trying to push the language further oh, okay. and uh, even for Oldcast 2 we have uh, Fabian who, uh, who is a big fan of the, of the license who yeah. is working with us you know to really uh, check the law and uh, you know invent some words and you know it's kind of your consulting work to so yeah. ensure that we do not uh, go away from the the the, the spirit of the I first see. game you know the the mood of the language of the culture and yeah do you know what is cuter than the the animal right there the guy's french accent says both <laughs> sides <laughs> i know <laughs> 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 I'm trying hard to not have a French accent, but it's hard. No, it's so fine. <laughs> the, the Wolf Sire is already simping for you, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is the Garanda, the awful and disgusting worm we just found out about. Yeah. Can we now go fight him? You can go fight him. You have a marker right uh, yeah. on top right. What, what are those? It's bombards. Funny. Yeah, you can uh, you can run uh, to, toward them and you will see they will flee because they're scared of you. And you will have one of the uh, one activity in the, uh, of the game in the full, ga full game that you will need to push those bomb bars in the pen that you can see right oh, there. Oh, awesome. so, uh, we have a lot of small <laughs> activity like this. Uh, and the, the, like the, a herding, basically. Yeah, exactly. And your goal is to to well be befriend all those villages or what is your goal right yeah, now basically uh, all the villa villages have been separated by the invaders so you can then need to tie them together again so we, you will uh, travel on different villages and help them rebuild the village or just solve their problems okay and also uh, you will have Ooh. a lot of interaction and yeah, you have a dress print. That would be handy here and on Gamescom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like such a pain to go from uh, hall 10 to hall 8, like yeah. it's two opposite sides oh, of the yeah. mess. But I was really actually uh, looking forward to ride the animal in the pen. I'm, yeah. a little, I'm a little sad right now, but I guess I have to uh, play it in the end, like when it releases. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about, while she walks to that worm, combat mechanics. Oh, he's oh, here already. Too late. Too late. Too late. Yeah, yeah. What okay, are her options right, right now? Jump to ah. avoid it, if you see it again. Okay. okay. Take that. Oh. Okay. Well, of course he has uh, yeah. juice uh, poison. <laughs> it's a juicy boy. Okay. So you see that if you shoot at the head, it takes way more damage, so weak points. While yeah. if you shoot elsewhere, it's kind of hard. Okay, you have to remember to heal yourself because it's a tough fight, so you quickly go run out of life if you're not careful. The best of luck, Yuni. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's aerial combat, you can fire while yeah. flying. You see, if you fire while you're flying, you can just, you know, slide uh, in the air or float in the air. Yeah. Ooh, you didn't like that. Yeah. Or okay, or now I, I don't, back, I don't want to assume their gender. So <laughs> it's a <be> war. <laughs> ah, ah, okay. He's do, doing that thing again. Yeah, you avoid it. And what are your options concerning, like, upgrading your weapon, upgrading your jetpack? Is that part of the core game? Yes, yeah, so you will upgrade your jetpack uh, while doing your activities, you know, in the game. You will unlock a lot of movement. For example, the jet sprint you saw, when you can just sprint uh, with your jetpack, uh, you can unlock a boost. You can, uh, for the gliding you did earlier, you can unlock a boost too, so you can go upwards, etc. You have a lot of upgrades, of movement upgrade for the jetpack. Okay. And okay. you also have uh, on the weapons a uh, module system. So module you, system? Yeah, you okay. have uh, different slots on the two weapons, mm -hmm. and you can just put modules on it, and they have strong effects, kind of like kind of like in a roguelite game, you know, so it's really strong effect that combine each other oh, to create, like, you can okay. create a, a sniper rifle uh, that has a homing uh, bullets or a shotgun with explosive bullet that will uh, bring you health, life when you touch an enemy. It's really a combination like this. Awesome. So it's very customizable, your whole experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. And you get all those unlocks from 
being friends with the villagers, with the natives. Yeah, you unlock okay. uh, special powers, so you can unlock. You saw the, this form, for example, it's uh, a big thing in the west of Bida, the village uh, mm -hmm. in the demo. And if you finish the, the quest of Bida, you will unlock, you will tank the Garanda and basically unlock an anti-gravity power, you know, like the one they oh, have. Oh, okay. So yeah, you can use it on enemies to make them float in the air and you can combine the different power of the different village together. So, yeah. Congratulations! Yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> awesome. First try. Uh, well, can I actually die? Like, be honest. Can I die in you the have demo? a lot of healing potions. <laughs> yeah. Way more than you can and in the real game. Endless but, uh, ammo, can. apparently. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But good job. Thank you. Well. Did I finish it? Yeah, you finished oh, it. Okay. You can explore uh, uh, the, the demo, the yeah. world if you want. But uh, you did uh, everything you have to do. Ooh. Okay, nice. And now we can go explore a bit more. Yeah. Do you want to oh, see no. the village or you want to see the environment? Let's. Go look at the environment a bit, because the next question I want to ask you is how much are players going to be able to explore in this game? How many different biomes are there? What are the, the, the coolest uh. places to be? Okay, I can I can't tell you everything, of course. But, <laughs> That's sad. Uh, you have so you have you have an open world, a big open world with mountains, caves, uh, plains like this, mm -hmm. and forests. So you have a lot to do. Uh, you have seven villages. That just one of them. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And and how many like hours can players expect from the game? You can expect expect uh, around 30 hours. Oh, yeah. that's if pretty. You, if you don't yeah. rush the game and just do some side activities. But I imagine you can you can play the game at your own pace, however you like, right? Because you don't need no. to start at this village, right? Of you course. can just go around that village, yeah. let the village be devoured by the worm, and then mm -hmm. go to another one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, it can be uh, <laughs> the village can be devoured, <laughs> but uh, you can go in any village you want once you okay. reach. So you know when you exit the tutorial, basically, you can go where you want. Uh, some okay. villages are more difficult than others, but it's not really tightly uh, locked uh, in yeah. difficulty. So you can yeah. go uh, where you want in the world and just do what you want at your own pace, do what you like. Oh, would there be another village or is it the same? There are some buildings over there. Is, is, is that another village? Yeah, it's the same village. Oh, the same. Yeah, okay. because... Yeah, yeah. Oh, do I have to... Okay. Oh! They don't like me. Oh, was I supposed to get... <laughs> you just killed an innocent animal! Yeah. No, no, it's, it's aggressive creature, I mean, he, but... He, 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 he like... He's uh, scared. This one is scared, so... Okay, that's fine. No, but he, uh, he got out his weapon, so I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm supposed to shoot. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this one is a, it's a own thing. That's in the and he's uh, searching for his friend now. Yeah, he's lost. Look at him. He's <laughs> just sleeping. <laughs> it was a stun gun. Animal is just sleeping, Roger it says as well. It awesome, like, just this, you know, the composition of uh, the yeah. foliage and stuff. It looks so cool and the colors. Dang. Yeah, we have awesome uh, environment artists. Yeah. It does indeed look very cool. What are your first impressions of the game right now after you've played like half an hour? Um, I mean, I really like the environment and that, like I'm a very visual person so I kind of decide first thing if I like games, if I like the look basically. Um, and I'm really like, that's why I'm like stopping and running around all the time because I'm interested in animations because I do animation and it's like interesting yeah. to see how people solve it. And what started me in the beginning was that he takes like this extra second to get running like to get to yeah. go from the the idle into the movement and uh, yeah in general it's really nice and it kind of looks like um, this is like it's almost like an homage to the first game because yeah. the character movement was a little funny like looking also like always running from a pose and um, <laughs> it feels familiar so I liked that it has relations to the, to the first game. Yeah, we yeah. really wanted to keep, you know, this positive uh, science fiction vibe. Not really yeah. a dystopian one, uh, yeah. like we have a lot right now in right. Uh, science fiction games. It's really a posi positive one and exploration based one, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's like, I don't know, I don't know if you saw uh, the games that were announced in opening nightlife, like all of them oh, were... I was walking space. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they were like spacey and like gory, so it's yeah. like uh, dead space all over, like <laughs> in different scenarios. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I really like uh, also the the whole um, culture of the, um, yeah, indigenous folk, yeah. I guess, from mm. this planet, because 
um, it's settled in so nicely and it's uh, made very believable through the conversations and yeah the way the language works and um, uh, yeah it, in general of course it can't be really seen in half an hour gameplay yeah. but yes. when you spend time in the game and you get to learn the whole environment and stuff I think uh, that's that's really what's making the game super interesting so yeah it gives a great first impression to be honest I think thank you I'm, I'm hooked to try this out more when can people get their hands on the full hey, game or on, on a demo, demo maybe uh, it's uh, not announced uh, <laughs> for now so we don't have a release date for now but uh, like always like <laughs> always yeah, I can't tell you anything <laughs> but uh, it shouldn't be too long okay it shouldn't be too long guys and girls in chat no, remember it can that mean everything so anything <laughs> <Yeah>. so, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but I know the struggle you have to keep the options <laughs> open <laughs> Will it be in 2082? Uh, he guessed. They guessed. <laughs> ah, damn. They guessed it. No, but you can get your hands on the playable demo right now. If you come to Gamescom in Hall 8, you can play this, right? Yes, exactly. We have the demo available uh, awesome. in, at the Gamescom. Awesome. So feel free to come and try it. And someone said, uh, who is she? She's cool. If you want to uh. know more about Uni, you can <laughs> Put into the chat exclamation mark Y U N and one to get the links to Uni's social media and her Twitch channel as well. So if you want to follow her more, that's the way to do it. Um, thank you both for joining thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you for showcasing the game. Help guide Uni through the demo. Yes, thanks. <laughs> thank you for destroying that awful, disgusting worm. <laughs> it was fun. I, I did enjoy doing it. <laughs> yeah, it looked like very much fun as well. And we're going to do a short break now, guys. We'll be back at 2 p.m. because all of us need to eat something. I hope it's not the worm. Maybe we get, can get something better here at Gamescom. And we'll be back at 2 p.m. for you guys. So stay tuned and... Till then, bye. Welcome back, boys and girls. I'm terribly sorry for being too loud. I'm cool that you're still here at THQ Nordic's live stream live from Gamescom 2022. And right now, I'm joined by two wonderful guests named Nina. Hello. Nina Kicks is her full Twitch name. If you want to know more about her, exclamation mark Mina. M-I-N-A is the command to her channel and on her side, AJ. Welcome, Welcome. guys. One nice to be back. Yeah, you were here sometimes now, right? <clears throat> yesterday and before yesterday. Many so times, yeah. yeah. AJ, maybe you're still familiar with him. He is one of the devs of SpongeBob SquarePants, the Cosmic Shake. Let's do the Cosmic Shake. <laughs> yeah, that's his dance move. <coughs> It's the, it's, it's the original Cosmic Shave move right now. The Cosmic Shave? Shake. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the Cosmic Shave. Yeah, the Cosmic Shake, which already um, has become a GIF in your... <coughs> yes, apparently the people at the company already, they took from the live stream when I was here with Martin two days ago. Yeah. We both did the Cosmic Shake. It already has become a meme, so... Awesome. <laughs> That's really great. Good. So life goal, become, life, life goal becoming a meme, check. That's How it. does it feel to be a meme? Actually, really good, really good. People are enjoying <laughs> it, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's actually an honor, to be honest. Thanks. That's awesome. Guys, if you're hyped for SpongeBob and have some questions for Mina, for AJ, or for me, but that would be stupid because I'm here all day long, <laughs> those two aren't. So ask them questions. We're going to address all of them as long as they're smart. And we see the Twitch chat, we see the YouTube chat, so We've got you in our sight, guys and girls. And our goal in this slot is to showcase SpongeBob SquarePants, the Cosmic Shake. Let's dive right in, shall we? Yes, yes let's please. play the game. Yes. Let's go ahead. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Oh, so am I. Okay. 
in it's gone. Do you have many like experiences with platformer games? Uh, yes. Kind. <laughs> kind. Um. Yeah, let's see how you do. Just keep that, all of that in mind. Yeah, learning by doing next. <laughs> no, that's the right approach. Totally. Okay, to glide. A. How to glide. And that's that's okay. SpongeBob, by the way. Yeah. I think you know him. Yeah. How familiar are you with SpongeBob SquarePants as a whole? Oh, I skipped. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I, uh, what? How <laughs> you go with the learning by doing approach? This is totally fine. <laughs> How familiar are you with SpongeBob as a whole? Mina? Uh, com com completely. Okay. I, 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 I love Spongebob. I've watched like every episode. Um, so you know who the familiar looking guy really is? I don't know. He, the moustache, I don't know. Would it's kind of... Mm, <laughs> well, the disguise is quite good. Yes, it is. It is. I can't recognize him. I, I can't. Chat, do you know who this is? The <laughs> right answer gets... I don't know. <laughs> Go read okay. the name. <laughs> the first right answer gets a game key. <laughs> I just call it. The first right answer gets an Elix 2 game key. So okay, let's let's yeah, go okay. on. No, let's oh, go into the funny game. Funny meeting you here. <laughs> just oh, checking on the barrels, you know, keeping them safe from bandits. Uh, from bandits. Bandits. Oh, there's juicy profits. I mean, uh, cacti uh, uh, all around these parts. Now get. That was Whoop. pretty well voice acted. Thank you, thank you. I'm quite impressed. But speaking of voice actors, Law, speaking of voice actors, um, <laughs> all the original voice actors from the series are in this game, right? That is correct. So we had the chance to work together with the original cast for English and, of course, for German, uh, for reviews here also at the Gamescom. We also presented it to them. And there were many other languages that will be fully voiced with the original cast. So that was a big, big, big step for us. Nice. I think it's one of the most important things that you have to have in a SpongeBob game is the original voices. Some familiar voices. It, it gives you yes. the feeling being yeah. part of an episode, yeah. being part of the game, being is there Patrick with. Is floating? <coughs> well, that's actually yes. If you turn the camera and you leave SpongeBob standing around, it's one of the light little details and features that we put in. So if he doesn't move. Uh, we put uh, in a what, lot of eye animations. I, I, oh my! Did, did I yeah. hurt him? I mean, no, no, no! You're not hurting okay. anybody. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I just go. Just follow the trail. And follow. Uh, enjoy. I follow the bubbles. Yes. Bubbles. Woo! Follow Patrick. So you can see Patrick is floating uh, around. Uh, he's your, he's uh, your uh, balloon uh, buddy. Uh, oh, oh, Where is hit him? Hit him! Uh, yes. Bad nice. Boy, bad boy. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Patrick. Okay, let's go. Wee. Wee. Oh. Uh. Dada. To the right, I, th I, I think, yeah. Whee! Whee! <coughs> so what you can see is, is, uh, is the western level. It's one of the first levels that we have in the, the Cosmic Whee! Shake. It's the one of the wish worlds, you call it's them, seven right? seven wish worlds in total, this is correct. So Patrick and Spongebob, they get these magical mermaid tears, and they wish for the, all the things for their friends. Yeah. And basically, they overdo it. So Patrick is a balloon because he wished to be a balloon. But they overdid it and they quite uh, they ripped the fabric of reality apart. Of what and you do, yeah. And they created these seven different wish worlds. I want to get the juice! You got the, the juice, I think, already. I think so you got, I the, got juice. the juice. Yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, no, there, there you go. There's the prompt. I think you need to get closer. There you go. And now, yeah, hold but it. But nothing's happening. Uh, uh. It's, there you go. It's not easy to get the juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't Sorry. thinking about that. We should not I, take that out of context, that's for sure. I, I wasn't thinking about that, guys. You are all horrible Whee! persons. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> I'm a pro player. Definitely. Yeah, you, you're doing better than I did when I first played the game. That Actually, might not be that hard, but yeah. I'm, I'm but terribly can... sorry. Yeah. <laughs> As you've seen, SpongeBob is, is using the pizza box for gliding. Is this thing following? I think you oh, need to following. do you a can, you double jump it. on that, right? I, yes. On the and then hit the B button. Jump and B, ah. and he's going to smash it. Nice. So that's a little shortcut that opens up here. So if you fall down so that you don't have to go all the way ah. around again, that's I just a shortcut. Fall down. No, of course you're not. Yeah. There, there is other players that might, <laughs> where it might occur to them. Many people don't know that is Mina so is actually a speedrunner. Yes, I am. As you can <laughs> see, I'm not distracted by anything in this game. This is so funny. Why is it following me? 
This I'm is one of the funny things. I mean, it's, it's, it's the Tiki, so it's one of the things that we brought back from Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. For us, well, it was important to get <laughs> all the things that people loved about the game before mm -hmm. to yeah. bring it back into the Cosmic <gasps> Shake. It should also be hard for people to feel familiar, feel back home again when they play the game. Yeah. That's nice. So, of course, the Tikis are back. The slides are going to be back. They were a big part that people loved about the, the, the uh, success uh, the game before. Yeah. <clears throat> On top, what I can mention while you play is the other things that we did, what we wanted to bring back for the old game. We worked together with the same composers for the music, for the score. Uh huh. So they again took care of it because it was so much loved by the players. Uh, on the battle for bikini, jump, bikini bottom. Hey. Again, you can open another that. shortcut again. Woo! Smash go. that! Smack that! So <laughs> see, if, you, if you drop down here, you don't need to run around again. So we try to make it easier for the player. Yeah, but um, I won't keep drop. You on, yeah, so. Of course you won't. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. you can do the same with the tikis. You can also you could also smash them. Or you take the the, the 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 tiki. I can smash them. The wooden ones. Yeah. There you go. You already found the shortcut. Oh, see, she yeah. is a speedrunner. Ah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Did you expect anything different? No, <laughs> of course not. Oh. What's the right way? I think you need to go to this. No, I don't need that bubble. To the next oh. juice. It's fine. Woo! 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 Although most of the levels are pretty straightforward because we want to guide the player through the story. So as I said, we have seven different wish worlds. All of them are themed around certain episodes from the original SpongeBob yeah. series. So we try to really focus on getting uh, all the original material that you have from the series. So whenever you play a game, you come into a level, you get this feeling of, hey, I've seen this episode. This is something I know, yeah. And for example, if you've seen where SpongeBob is using the pizza box for gliding, yeah, which is a very Rose famous episode. Krabi pizza. Yeah. Did you get the juice already? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, there you go. Now I can't. Put, um, Can you already tell us more that? about the other Wish Worlds and what they were yes, going to be? I mean, if you go on YouTube and you look for, for the <coughs> gameplay, play, gameplay trailer that is out right now for SpongeBob, please go watch it. Please post comments. We at Purple Lamp, we read them. This is they're the most motivating thing for us, actually, seeing the reception of the people, how much they're looking forward to the game. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the long life. Uh, wonderful. I believe I can try. <laughs> you did, in fact. <laughs> Again, yeah, please go watch, watch the gameplay trailer. S try to please post how many references you can actually spot in the trailer. Because oh. there is many, many, many more of them. Lots so of fan service there. It's not just the pizza box, it's not just the Western level. So we have a karate level that is completely based around ah. the very famous karate yeah. episode. <clears throat> so Sandy will be there as well. You can bet on that. Okay. I can definitely I'm bet. I'm lost? Oh, oh I need to go there. Always okay. follow the jelly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> this should be the motto always follow the jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And we can expect, like you said, many appearances of beloved characters. Yes, from the all the main series. characters oh, are in the just game, of course. Follow the huge arrow, maybe. <laughs> it's not nice. Nice. There's the jellyfish in there. That, that, uh, this world, for example, is based around the Western world, uh, the Western episode that was in the original series. Don't live longer in the city, it just seems that way. You don't live. Oh, am I going to die? Oh. I I <laughs> this is an <laughs> ominous message. This is, uh, no, this is, the, this, this is a good actually. example of the little parts and bits that we put into the game for the player. There's a lot of NPCs that you can interact with. Everything yeah. is, as we mentioned already, fully voiced. I always like to mention that there is a, that we we're close to 2,000 oh, lines only for SpongeBob. Song? 2,000 live only uh, lines only for SpongeBob. Okay, that's. But there is a, a ton hell of, of voiceovers. Again, all with the original cast, of course. I love yeah. smashing things. It's so funny. Was it hard to get it's the original to cast? That you're enjoying it. To Sorry? do the voices? Was it hard for you to get the original cast? <laughs> no, on the contrary. Okay. I mean, we had, we were very, no like, very lucky that, to have right? all the support from Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had all the original script writers no, that are working on the SpongeBob series, working together with us. So they helped us to really get the Woo! SpongeBob feeling that you know from the series. Oh, I got some pants. Get it into play. Yes, the underpants—they're also back. Nice. It's I it's really important that. to get underpants. Yes. Mine. Especially for SpongeBob. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Oh, you just lost one. No, no. Fine, there's many Stop more. There. Fine. Yes. Oh, there you got him. It's rude. Wonderful. Would you consider the game to be difficult? No, on the contrary. I mean, there's many options. There is only one uh, difficulty for the game itself. Mm -hmm. But of course, we focused to make the game enjoyable. So it's a really cool, old if school I platformer can play game, it, straightforward. Anyone can play that game. Yes. Because I'm quite bad at games. 
And I kind of, <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of rock this shit. Yeah, you do. You do. You really so. do. And I'm really glad to see how much you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's wonderful. You, you guys can just keep talking, and I'm just gonna play. It's okay. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's coming from the developer side. It's really you've been working for such a long time on a game like this. Yeah. And when you see all the parts that you've been working on come together and, and becoming the game that you're now playing, it. and then seeing people like you enjoying it so much, it's just, it, it warms my heart. Oh, that's cute. Oh, 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 oh. okay, okay, yeah. okay. No, okay. no, 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 it gets tricky. Yeah. Concentration. Slow, 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 slow. 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 Yes. Oh. Frederick, get on my way. You're doing great. Yeah. Of course, I I'm do. tempted oh, to actually, throw the controller out of your hand just to to mess with you. Oh, there you have a new enemy coming. <gasps> that, did he just burp? Yes, burp? because that's his speciality. For most of the fans, you might rec also recognize what this uh, enemy character here is based on. It's also a reference to one of the original series. Yeah, give him, get him. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, and then more on the pants. Yes. This is obviously the follow-up to the last successful SpongeBob game. It is. It is literally the spiritual successor. Yeah. yeah. And you I think said there might that. Be one more. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's Don't another forget one. about him. Is he sleeping? Ah, there. Whee! <laughs> bye bye. Okay, he's gone. <laughs> Ooh, you, what's that? I think uh, you can. I can. I can oh, jump on that. But that's risky, isn't yeah, that's, it? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's one of the things about the difficulty. So yeah, you can choose. Oh yeah. wow! 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 Got, oh! oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you get. Damn it. <laughs> okay, how does she get up again? Um, she unlocked all the short shortcuts actually already, if I'm not mistaken. Ah. But <clears throat> as you can see, as much as the levels are straightforward, we also try to make it a bit open so there is yeah. space for the player to go around, explore. Ah. Basically, also look at look at jellyfield fi uh, jellyfish fields <clears throat> that is now themed with the Western theme. Yeah. Downtown Ooh. Bikini Bottom, for example, there were the karate level is taking place. So all the levels basically have a reference to a place that is from the original series. And there is Easter eggs, even, is, of course. Is there another bad, bad? Uh, it's like a bad fortune cookie, right? Confusion is a goat on AstroTurf. Now I'm confused. <laughs> I think that, that, that was the main goal of that line. <laughs> <laughs> OK, nice. <laughs> It worked. <laughs> okay, I've got no clue where to go. Where are my arrows? Where are my blue arrows? Show yourselves. Oh, no, not you. <laughs> bad, bad jelly. <laughs> oh, uh, arrow, nice. Is that the right way, AJ? Um, she will start from the beginning. I got, got two and a half minutes left. Yeah, okay. Uh, two, and two minutes, three seconds. Then let me ask you one question. Um, you said you brought many things back that fans loved about the last game of yes. SpongeBob. What are the things that are new to this game that you improved upon? One of the major features that we brought back, so as you would also see if you watch the trailer, for example, every single level, SpongeBob has its unique costume that you mm -hmm. unlock while playing through the campaign. But we thought, we can actually do more, and we yeah. should do more. Yeah. Because SpongeBob has so many different ways of, uh, and costumes that he's also wearing in the show itself. So there will be... 30 plus costumes that you will be able to unlock throughout playing the game. Okay, yeah. For us, what was important, everybody... Everyone loves skins. Yes, first <laughs> of all. And everybody has his favorite Spongebob episode or his favorite Spongebob character. Mm. Then, what is your favorite Spongebob episode? <clears throat> Prehistoric, definitely. I, I love when they do this bantering in not real language, like... Ah, yeah, it's yeah. just wonderful <laughs> and I love it so much. It's, what makes me really happy is we have the prehistoric level where they have also the costumes, oh, all really? the references, the sea bear will be there and all this stuff. Get away. So what we focused on is getting as much content that we can get from the series into the game. And I think you did a pretty good job ah, on that. We hope so, we hope so. So far the reception we got from the players, and thank you guys a lot. Yeah. When, when, I'm read, when I read the comments on YouTube, for example, how much you are looking forward to the game, I always call it for us, it's, it's positive pressure because <laughs> it yeah. pushes us over the edge. Damn it bringing all the love that we care and carry in our hearts into the game and out to the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, huh. And are there also costumes for Patrick or are we no, only... Cost Patrick will always stay the same. Okay. He, he does get fiend though when you're in the prehistoric level because there is certain Obviously. twist to it. Yeah. But, um, but they, have, they have no influence on the gameplay. Okay. Well, what we wanted to achieve is 
if you like a certain SpongeBob that you love the most, the Goofy Goober, for example, and many, many more, then you can play that SpongeBob. That's yeah, pretty nice. nice. So fans of the series will just invest hundreds of hours of their time. <laughs> There's many, many more things. I already mentioned the pizza box, which is a reference to an episode. But here in the Western level, we also have the saloon. Yeah. And when you enter the saloon, you will hear the exact same song that was played in the series when SpongeBob got into the saloon. Ooh. Oh, nice. Are there any more fan favorite songs? There is a ton of them. So we really we had access to the full songs database. And there will be so many old school songs that you will remember. And they're all placed in the right, right yeah. spot. There's a Krusty Krab song. Is the Sweet Sweet Victory song on there as well? Sweet Victory will be there, but I'm not going to tell you where. Awesome! <laughs> so you just need to find that out for yourselves, guys. No, it had, we, we had to put it in. It's such an iconic thing. It is, and indeed. Yeah, we used it on the, on the announcement trailer. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. And nice. I can also say that the Band Geek costume might also be in the game. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? The fans wanted you to try a speedrun as well. Should I? Yeah, of course. Okay, now let, while, let, let's go. Let's, let's while Nina it. relaxes a bit yes. and now judges your skill yeah. in this game, um, you can show us what you really got. Well, the got. thing is, I, I played it a couple of times, as you can imagine. How, how many times, you reckon? Two or three times before the show. Oh, or okay. Two or three hundred times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll do my best and go fast. Run, run, run. But you, show you, you more of the abilities. Oh, you didn't tell me that. I wanted to save some, you know, surprise for the others. I didn't know that SpongeBob was as agile as I am. He that was, is one of the things we've. Um, he was scared I would steal his show on the <laughs> oh, game, so no, he, he didn't, told, he didn't tell that. me <laughs> that SpongeBob can do that. So yeah, he's got a little surprise. That's AJ for you. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't do this to me. I'm not like that. <laughs> you saw me last time. I'm a nice guy. Come on. <laughs> he is, guys. He is. <laughs> no, but there is in total, I think we have around 15 different abilities that SpongeBob will get. Some of them are themed to certain levels that you all will have. And all of, those, all of those are to make him more mobile, right? Exactly. So, for okay. example, if you watch the gameplay trailer that we just released, the karate level is in there, and the karate kick is my favorite ability mm -hmm. because it, it, you can jump around really fast between enemies. You can do the. But you, you need to achieve it, right? You, do, you don't yes. have it from the beginning. Exactly. You need to go to, you need to get to the level. For each level, you get certain abilities. For example, in the pirate level, uh, we have the, the, the hook swing. That also, people love from that for Bikini Bottom. Yeah. Rehydrated. So again and again, as you see, I repeat myself. We've we brought back so many things that people really loved about the old game. Yeah. But we added a lot of new and fresh content to it, of course. Nice. Woo. And that's the dedication Woo. that players and fans can expect from you, and that's awesome. That's the dedication we have at Purple Land. I yeah. just love we, how we know, is we know what people want out there. Floating around. I just love it. I bubble can, him. Can, oh, you bubble him! <gasps> what? You didn't tell me that! He... No. <laughs> You're such a rude man! I wanted, to, I wanted you to explore it. The wrestling ring is over there, so yeah, if you want to settle should, that... We should go for yeah. a match later okay, on. Uh, may, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have skipped a tutorial, but... <laughs> <laughs> you said you're gonna <laughs> learn it while playing. Still. Sticky sweet. Sticky sweet. There you go. Mm. Add okay. juice. It would be funny if you can see how the juice uh, is coming out that cactus. Yeah. That's true. Well, nice. Let me just give you a quick look here over the western level. Hello, Patrick. Oh, what a view. What a, <laughs> what, what a wonderful Hello. view. <laughs> what a wonderful view. Okay, yeah. let's leave here for a second because yeah. also Patrick has his certain idle animations. So when you stand around, you can always see SpongeBob at the bottom where he does the duck meme. Yes. He does the meme, it, really? Yeah, he yes. does. It, it, awesome. There you go. <laughs> oh, even the face. Yes, no of course. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> it is. But again, oh, I cannot stop how much love and detail <laughs> people at uh, yeah, Purple Lamp put in there. Just imagine your three-year-old play this game and then SpongeBob does that face. Yes. He runs at you screaming and crying. As you can see, if you just leave him standing around, yeah. SpongeBob is already doing funny things all the time. Yeah. He's, he's, he's dancing, doing spongy he's shaking, things. He's, yes. He does what a SpongeBob does. That's what he does. That emote. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, someone in YouTube chat just said that they love this cartoony art style. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have you ever considered to do a photorealistic 
No, 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 it is an animated series, SpongeBob. We have to stay true uh, to the original content that we get. But it would be interesting to see because most of the characters would, I think, look disgusting. If you, I mean, you can Google it. There is a couple of people that did that. Yes. Oh, we stay away from it. Yeah. We want to get the original SpongeBob experience okay. for the people. This is what they're looking out for. I can see that. Yeah. And I also enjoy smashing the. <laughs> it's <was> fun. <laughs> The movies game was the best until now. Until now. You said <laughs> until that very now. well. <laughs> until now. Yeah, that's the most important part of this sentence. Um, what are the other parts of the world in the right side of the level? Is it Mrs. Puff's boating school and Dead Eye Gulch Ooh, from Pest of the you West? you spotted it! Not bad! Where did they spot that? <laughs> I want to see that as well. It was there. No, no, it's not down there. It was there in the back. Now it's behind the cloud. Wait, let's see if we can... But yes, it is in there. That's awesome. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm really... I'm always impressed with people, with you guys out there, the things that you can see. Seeing the details in the background. I watched that YouTube video yesterday with all the details that the guy found only in the trailer. Yeah? yeah. The references to all this. I was so impressed with that guy. And did he find everything or...? Almost. 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 It was really, really awesome. <laughs> And seeing this as a developer, people, when they this look at your great. trailers, just, yeah. yeah. And it's analyze so, them yes, like that, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's one of the best things that can happen to you. Awesome. Whoa. This attack looks so nice. <laughs> ah, there you go. One more. What bones do they have? They have different weapons. So the, 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 the small jelly that is running around, they come in different varieties. I mean, we have 12 different enemies throughout the game, oh. as I mentioned before. Some of them need certain abilities. There is no fall damage. SpongeBob is a sponge. Yes, obviously. It doesn't sense. get hurt when he jumps down. So. And he wants the here. juice. You, you're oh, the voice actor. Oh. You got a knack for reaching them, Cacti. <laughs> Just drop the juice in this here barrel for um, safekeeping. Yeah, it's totally not about making money, Mr. Crab. No, no, a familiar looking guy. Mr. Sorry. Clancy Brown. Mr. Crab? <laughs> ah, what, really? <laughs> Oh, no, no. Did you drop the money and the uh, juice in the bowl yet? <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote the dialogues? Yes, Were they written by only you, AJ? Or? No, no, on the contrary, no. Run barrel down! Follow the stream, the my little saps. <laughs> saps? Saps? Yeah. So, no, we had our designers writing, I just met before. We worked together with Nickelodeon, yeah. with the original writers. They gave us the oh, feedback, okay. they wrote stuff for us. We made the basic script, they reviewed everything for us. And they just made sure that we will hit the sponge bobbiness. Ah. The sponge bobbiness? Is yes. that a word you use regularly? Yes, we do. Nice. <laughs> Put more sponge bobbiness into the game. <laughs> so there it is, sponge the bobbiness. seahorse. Sponge bobbiness. It is nice to say it. It has a nice uh, sound. Ring, a nice ring sponge to it, bobbiness. yeah. Bobbiness. Sponge bobbiness. 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 We forgot to look at the boating school, but still I'm impressed it was spotted. So, and this is, this is one of Woo! the abilities that sponge bobbiness have. Is, yes! Oh, he's oh, fast. He yes. you, get, you, you get the boost on the horse that will help you. There's more sections that you have with the horse and the riding. Okay, I see. So every level has its own twist. Some, something is always very dominant in the level. As I mentioned before, the karate, karate level is a very good example. We have the karate jump that is core to yeah. moving around the level, getting everywhere that you need. But it's only SpongeBob you can play. Yes, it's okay. only SpongeBob. We wanted to focus on one character. Yeah. Because the main focus here is the interaction between Patrick and SpongeBob. Mm. Yeah. They are the best buddies. They talk all the time. The original German voice actors are also back, right? Do yes, of course. Yeah. That's of course, awesome. Of course. Did you get all the voice actors, the originals, from like all languages the game comes with? or It's not all languages. Okay. We're still working on uh, extending the list. Because it's definitely going to be English, it's going to be German. We got the Japanese vo voice cast in. What? I okay. listened to that already. Sponge it's amazing. Japanese. Yes. That's nice. <laughs> I didn't know I want that to hear, but now I want that to hear. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know I need so that in my life. My plan I think already I is playing the full game in Japanese. <laughs> I think I need that in my life here in SpongeBob in Japanese. Okay, one last question from Hola. Is backtracking necessary to progress through the game, or you only need to backtrack to get every costume? It is not necessary to get through the game. Okay. What we did, there is certain parts in the levels that you can revisit. Because I see. You get certain abilities later on in the game. Mm -hmm. 
and and right now we're looking at around eight hours for a full playthrough. Okay. And but we wanted to extend the playtime and give the people more of SpongeBob. So, so we came up with this idea of the revisiting actually. And if they want, they can just discover new places in the world they've exactly. seen before. There will be some areas that are blocked off. Yeah. You will notice because it shows you which ability you will need for this area. Oh, I see. And once you get it, once you've been to the level, I stay with the Karate King example. Uh, once you get the Karate King, you can travel back to levels that you've been there before. Yeah. And do certain sections. Collect more jelly and unlock more costumes. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you very much. I think we are out of time for this slot right, right now, good. for this segment. But thanks for showcasing the game. Oh, it's always AJ. a pleasure. It was fun. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> playing the it. game. I, I did I enjoy it. I hope you liked it. it. Yes, yeah. I did. And That's thank great. you, Mina, for like playing the game. And would you say she was better than you speedrunning? Of course. Of course. Thank you for this speedrun, <laughs> of course. There you What's go. your first impression of the game? Um, it is fun to watch. I like how you kind of get lost in the details and like oh in, in this cartoon world thank you yeah that's that's that's, Good to hear. that's what i like the most it's what, what kind of look at patrick pop, pop, look at patrick <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that's what i mean yeah you get consumed in this world instantly the little when, details yes, all you, around yeah when you start the game you get kind of consumed in and you you in, you in this world <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> It is, it is uh, nice. lots, lots to look at. If you can't get enough of SpongeBob, we've got another session this evening at 7 p.m. So if you want to take a closer look at that again, just, well, stay here until 7 p.m. We've got lots and lots of more content for you in the meantime. Thank you, guys. Mina, we'll see each other again in like an hour. Yes, we do. But while you're getting the well-earned break mm -hmm. after this... Um, successful run. It was kind of hard. It was kind of hard. Ah. I'm going to talk to Brad and another developer of The Look Valiant at Patrick. Look at Patrick. <laughs> about the game The Valiant. So see you in a few minutes and we'll be right Thank back. Thank you very much. Goodbye everyone. Bye bye. Hold the phone. What are these freaks want? Crypto! The Blisk! Blisk? Wait a minute. I, I thought we wiped the Blisk out. I have no explanation, but a few of them must have somehow survived. Not for long. Attention, Blisk. I am Cryptosporidium of the planet Furon. This planet is now a territory of the Furon Empire. And your asses belong to me. Fill me in on this whole Blisk thing, Pox. They're huge, hideous brutes with giant claws and withering alatosis. Imagine a cockroach mating with a lobster. Oi, enough already. You're making me queasy. you worry your virtual little head, Pox. This time they're going down for good. You want to get the disease, you have to shoot the spores. Let's throw the Destroy them! Starting with their crashed warship. Bring on the Boom Boom! You are so cute when you do that. You saved the princess. Er, Natalia. You should probably go over and, you know, make sure she's all right or something.
I think little Crypto just woke up. There is a house in New Orleans they call the rising sun where thousands of young to salvation have gone. Oh God, she knows I'm one. Don't let them get inside, compare. They're not the good guy. Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. Maybe the Dark Man just likes it when you suffer. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition? This is madness! Are you crazy? Fall on your knees, where the man? Ever since you took that damned scepter, you haven't been yourself. You brought us here, then abandoned the fight, abandoned your men, and even abandoned your vows! For what? So you're alive, brother.
My lord! The honor is ours, brother. There's no turning back. No rest. No doubt. Advancing. What? What manner of beast? Beast! He falls! Went through Sneman, thou beast beast! I see you have brought friends. In God's name! Back off, Dave! In God's name! What happened to you, brother? On the march! Back off, Dave! By your command! Fate is curious, don't you think? After all I had to suffer and sacrifice, it puts you in my righteous path. You! Don't make me do this, Theo. And welcome back, guys and girls, here. We're live at Gamescom 2022 with the THQ Nordic livestream. And I'm now joined by Brad, producer of The Valiant, and one of the dev team, Jimbo. Hey, Hello. Guys. One of the developers <laughs> on The Valiant. It's a strong contrast to what we've been seeing before our break, SpongeBob. But this one, well, it's more, I think, more complex, more strategic, and there's more muscular men fighting out wars <laughs> against each other, right? Muscular men. Is that you? Are you also in there? Did we do like some capture of you? No, no. I think we, we haven't managed to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very different uh, uh, game than the one before us, but it's, it's, it is RTS, uh, tactical RTS, uh, a very beloved genre of mine, personal favorite, and um, it, is, uh, it is a new take on the genre, which is really, really exciting. We're going to get a chance to show stuff that we haven't really showed publicly yet. I mean, there's, oh. there's we've done some stuff behind the scenes, but we're going to play a map that we've never shown before. Um, so that'll be fun. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, some little exclusives. And uh, we're just going to show you the game, talk you through some things, a lot of game to show. So yeah. we have a lot to go over. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to what we can see now here. And there's many points we want to address during yeah, this segment. Absolutely. Our goal is for you to know everything about the Valiant, everything you can expect from the game. Everything includes all the three awesome game modes That's you're right. going to pack in there. And we already see those on this screen right here. Oh, yeah, wow. There you go. They're laid out right there in a way. <laughs> that, that's, what, a great, what a great segue. That was done Wasn't so it? well. Yeah. So we've got the campaign, the competitive segment, and last man standing. Maybe you can quickly talk about what each of these game modes brings to the table. Yeah, sure. We'll go a real quick high. That's a, that's a good idea. So we have a 16-mission campaign. It's very, very dynamic. All the missions are handcrafted. Um, they're, they go from different styles of, of experiences. You have your epic sieges. There's a couple of those. We're actually building trebuchets and sieging castles. You have your more sneaky missions. You have there's one mission you're actually defending a castle that's where enemies are coming from all sides. There's some linear stuff. There's some more open stuff. It's, it's, it's all over the place because we really want to create an experience that paces um, new things every single mission. Yeah, I um, see. There's also a new game plus which is super exciting for most, because New Game Plus is not super common in the RTS space. I didn't even know that it's possible to do in RTS. What are the differences in the New Game Plus? Can you already so, tell Yeah, that? so the game has, uh, and we'll go into this in a second, but there's a lot of progression elements. Your heroes level up, they get new skills, they get items, there's loot in the game. Um, and then when you finish the game, you can actually take that save file and do a New Game Plus, where you start off where you ended power-wise, and you can get new items, some new functionality. There's new enemies that show up in New Game Plus. Ooh. There's new challenges. It's the same missions, but they're very, very different. That's awesome, because lots of games just do New Game Plus and, well, give you the same game, but its difficulty is higher, and you show even more game, even more items, even more abilities during yeah. the New Game Plus, right? Absolutely. Awesome. And then the other two uh, game modes really quick. So competitive is competitive, 
uh, 2v2 and 1v1. Um, it's a whole different kind of experience. Uh, it's very fluid, very, very uh, dynamic. Um, there's a, it's kind of, a, I mean, the structure is very familiar. It's Conquest, so you have control points. That's going to be recognizable for most RTS fans, but it doesn't play like any other RTS out there. It's very unique. And then Last Man Standing is our co-op mode because people like to play with friends, uh, even though Jimbo and I usually play against each other. People <laughs> like to play with friends. I so think right now we are the best Valiant players so far in the are. world. We are. Yeah. We are the best, <laughs> best Valiant players in the world so far. Um, but the uh, last man standing is a way for you to play with two other people, so it's a three-player co-op experience. Okay. And it's really um, uh, very different in that you, it's, it's, I saw someone in chat mentioning MOBA-like. It's not MOBA-like, but it has some of those influences because you only control one hero. Oh, so it's a lot of like really quick cooperation. You're doing this, I'm doing that. A lot of, um, you know, um, there's items that are in the game and you have to figure out who's going to get what and who's going to use them. You can use them on each other. It's very, very dynamic. And uh, there's meta progression there. You level from 1 to 20. And as you're leveling, you're getting new skills, and um, that's uh, there's there's five different difficulty. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm a lot very there. excited to see that. We're going to take a closer look at that later in this segment. Yeah. But let's start and just jump right into the campaign. Let's go through it. So we're going to show a mission that's a little bit later on in the campaign. And one thing you're going to see right here in the bat is our world map. And don't move around on this one. We're going to keep this <laughs> yeah, yeah. locked on one screen. I am tempted to just. I know. Well, <laughs> but um, one thing that we tell people, the story has a lot of inspiration from Indiana Jones style storytelling. Okay. So um, you think about like, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where you're kind of on this race to get this thing before someone else does. The game has that kind of implication. So you're Theodore von Alkenberg, you form this uh, war band and you're trying to get um, the remaining pieces of this relic, this rod of Aaron that a former comrade in arms is also trying to get. If he gets them and unites them, bad things are going to happen. So we actually drew inspiration from this map. We actually originally had a 3D map and we were kind of messing with that, but we ended up here because we're like, you know, that whole Indiana Jones movie where you have like the, <laughs> like the whole, we like that was so cool. Yeah. So that's kind of how our campaign map works. So to kind of bring that that kind of race and journey to the to, to the forefront. And you go from one side of the Middle East or Europe all the way to the Middle East. So it's a oh, very awesome. long you know, journey with different yeah. trials and tribulations you have to face. So from what I can see, the, you reached a goal with that kind of art style for this map. And now we're going to do the Lost Souls mission. Is that yeah, right? It's, it's, it's a little bit deeper in the game, but it allows mm -hmm. us to show off a number of things. You go ahead and hit start mission, Jimbo. So one of the first things we mentioned earlier is the game has... Um, some depth when it comes to heroes and the progression. So this is our current cast of heroes. Some of these heroes you're going to discover as you're playing through. They all are voice acted. They all have a lot of backstories. I'm not going to spoil anything there. But if you click on, say, Reinhardt over there, um, all the heroes have three skill trees. They're all unique. So the skill trees are different per hero. They do a lot of different things. They unlock new abilities. They also give um, bonuses to both heroes as well as mercenary units, which are the, the normal squads. There's a lot of different things they do when you're trying to decide your build. So as you're kind of progressing, you're trying different things and trying different builds. Even playing another time through, you may try a different approach, which can open up different options as you play. Then we also have an inventory system, um, and this is where you actually find items. Um, you equip armor, weapons. Um, each character has two weapon types that they can use. So Reinhardt is either a axe and shield or a double-handed axe. It can be DPS or tank. Yeah. Um, Conrad, the archer, can either have a crossbow or a bow and arrow. And you pick these weapons up in mission, so it's not like okay. just there. So yeah. there's loot in the missions. You're finding them, and they have different stats. And sometimes it's a little bit randomized, so you may not you, know, you get different ones as you play. So there's a little bit of light RPG elements mixed in there. To be honest, I didn't expect him to really switch to the other weapon when you clicked on the other weapon. So, Absolutely. So that's on the character mode. Models is lots of details. Yeah, yeah, see, really, yeah. And you, you get the. It's fun because you get to see those different stances, and they get a different weapon skill based on what weapon they're using. So yeah. if you're the, like for Conrad, if he's the bow and arrow, it's a volley ability. If he's the um, the crossbow, he gets the um, the little trap ability. So there's a lot of different mixes there that you can play with. I see. And does that affect their squad as well? Because I imagine. So if you go, we'll go ahead and pick a hero here. Go ahead and grab Reinhardt. Um, so when you're building, so I should say, um, you don't have any real like, base building in the traditional sense. You're actually going to set your army before each mission. So it's almost, it's not a card game, but you okay. are kind of like picking what units you're going to bring to the field and then you play with them. So you have your three heroes, and in this example, he picked um, three kind of tankier heavy heroes. Now we're going to pick our mercenary squads, and this is where you get your crossbowmen or your archers. So they're not swapping weapons, but they're different actual units. Okay. And uh, the units have different skills and different strengths and weaknesses. 
There's a lot of rock, paper, scissors in the mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. We wanted to give the players a lot of choice. Uh, personally, I like more like a, a, a high-risk, high-reward game style. I usually, usually like to do very uh, much damage in a short period of time, but it's a high-risk game style. So actually, I have less room to make mistakes there. <laughs> there are colleagues of mine who like a bit more tanky setup, so they yeah, like the turtle good, formation. Maybe not as skilled. No, 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 no. They are as, uh, <laughs> just as skilled as me. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So great. a lot of different options for players to play. So why don't you pick our units for uh, this okay. map? Yeah. Why don't you tell us what we're gonna play here? It would be pretty bad to only take archers and crossbowmen, right? So, yeah. so let's do the shield bearers because I am a fan of spears. Oh, okay. Okay. And a bit, a little bit of defensive um, forces we do, there. We do have two tank. We do have tanky heroes. Okay. But the shield bearers is a really good unit. So that's good. So then we let's grab a spear if you like spears. There's a spearman too. We can show the spearman as well. I think. It's okay. Then show the spearman as well. Hell yeah. And the archers, because one ranged option should be. Pretty viable. It's always. For this I think this setup makes a lot of sense. Now. It does. Thank yeah. you very much. We also do setups that don't make sense, and they're also kind of fun still too. <laughs> like Jimbo played uh, in front of a press <laughs> presentation earlier. And he had three archers, and he did it that way, and it actually kind of worked. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's lots of different ways to play. It's really fun to like experience with these uh, crazy setups because yeah. actually. This is how the meta is forming right now. Uh, right now, for us, at, at least for us at the company. Uh, I didn't want to. I didn't wanted to make it too hard for you, so you lose <laughs> oh. this presentation. Oh, I don't think it's good. Yeah, it's he's, good. He's, 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 he's good to go. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's go see, jump into the mission. Let's go for it. Yeah. So we're gonna skip past the cutscene, but the game has a number of storytelling mechanics. Um, we have these really beautifully rendered Should 2D. I, uh, skip. You can let some of it play for a second. We have these beautiful 2D rendered uh, cutscenes um, that you can experience. We have um, these uh, uh, 2D kind of journals that are narrated by one of the characters, and okay. they're really. Pr we can sh maybe show a little bit of one of those in a second. <laughs> um, and then we have in-game cinematics, and there are tons of these throughout each mission. So they're kind of the the end mission storytelling mechanics. So we'll go ahead and in this mission, the quick setup is that. Um, um, there was a, a scouting party that gone ahead. You're going into this Bulgarian forest because of circumstances I'm not going to go into. And then the scouting party doesn't return. And so you go out there and find them poisoned, and then now you get ambushed. Oh, and you're okay. having to deal with this ambush, and then the story goes from there. So one thing we'll, we'll talk about really quick, if you don't mind pausing it for a second, Jimbo. Um, the way that the mechanics work, there's two health bars. And I'm going to point them out. One of them is white, and one of them is blue. Yeah. So the white health bar is what we call protection. You can kind of think of it as like how well the unit is doing. Protection when it falls, it can recharge. If they're out of combat, there's ways to recover it. Um, it's it's the first help bar that takes damage, but it's not. Um, you know, there's a lot of latency in that where you can kind of mess with it. Once protection drops, then you start losing health. And when losing health, that's when units in the squad start dying. If it goes all the way, it dies. Um, health can only be recovered at war camps. Okay. Um, not all maps have war camps. So some of them, it's like once you start losing health, you got to really be, or get the protection gone. You need to get them out of danger yeah. or try to get them healed or whatever. So there's a lot of balancing between um, health and protection and, and how you can have juggle it. Um, you can go ahead and, and, and start playing. I'll keep talking. Um, some of the things we noticed when we were developing the mechanics here as they started to evolve is we actually, and this may seem a weird place to draw inspiration from for an RTS, but we actually drew a lot of inspiration from World of Warcraft. Okay, and now I want to know what kind of inspiration you draw from it. And so I, it, what we noticed is that because we're trying to do a different type of RTS, it doesn't play like anything else out there, yeah. things were very fluid. And there's a lot of, of who's attacking whom and when they're attacking whom. So there's a lot of almost aggro management. Mm -hmm. And if you think about like advanced WoW raids or, or some of the more advanced World of Warcraft mechanics, it really comes down to that. Like who's going to take which hit? How do you protect a mage or a yeah. castle? There's a lot of that motion around the space. And Blizzard played with a lot of those concepts in really interesting ways, especially in some of their later raid design. So we were looking for inspiration from some of that. And we found that it really worked well with our gameplay. So there's a lot of moments where it's like, OK, you're kind of being aware of who's in what position. You're kind of being aware of like, okay, this person's protection is dropping, so I need to swap them out for somebody else. I or, see. You know, I, I, have, I have to attack in order to. Un you know, there's a lot of that kind of um, ability playoff and positional playoff that makes the game feel very. Um, I don't know. It's almost <laughs> like you're controlling a whole bunch of different members of a team. 
<laughs> so, so the positioning is a core combat mechanic that you shouldn't, well, you shouldn't forget it. Right? Absolutely not. Okay. Especially with things like range units, and even with like if a range unit's uh, uh, enemy unit's out there shooting at you, you need to go and close the distance and get to it. Yeah. And sometimes enemies will try to cut you off. There's a lot of that kind of dynamic going on because it's a melee game. It's not guns and range. It's all yeah. most of it's melee. So it's like another, a whole other approach to the genre Absolutely. in that sense. What other combat mechanics are there that distinguishes this game from its competitors? So there's a couple things that's worth talking about. I mean, one, in general, there's a lot of different abilities that all the units have. So mm -hmm. Jimbo is clicking on Theoderic right now. He has a banner he can drop that does certain effects. I think he has suppression on this one. Yeah, OK. Um, but, he has, uh, but he has different banners based on how he's skilled out. He has a heal ability that kind of heals protection. Um, you have the, the spearman who can throw a spear that can disable movement for a while. So the ability usage is very um, unique, and they have very different mechanical um, uh, consequences for doing them. Then there's also this thing called Vengeance. Um, so Vengeance, what, what basically what happens is as, as well, it's a hero exclusive, but I guess enemy units also, uh, enemy elite units also have it too. Okay. Um, as a hero is taking damage or dealing damage, they're going to gain Vengeance. And after Vengeance has got to 100%, so right now it is maxed out, there's a couple of different things they can do. So one thing is they can consume it all and do what's called Retribution, which is this giant AOE attack around them. Or for range units, for Conrad, he does these really high damage attacks. But some characters' skill builds actually take advantage of Vengeance. So in this uh, um, build for Theo, yeah. he actually gets almost instant cooldowns on all of his abilities while his Vengeance is maximized. I see. Now, Retribution is really powerful. So you want to use it. He does a lot of damage. But you may be in a situation where I'm going to wait, use the benefits of having Vengeance full, and then consume it for Retribution. You're kind of yeah. balancing out all these things kind of with trade-offs. Some characters even have abilities that consume a little bit of Vengeance in order to do their move. So I see. there's this other layer involved with how the heroes play. And that ties into the enemy elite units, too, because they're also gaining vengeance, mm. and they can use retribution on you, which also hurts really bad, <laughs> yeah. especially in New Game Plus. So, like, if you see that filling up, you got to move away from them so they can do their attack and then close back in. Yeah, and then we're again at the positioning. Exactly. Yeah. So, and the other thing is this intricacy of combat with the retribution will be a very, uh, will play a very big role in the PvP as well. I, Absolutely. I oh, yeah. So they're yeah. going to fuck you up if you don't pay attention. That's so true. I yeah. mean, so PvP, um, you get one hero for uh, each character, mm -hmm. or for each player. But yeah, retribution is extremely, like timing that, especially when the normal units are around, is, yeah. is, is important for sure. I can imagine that. Yeah. What are we doing right here, right now? So we're still getting ambushed, are still in a bad spot? Yeah, the, the, what's going on in this mission at the moment is your, your, your guys are sick and they're not moving, and so you're yeah. trying to figure out what's happening to them. And there's a clue that maybe there's someone in the forest that may, you may be able to intimidate them or do something and try to find out. So you're right now in kind of exploration mode. And as you're going through, these enemies keep on popping out and are trying to kill you um, so you're kind of fighting your way through to eventually a village um, and then things happen from there um, and okay. you'll see some of the different dynamics there's, there's a taunt that just went off right there there's a lot of these different skills um, uh, well yeah your archers oh, are going to die um, I need to save it bam I hear <laughs> um, nice we just saw you position your army very well there you go yeah. congratulations <laughs> that's what I like about this game I mean I have really uh, uh, I have a very rich tool set to deal with uh, different types of situations. For example, like Brad mentioned, that elite units have uh, Vengeance 2. Yeah. And there are uh, a lot of uh, types of abilities how to do that. I mean, I have uh, uh, different types of solutions. Do I want to lock that unit down? Do I want to uh, CC that unit? Do I want to uh, take its aggro? So there is a lot of uh, uh, ways to deal with a certain type of mechanic, and that's what I really like about this game, that every uh, person can find their own solution to these problems. Yeah. Uh, we problems actually we create. <laughs> the problems we created, yeah. 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 Oh, you just got a piece of uh, gear right yes. there. Um, yeah, and I think that's that was part of our goal with this product, is, you know, we... we there you go. Um, yeah, there he is, an elite unit running away. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a very big RTS fan. I played competitively a long time ago, uh, yeah. a little bit. And it's, it's my favorite, one of my favorite genres, if not maybe my favorite genre when I'm playing just for me. Mm. Um, and uh, I've really felt like the RTS space has gotten a little stale the last five or ten years. Yeah, it, it did. There, there are many sequels. There's a lot of sequels. You know? And I'm not like them. I play them. They're fun. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't Whoa. really feel like people are taking chances anymore to do something different. And so we 
we really wanted to challenge ourselves. How do we come up with something new and kind of fresh? Uh, we did drive uh, a lot of inspiration. I drive a lot of inspiration from, from Dawn of War 2 specifically mm -hmm. um, because it's one of my favorite games and, and no one's ever done anything like it before. But I, it reminded me a bit of Dawn of War, but I, I, I didn't want to address it, but the squad based thingy yeah, and then Dawn of War 2 e equipping sure. the heroes. Yep, yep, yep. Dawn of War 2, we a lot. But I, I think. The, there's the, the Dawn of War 2 is still a heavy range based game. Yeah, and, and this is all melee. It's all well, mostly melee. So that melee yeah. combat really changes the flow of things quite a bit. And it's quite a bit like slower combat and technically more challenging maybe as another RTS yeah, is, right? Yeah, it's, it's slow, but it's also really fast, especially in the harder difficulties. Like there's, okay. because you can get, th there's there's a lot of counterbalances going on at once. So for example, if you have a cavalry unit and you get confronted by a spearman, that's going to go bad very, very fast. And you have to react almost before it happens. You see yeah. the spearman coming in, and that's where the dance comes in. It's like, okay, I was moving my cavalry forward, but now a spearman comes out, and I need to kind of like, dance away a little bit and someone else needs to intercept and then I can go around so there's a lot of that that's what the positioning comes yeah. right back in because you're playing the battlefield area a lot um someone says nano says this game looks complex how would you rate the complexity of this game in contrast to other competitors you know it's interesting because I feel like RTS as a genre is a deep genre yeah right like I could I remember as a kid playing like command and conquer and Starcraft the first time and it's like you played those as a kid and they were just fun mm -hmm. then you go see like the guys who are APM monsters playing Starcraft and you're going yeah. they're playing a different <laughs> game like that's not that's not what I'm playing so I think that there is one thing I've always appreciated about the genre is there's a way for people that want to experience a certain type of game to enjoy it mm -hmm. and they can go to a certain level of complexity and then there's people that really want to get into like the counterbalances and everything and the real way you play everything right and that's where new game plus is for or competitive is for or even like the higher difficulty tiers in last man standing yeah so there's there's kind of something for everyone based on how they want to they, they want to experience it I see. And you chose, let's talk a bit about the setting this game is set in, because of course you wanted to focus on melee combat in contrast to ranged combat. Yep. But have you considered other settings than this medieval one? No, no, no. This was the vision from the very beginning. We okay. really wanted to do, that was part of trying to find a way to tackle something fresh. There's a really, like in the last, what, I guess, like the only two, and I, don't, I don't even know, personally I don't consider Age of Empires a melee game. Yeah. It has melee for sure, but there's spells, there's range all over the place, there's guns, like, it has a whole bunch of range there. Um, the only other real melee heavy RTS out there is Ancestor's Legacy. And good game, fan of it, played it, <laughs> um, I like it. But. but it had its own way of doing that. It had this whole yeah. locking system that was really cool and, and innovative, but it also had a lot of things that it took from, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about somebody else's game, but we wanted to go here because that's so unexplored. Now that was risky because we had no one to reference. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, who are we going to look at? Well, we'll play Ancestors. Okay, we're not doing that. Who else? World of Warcraft? Like, where do you go? Like, we had to <laughs> yeah. go get creative. So, absolutely. I see Evil Alex uh, 87 has a great question. Game only on PC or also on consoles? So, yeah, we're coming to consoles too. You do? Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that pretty difficult to port a RTS to yeah. consoles? Yeah, but these guys are really good at it. Oh, so, um, that's fortunate. Yeah, yeah, it's really <laughs> fortunate. I wonder why we use why they're making this game. So, um, yeah, so Kite Games uh, made a very well-respected game on console called Sudden Strike 4. Mm -hmm. And if you ever read some of the reviews of the game, it was it was known as having a very uh, streamlined control scheme for handling RTS. And I think the, the UI and the UX team at Kite really have a good handle on it. And we built it from the ground up that way. Now, it is... PC first and foremost. I play on PC, but there is an exam There is a very streamlined uh, way to play on consoles that works well, as well as GamePad. You know, hopefully, game. Uh, I got my Steam Deck recently, so maybe yeah, Steam Deck. Okay. Like, all those things are still on there for sure. Um, now, I'll pause for a quick second. This is another Jimbo's steamrolling this. This is, nor <laughs> this is normal difficulty, and he's the second best. Maybe the best player in the world. The second that you were referring to yourself, right? Maybe, no. Well, wait, how many are so, there exactly right now? I mean, there's just us two. <laughs> kind of no, no, no. No, there's a lot of people in the team that play. Yeah. But they don't really, they're not in the same. Okay. So, um, this purple elite unit that's here, he's killing it last, and that's his approach in this. Um, this, this is a good example of, of other mechanics that come in. So this unit will do an AOE heal around itself. Yeah. And so if you keep other, if you keep it alive and other units are near it, those units keep on getting healed, and that can make the fight go on really long. And New Game Plus, that heal is like 
all it's the same. time. Okay. So it's like you have to split them apart or you have to focus fire that one and find a way to absorb all the other damage. So there's like, what, three or four different elite types, I think? Yeah, Maybe even more plus. than that at this point. No, no, no. baseline. There's like baseline. There are f uh, at least four. I mean, there's, I think I every think unit more, type has an elite version. I think they all so have an elite like version. Six or seven. Yeah, the elites all have some unique functionality to them. So you have to recognize if a purple unit is coming down. Okay, I have to pay attention to this one a little bit differently, mm -hmm. and that also kind of mixes up some of the combat experiences. Yeah, yeah I can in, imagine. Yeah. In, in New Game Plus, the difficulty ramps up, ramp ups a bit because uh, these are uh, uh, we. You try to balance it in a way that these mechanics shouldn't be d devastating to the player. You know, there is a lot, lot of things to uh, pay attention to. And, and uh, but in New Game Plus, when you had, had the whole experience already, these these can, these uh, uh, features are a bit more uh, uh, not not that bit for not that forgiving at that point. Okay. So you, you have to really avoid these areas. You have to really move out from those red circles. So yeah, you you be, have to be positioning all the time. Absolutely. Same with the boss fights. I think we mentioned before, or maybe we didn't, but there's multiple bosses throughout the campaign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The bosses out there are, are completely. Um, scripted, unique events. They have mm -hmm. ads that come into the space. They have their own unique mechanics. And in the, in the normal campaign, I mean, they're still tricky and they take time to figure out. But you can still kind of like, you can you, you play through it, right? Um, if you play a new game plus, you make a mistake on the boss, you're done. Okay. Like it's, it's very, very, very dramatic. So. so you have to try hard, really hard. Yeah, for sure. Um, is there anything else you want to show us about the campaign? No, I think because uh, we don't want to go too far in the yeah. story. We don't want to spoil too <laughs> yeah. much. But hey, everyone that's on here, you saw an exclusive. We haven't shown. We yeah. saw this in trailers a little bit, but we're not really showing this convention off. So that's super cool. So you're lucky, guys. If you have any questions about the campaign, about the values, on, about bring it. what's bring coming it. up, because we're taking a look at some B-roll material Absolutely. of uh, and multiplayer. Of multiplayer. And also, Evil Alex 87, thank you so much. We're we're, we're glad you're enjoying it. Um, please feel free to ask us any questions you have, and we really hope you like the. Game game when you pick it up uh, on launch day. So that's that's really kind of you. Yeah, that's, that is. Um, indeed. Let's take a look at this just mentioned B-roll by me. Yeah, so we're going to um, show, we have two clips of B-roll, and we're just going to play them in the background while we're talking. Yeah. Um, so the first one is um, going to be all about PvP. And PvP we talked about before, it's 1v1 and 2v2. And uh, it's, I mean, how would you describe PvP? I, I feel like I've described it so many <laughs> times. I'm going to let you describe it this time. Well, PvP is like a, a more more traditional take on the RTS genre, I think. So in PvP, you have to control uh, uh, victory points. Uh, you can win the game by by uh, uh, decreasing the enemy's influence. Oh, this is LMS, actually. Yes. Do you want to yeah. talk about LMS instead first? We can oh, swap. this is LMS? Oh, yeah, okay. we can do LMS first. Whatever. It's well, fine. then, let's do that. Yeah, We're do doing it, LMS. Do it then. Am I doing LMS? Yeah. Sure. All right. So, <laughs> last man standing is our co-op mode. So, it's the three-player co-op mode. You'll see down below. Um, there's Theodore, Conrad, and Reinhardt. And uh, this is like teamwork to the nth degree. So you basically have four different directions that enemies can come from. Okay. Um, that is a little bit randomized. The actual waves are, are scripted, um, but there's five different um, difficulty. We call them paths. Um, yeah, it's very, it's, it's, <laughs> keep like you're right. We were very inspired by Dawn of War 2's uh, Last Stand, for sure. But that was a very successful mode, by the way. It was, and I was, always, I've always, as a fan who played quite a bit of it, I was always disappointed that no one also messed with it. I loved Last yeah. Stand. So when we first were talking about how we wanted to bring co-op to life in, in Valiant, I'm like, hey, let's 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 go look at Last Stand and let's try to find new things we can do with it. So we have some different mechanics that exist in Last Stand. We have some bosses exist in LMS. We have five different difficulty paths. Um, so as you level from one to twenty, you kind of graduate to the different paths. There's an in-game path. Um, there's three different items that drop on the map. So you have boots, which we go fast. You have these water jugs that refill your vigor, which is kind of like your ability mana. Yeah. And then you have a bandage. Um, during last stand, last man standing, there's no healing by default. So you don't get protection or health while you're there. You, when you take a hit, you lose health. Mm -hmm. So bandages are how you recover. There are some skills with specific builds of the trees that allow you some health regen, but you're really having to kind of like, okay, you take this, I'm gonna go heal you now. There's a lot of kind of coordination yeah. with those items. Um, you have three different uh, objectives you're trying to defend, the carts. Okay. And those carts are actually producing those items that you need to use. So if one of the carts gets destroyed, like the boot cart gets destroyed, the boots aren't there anymore. The bandage cart's the last one, so the bandage cart dies, you lose. Um, because you need the bandages to kind of survive through. Yeah. So there's a lot of really cool um, like meta dynamics that are going on as you're progressing through. 
Are the items that drop random uh, immortal? So uh, in the campaign, the items are randomized. There's uh, immortal. Okay. There's 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 a few of them um, that are kind of seeded into the maps based on the power level, but there is some randomization. In LMS, the items are based on which cart. So each cart spawns an item because they're okay. pretty essential for the the experience. Um, and then, like, you, like so, for example, if you're playing Conrad, you're probably going to pick up the Jug a lot because the Jug is what re heals your vigor. And yeah. Conrad is the DPS class, so he's always using his abilities. But the other two classes, if Conrad gets hurt, may use a bandage on him. So they can pick up a bandage and I kill see. Conrad while he's running around. So that's where some of the communication comes in. And what can we see at the top left corner over there? This is the wave we're at right now. There are 20 waves. Uh, 15 waves, 15. Uh, 20 levels for each character. So okay, yeah. at the end, you gain experience, and the experience levels your hero up. And then you, um, uh, you, the further you get in or how well you're doing, there's some multipliers that come into play. Um, and then, yeah, the wave 15 is the last boss fight, and then you're done. And I suppose there are also difficulty levels you can set up, or is it only one? We call them paths. So we have, like, was it the Knight's Path, the, squire, the Squire's Path, the Knight's Path? The Hero's Path. Hero's and, Path. Uh, yeah, and King's Path, maybe. King's Path, yeah. yeah. And so, like, like, one to five is the Squire Path, and, like, around level five or seven, you go into the King's Path. Oh, okay. So you kind of, each, each one is its own its own difficulty, but it's also like tuned to the level of power you should be at at that point. I see. And mm -hmm. it's different, like each one is a little bit different. They have different enemies that are coming in. There's more elites the further you get in. And then if you get to level 20, we have end game for Last Man Standing. And again, this is stuff that, you know, we wanted to bring as innovation. So we actually have mutators that can be randomly spawned in at level 20 oh, awesome. on the fifth path. And mm -hmm. they do all sorts of crazy things. Like, well, one of the mutators, random enemies when they die can explode and do damage all around them. <laughs> okay. There's another one where like, um, uh, Enemies uh, buff uh, allies when they lose protection, for example. There's that one. There's one where I think they're immune to uh, certain damage types. Yeah. So like, we have all these. And so like, there's probably going to be as people start getting used to them, like bad combos and good combos. Yeah. So we're hoping when you play with your friends, you're like, oh god, we got this oh. roll. Like, how are we going to mm -hmm. deal with it? Um, RNG God doesn't like us. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you need to adapt to the situation every time you play. Yeah. For the, that's that's the level 20 um, uh, like in game stuff. Yeah. But, um, and then we also have. Have, like we have cosmetic rewards that are also part of both game modes you unlock army painter um, color options you unlock different banner or badges for your character that you can okay. display to your yeah. friends so there's a lot of that stuff that's in there too as you're kind of progressing through the different um, man paths. I love this game mode I mean <laughs> it, this, this plays a lot differently than the other two yeah. game modes we have I mean I love co games I love uh, this I love cope more than uh, uh, than PvP f uh, for example uh, from table games as well. I mean, I, I like uh, working with my friends towards a goal. So, this well, is something good. I love about it too is it, it may not be obvious. Like the the the, the skill trees. God help us for why we decided to take this on. But the skill trees for every game mode are all unique. So like for every not, game mode as well. Every game mode are completely. Again, God help us, different. <laughs> Jimbo and I have wanted to like throw ourselves out of windows. <laughs> so many. Because in the beginning, and this is like developer you know history for you guys, right? In the beginning. They were the same for LMS, and we basically took the, the single player skills and brought them over. Yeah. And then we started playing it, and we're like, these aren't going to work. Like, they're just not going to work. They, yeah. don't, they don't really bring the most fun for here. They're not the right skills for this kind of experience. Mm. These cooldowns, these uh, these costs, not just not going to work. We have it wasn't to even the cooldowns, though. Like, it's like, like one, one example I was telling earlier, so Reinhardt, one of the characters, his single player skill for one of his weapons is a, is a single unit taunt. And in campaign, it's super powerful because you want to, like, pull a unit off of somebody, and that's really important. Yeah. But in LMS, there's hordes of enemies going around, and we're like, it sucks. <laughs> like, it's a horrible that's skill. Just, yeah. And we're like, and we don't have another skill designed for him. That's his skill. And so we're going, I guess we're going to try to like add new stuff to it. And we ended up changing it to now. Um, it does, it, it's an AOE taunt, but it also heals your protection based on how many units you taunt. So okay. you kind of like want to gather units together and then count as many as you can as a heal, because he's the tankier of the characters in LMS. So I mean, it's similar, but it's still unique, and we have to balance all that and find ways to make that work, and that's like the tip of the skill iceberg when it comes to the ability trees. So I think what I'm hoping is going to happen, and what happens with us is like when you go to play together, and there's a guy in the corner here who's played a lot of LMS with us, <laughs> he's nodding, like you actually go, okay, what build are you going to take? Yeah. Like, are you going to do a utility build? Are you going to do a mixed build? Because those skills... I really want to complement your you position, do. Uh, your role. And if you all do like builds that don't complement each other and you're in a harder path, it may not go so well. So that, like, that, that extra layer of 
planning before you go in is really entertaining. Yeah, and it's nice to be able to experiment with all these options Absolutely. in the game. Well, you can have this run and this run and this LMS be totally different yep. with um, unexpected outcomes, yep. to say the least. Especially, especially when things go wrong like there's a famous and again joe's over here in the corner um joe and and and, and me and someone else from one of our um our, our trailer crews were playing we were recording for a trailer yeah so we weren't actually trying to play we were just trying to make it look good but we got to this situation where like because of how things were going um nadine died really early in this boss fight and like both of us had no health and a fight <laughs> that usually takes like three minutes took like eight because i'm literally running around as the boss is chasing after me trying to bring them back to life while damaging the ads that are all chasing me around and some and i'm like at one point joe's like can we just like give up and like do more trailer coin i'm like no we're gonna figure out how to beat this and we we did pull it off it was yeah. so much fun so I, those kind of like chaotic circumstances can happen and it's a blast speaking of chaotic let's take a look at some b-roll of the pvp yeah absolutely let's go let's see whether it's chaotic or not because i imagine that it is chaotic PvP is 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 a, <laughs> I, I, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it's um, more like more like traditional RTS. I mean, you have to capture control points. You have okay. to gather resources. You have to be aware of your resource production. Uh, you can upgrade units. Uh, 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 right now, uh, as you can see, you can uh, uh, control like five units at a time, but you can improve it uh, as the game goes. So there are different kinds of options. Uh, there is no base building here, but you yep. actually have a base. So that's really okay. important. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you actually can upgrade your base. Like you have like, uh, uh, you can uh, have army upgrade options. So you can increase your uh, productivity, resource productivity. Uh, you can increase your uh, tra uh, how your units gaining XP yep. uh, through the fights. Yeah, they gave veterancy, so they get like, the, the longer they're alive, the more powerful they are. Okay. And I, what I, what I really like is the there is a training camp and you can, where you can actually upgrade unit, unit different types of units. Because why not add another skill tree? Yeah. Like, why <laughs> that, not? That, we might as another, well. At this yeah. point, we're at two. We might as well do three. <laughs> so it was like it's not like a 10 percent damage upgrade. No. Sometimes yeah. these, these upgrades add uh, 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 functionality to the unit. For not example, so, a lot of them do. There is a, a, a like a swordsman. Uh, uh, that is a really beefy boy. I mean, <laughs> he, 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 it can take the damage. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, after the upgrade, he can actually uh, start healing back protection, and no one can do it by themselves. So, okay. add new functionality. Uh, force upgrade is like like almost became uh, immune to archers. So. It, it, it becomes a really good counter against them. Yeah, you guys are really, really big fans of skill trees. Yeah, I guess so. I oh mean, well, man. I think... <laughs> Don't I think, tell me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think what we were trying to do is we wanted to make sure that when a player makes a choice, the choice is impactful. Yeah. Like, we, we didn't want... Like, like, and I'm not... Again, I'm not speaking ill of anybody else out there, but I find that sometimes it's, it's the easy way out. Just be like, here's 5% of this. Yeah, and, and that's that's kind of lame. It's not fun. Yeah. Like we wanted to create a, uh, create a feedback loop where when you made a decision, you saw the result for how that unit was used. And I mean, in the beginning, when you're first learning pre multiplayer, you may not know what those results are because like, oh, my unit's repairing protection. I don't really, I mean, I need to figure that out. But once you start learning the mechanics, these things make big differences. Mm -hmm. And there becomes almost this weird metagame that takes place because um, especially with you know, people like Jimbo and I who play each other a lot, I know his tendencies and he kind of knows mine. And so sometimes you're trying to feint which units yeah, you're upgrading. It's like, oh, I built like tanks first, so I probably have upgraded these, but I actually upgraded another unit I haven't built. And once I lose that first fight, I come back with a super hard counter and wipe the world with him. So like these kind of like layers upon layers make multiplayer really interesting. Yeah, I remember a time when you were like kind of baiting me with, with, the, with those setup. <laughs> I mean, you were, I, I thought you were heavily invested in Swordsman. Okay, the, the right thing to do is bring anti-tank units. Oh yeah, but you did the exact yeah. same. He, he <laughs> I had to stop playing tank because I, he would like come out with these crossbow waves and just like decimate everything. I lose <laughs> control of the map and it's like, oh my gosh. So that's part of the fun for sure. And actually, Brett then uh, noticed the big weakness uh, of my build because then he, he brought a unit, a spearman, that, can, uh, that is really good at closing gaps. Okay. So when, uh, when, when, when you close gaps with a range unit, well, then it's done. Yeah. So basically, uh, 
Brad uh, wiped the floor, floor with me yeah. at that point. So, and that's yeah. a rock, paper, scissors thing you spoke it about. It is. But it's also, it's, it's rock, paper, scissors, but it's also a lot of like, um, the, the, in multiplayer is a lot of scouting, a lot of dancing around mm -hmm. to see what's going on. Because lethality is part of the game. You do lose units, but there's, it's very forgiving. So you can lose a fight and come back easily. Like there's, it's not like the fight's over and you're done. Because there's a lot of elasticity in the resource systems and whatnot. Yeah. So losing a fight is definitely just another opportunity for you to kind of remix the deck. What kind of layout are you going to come the next time to kind of make that work? And that's, that's a lot of the excitement. But how do you win in this multiplayer? So you just get score by holding these control points? So or there's there two types. There, there's, there's mines, lumber mills, and victory points. Okay. So mines and lumber mills, you hold them to get more resources. Mm -hmm. um, and then victory points will basically um, cause the other team's score to diminish. So whoever score gets to zero, they lose. So right now in this match, this is actually a really interesting game because we almost came back and won this one. We were got, we got this, you can see on the right is the blue. I'm actually on the blue team in this match. Um, and so we're about to lose and they have two red ones so they're chunking down our side more and that's why yeah. that one's kind of glowing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like a tug of war uh, between the two sides. When you say you were part of the blue team, how many people can play multiplayer at the same time? Uh, 1v1 or 2v2. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I can imagine 2v2 requires lots of communication. It does, though sometimes you get like, <laughs> again, I think Joe is on my team on this one, <laughs> and like we're, we're halfway through, I'm, like, I'm not even talking because I'm so focused. Like, there's a lot going on that you're trying to deal with, so um, that's exciting. Do you already have plans to like push the competitive scene of the game? I would love to. I mean, that's it's. You never know what competitive games are going to pick up. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's. As someone who really liked playing competitive RTS, I think there's a there's a lot of effort gone into balance it and making it really uh, a fun experience. There is meta progression around like cosmetics and whatnot. So if we can create an environment that people really get excited about, I'd love to see that flourish for sure. That'd be awesome to see because the game looks really promising. And Thank like you. you said, this this Dawn of War, um, Im well, this inspiration from Dawn of War because yeah. I love that game and I love the medieval setting. I think it's right up my alley. No, and I mean. I'm, it's it, it's funny though because like the 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 challenges that we got we faced we had to look at like things that these other RTSs do and do them differently. Yeah. Um, one really quick like example of that. So a lot of these games like Company of Heroes and all of them have retreat systems. You hit a button, your units run away, mm. and that works really well, especially in range games because you have a chance to kill that unit while it's running away. We don't have that. So we have we had we have a retreat system in the game, and like a year or so ago, we kept on having issues because someone would hit retreat, and they would immediately start running, um, and then you just be like this, and you can't catch them because you have to be next to them to hit them. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah, and players get frustrated because yeah, well, they I couldn't kill, kill units. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the first thing we tried is like, all right, well, what we'll do is we'll make retreating units take more damage, and we'll actually move them slower, and then they'll ramp up. So they kind of go slow at first, and they eventually hit 200 speed, and they fly. Um, and that worked okay for a while, but it still was frustrating. And we're like, how do we fix this? Like, we can just make them die faster when they go retreat, but then that defeats the purpose. Because yeah. hitting retreat just means you suicide, and that's what we wanted. And so what we eventually did is, uh, and I can't remember whose idea this was, but <laughs> what we eventually did was basically have a timer. So when you hit retreat, you, your units are retreating, but it takes three seconds before they actually start moving. Okay. And it's very visual to everybody, including all the people that are playing. So it's like when the retreat button is hit, you have a short period of time to try to really do damage to that unit and maybe kill it. Um, and so now it's like you can still retreat and you still run like crazy when you retreat. You can still escape, but you have to time that differently because it's a melee game. Yeah. Those dynamics are like a little bit more unique. And you give the, your, your opponent the cue so he can like jump right in, deal more damage. And so it's more like a tactical thing again Absolutely. and more skill based than just hitting retreat and retreating and it, it's also cooperative because sometimes when someone retreats it's like Joe kill that guy he's <laughs> running I can't get to him. like that those, those yeah. that happens a lot because <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you're trying to like hit the resource and before they go and replenish them and these recording sessions were so intense I know. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> challenging player. because the gameplay was so intense we forget yeah. that actually we supposed to be recording yeah. now come on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, One yeah. of the most important questions and th the thing that people want to know out there is when can they get the hands on the game? Of course, they can play the playable demo here at the booth. They can, yeah, Which yeah. we showed some days earlier, so you can play the, like, the tutorial and a less complex mission. Yeah, it's an easy, it's an easy, it's a, the demo on the, on the floor is easy. 
but uh, when can they it. try the multiplayer mode, the real campaign? <sighs> yeah, so uh, it's, it's, it's a question we always get asked, and I, I understand. I, I need to do too. that, I'm sorry. I, no, 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 it's good. It's good. Um, THC Nordic really, I think, we, we really want to give our times to be the best version of themselves they can. It's yeah. important to us. And um, I, I, my preference is we announce the game's date when we know it's going to be good enough at that point. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're getting really close, uh, but we're not ready to say the date yet. And a lot of that is just um, game development is art. It's not science. I mean, there's science to it, but it's art. There's there's an iteration that takes place to find fun in a product in order to find the balancing elements that work together, to identify things like how we make retreat work. Yeah. Like, retreat was implemented. The feature checkbox done, but it wasn't fun yet. It wasn't yeah. quite right. So it didn't feel com complete. Yeah. Um, so um, I think all of us on the team feel like we're getting very close to that point, but we're not close enough to give the date yet. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, soon. I do think soon, <laughs> um, but not quite yet. So, Chad, you need to be a little bit more patient. But if you want to stay updated on the Valiant, you can just follow their social media. Yeah, absolutely. We have a great Discord community. Uh, we have a good social media community, so we'd love for you to be part of that community. Yeah, so just look for that on the internet, and I think it won't be a problem to stay updated and to know the release date once it's announced. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you so much thank for having so us. Much. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, same. Yeah, it was an honor, thank you. <laughs> it was an honor for me as well. Yes. Yeah. And I hope you got a great impression of this game. I'm very much looking forward to it, but I'm also very much looking forward to my five-minute break <laughs> because I am very thirsty and my drink ran out. So we'll be right back here with the next slot and until then, see ya. See you guys. Told you. Look at all those snails the monster hey, kidnapped. Look, it's Gary. So how do we save Gary without that monster snail seeing us? Gary is the monster snail. Huh? They grow up so fast, don't they? These massive amounts of candy bars must have given him a sugar rush. We can't take him back home like this. We have to cut off his candy supply first. Already on it, buddy. <laughs>
in need. Karate Bob to the rescue! Jelly extras were very convincingly beating me up. Breaking news here in Sledgehammer County, after a sharp increase of car racing activity in recent days, authorities now report a staggering amount of items and racetracks popping up out of nowhere. Jan, what do you make of it? Well, Bill, it's like this thing. Random bits and pieces of racetracks, along with all different kinds of items, have been emerging all over the county. And, wait, I'm just getting word that these pieces now seem to be rising into the air forming an ever-expanding aerial racetrack and eclipsing the sky above Sledgehammer. Bill, I've never seen anything like this. You have to wonder, who is behind this and where does it end?
and welcome back. Hello, hello. Brad and Jimbo are gone, and instead of them, Mina is back. Hi. Welcome back to you as well. Awesome, you'll be here. And we are going to take a closer look at a racing game. From SpongeBob to the Valiant, now to Recreation, guys. Recreation, how familiar are you with racing games? Um, nice. That's yes. great. <laughs> 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 because this one is an arcade racer, which is just about the fun, just about the crashes. In fact, you should be more than able to play this because if you're not good at those racing games, you like to crash into other cars a lot. Yes. And that's the whole deal of this game. Nice. So go so ahead. I can crash things. You can crash things. That's nice. That's, that's my type of game. Press A. Let's just try to oh, do a race. Nice, nice. Woo. And Woo. see what you can do. It's vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> it's suspenseful, isn't it? Yes. If you've got questions for Mina, by the way, exclamation mark, oh, uh. Mina, to go to her social media Woo! and Twitch channel. Confetti. Um, faster. Yeah, you've got, you've got your boost. Like, you know it from Wreckfest, the Meow. game what came before. Boost. Woo but you're not doing too great at the moment. Oh, oh wow. Wow, 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 Bounce. Bounce. Wow, wow. Um, my door is kind of broken. Yeah, I think you should, you should close that. Um, Thank you. Oh, no. Close the door, please. Bitch. Maybe you can... <laughs> okay. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but it oh, works. Ow, um, the door's closed. It, it worked. Yeah, yeah. You just have to use the right words. Swearing works wonders sometimes. Yes. Is there a Let's playable go. demo at Gamescom to try that game out? In fact, there is. Two seconds behind. I think. I can't be two seconds behind. Oh, it was at my door. <laughs> the door just said, no. No. Fuck you. <laughs> Get away. Eat my dust. Eat my... Eh. No, I don't want to eat yours. You overtook ah. the first ah. one. Take down. You took Let's him go. down. Nice. Yes. But don't try to crash now because it's it looks quite good for you, this race. Ah. Ah. Or not. No. Just kill him. In German, we call it a Frechdachs. <laughs> In German, we call it a Frechdachs. <laughs> Woo! There's a... There's a... There's a... There's a oh, wow. <laughs> what the fuck? Don't mess with me. What the fuck yeah. was that? He Just was, he was opening trying, the door. He was trying to bump me, and I'm too buff. I'm too buff for that. You're just yeah. too strong. Too strong, too buff, too good to everything. Small hint, there's no boost in... Oh, you're right, Butterbit. Bounce. Bounce. Six. Bounce. Is there any competitor left? Oh, yeah. Right in front of you. Nice. Uh, first place. You Let's went go. first place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is what your first race, right? Uh, does does Mario, Ma Mario Kart count? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. And your time was even better than mine because I played it like... I think not yesterday, but the day before, and I got like two minutes and twenty-three. Uh huh. So well, that's, that's, that's slow. slow. Just say it, say it like it is. Yeah. That's slow. <laughs> but it could be beginner's luck. So maybe you try another one. I got gold. Mm, mm. It's not beginner's luck. It's of skill. course it is. This is called skill. This Anyone can tell that, right? Nope. It's skill. <laughs> Chat on a scale of one to ten. How skilled do you think Mina is? On a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, remix. J just do another race for now. Welcome to your race. Is it only, is it always the same? Um, the race is the same, yeah. But let's show another one. And then a remix, you can like build your own world. We can show that as well. Mm -hmm. And explore, you can just have fun, explore the open world, use ramps to do stunts and stuff. Okay, so if I go, if I press A, there is going to be another route, or is it the same? I don't know, to be honest. Okay, let's, let's go. try. Let's go. She is definitely serious. I'd say eight, eight. Looks fun. <laughs> Did he? Two out of ten? Bro, I just killed that shit, okay? Nah, two out of ten is quite accurate. Or three, maybe. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Hayden Ross says 8.15863. Okay, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys. That's fats. 
Let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's move. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, some took seconds. Something is crashing there. Mm -hmm. It does look really fun, man. PlayStation Woo! Gamer 51, Woo! it is fun. It definitely is. <laughs> Get away. Get away. Whoa, that's... That was close. <laughs> that was, wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. You just rammed the police. Um, I didn't. You've got, like, no... Um, um, why isn't it... <laughs> What's um, his deal, though? Uh, um, oh, okay. Oh, I've got a new car. Nice. Um, <laughs> that's how you get a new car, by the way. Yeah, just, um, just crash into yeah. one and get a new one. Also in the real life, doesn't <laughs> Don't do that in real life, please. Show the mixed world to customize your car. Yeah, we can do that after that. After I just this. need to, uh, to show you that I'm not a 2 out of 10. She just did an aftertouch takedown. Takedown! I rate her 5 out of 10 now. Okay. Mm. Awesome. Move, bitch, get out the way, get out the way. Move! <laughs> they see Check you point. rolling. <laughs> they hate it. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Um, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Where Just get out of my way. Where did he go? <laughs> Just get <laughs> Wow. Those guys learn how to fly. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the crashes in this game are this satisfying. <laughs> they are, aren't they? Aren't they, yeah. Woo. Woo Ooh, slow down, slow down. <sighs> yeah, no! No! How rude! Uh, took the lead! Took oh! The, oh uh, and the lead! That was a chunky boy. Um, that was a chunky boy too. No! 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 Fifth! <laughs> um, what was it about the beginner's luck? Um, we, uh, but look at that! <laughs> it's quite a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see that. Uh, you, you guys didn't see that. No, no. That's okay, and now let's check out how we can. <laughs> 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 how we can customize our car because someone wanted to see that. It, this is not realistic. People drive much faster than this in Germany. That's true. That, that's true. <laughs> let's go okay. into the remix mode. Pick a, pick a remix. Awesome. Awesome sound effect. Thank you. Yeah. I studied that for just today. Yeah? Yeah. How I long did. did you study that for? Um, Three years? Yeah, kind of. Awesome. Since yeah. the last games come. Yes. You were preparing yourself for this moment. Yes, because I knew you're going to be here and this game is going to be here. Nice. Yeah. I felt that in my jellies. I've, I felt it as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, let's. You can place ramps, but I don't know where you can customize your car. Maybe. So, okay. 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 So okay. this is you can you can like remix the 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 track. Remix. You can place ramps, blocks. Game, oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Why is it red? Red always means like you can't do that here. Um. Well, try to place it. Okay. Um. There's a tree. There's a tree <laughs> in the way. <laughs> Try to, try, to, try to press A. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. This is now a ramp. Yes. Uh, can I go forward? I like think so. Can't you? Um, I. Mm, eh, eh. Maybe you cannot. Um, maybe I can't. Maybe you yes. press back. Press B, please. B. And then press. Oh, now I can move. Right. And try pressing the right um, arrow. I did. Um, and then that, that happens. Was what okay. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Well, okay. Place uh, it. So I think we can't show you how to mix your car because we can only place around. Play the default car place in this a demo. Place block. I can place a block. I can place. A block. Awesome. This is a block. Yes, and I place it like in here. It was a difficulty level. It's yeah. Yes. I made me one in here. Let's go. Track Mania X Burnout. Ah, uh, race. I can. Oh. Oh, okay. oh you can put wow. a block. Wow! Call me, call me Wonder Vision. <laughs> call me Wonder Vision, guys. <laughs> it's even better than the series. <laughs> uh, how is it gonna lower? Uh, lower. Okay. <laughs> Just put put some 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 block yeah. up there, but. I, I, oh, can I put them in, in the air? I don't know. Just try it. Okay, Stop let's putting them there. Go. Um, awesome. It, it <laughs> okay, okay, 
no, no, okay, I, I've got an idea, I've got an idea. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm gonna place a block here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try that, yeah. <laughs> okay, race. Um. Really excited to get my hands on this game. A good arcade racer back on the market soon. Yeah, wow. I'm really looking forward to it as well. Racing games really? aren't my cup of tea, but arcade racers, on the other hand, are always fun to play, especially oh. with friends. Yes. I'm going to put that right here. So I have to dodge the ramp. If I don't... You're going to die. I'm going to die. Okay, let's try dun, that. Dun, dun. <laughs> Over dramatic. <laughs> okay, and now I think if you press B mm -hmm. and press the left arrow, left try to press arrow. the left arrow. No, this doesn't, doesn't work. work. What if you press B again? Um, ah, and now you can drive. Showing off. And use that ramp. What's it showing off? Oh! Ooh, look at that beauty! Mm. Look at her showing off! Da, 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 da. Oh, is it like the start of the game? I think it's now starting, and, oh. and you just um, oh. need to do your race. Okay, 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 okay. I, I'm, I'm going to do my race. You should, you should use the ramp because that helps you. Okay, a I'm going to use the ramp. Woo! Um. Well, fuck. <laughs> uh, well... You're quite off track. Maybe a bit. Strategically placed ramp. All the cars just go, <laughs> well, that's a ramp. <laughs> Woo! That I think funny. I'm going to use it. <laughs> I think nice. playing this together with friends is awesome. It would be so awesome. much fun, yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. When you, you, you can create your own, your own uh, route and just mock with each other. It's also a very, a very um. good-looking arcade racer, to be honest. Why isn't the boost working? Oh, because I didn't press enough. Okay. Yeah, know. the boost only works if you press the button. Just so you know. Push the button. Woo! Wow, the music is awesome! I just hear the music! Yeah, yeah. Diddle, 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 diddle. It really wants, wants you to crash into things. Oh, yeah, you can go insane in this game. I, uh, I believe that. I believe that. When this game release, I don't know. I think it's not um, not announced yet, Kim Toribio. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Will this game have an extension? What do you mean by extension? Ah. Oh my god. Here's Dixie oh, Toilets. No. no, so much shit. So much shit on the phone. So much shit. <laughs> on the road now. Damn it's, it. It's Fortnite booth at Gamescom 2019 all over again. <laughs> Oh, no. no, you didn't. Could you p please focus on the game and drive? I uh, will never drive. What the fuck? Um, did I just go take that? No. No, you took uh, him down. Yes. And sent him flying to the moon. But seeing this, I will never drive with you again. <laughs> what? What do you mean again? <laughs> I will never <laughs> drive with you, ever. <laughs> Bish. Get. The frick oh, wait. What many people don't know, an Take open, down. An open get door smashed on the makes you go faster. Mm. You went first! Yeah, an, an, open, an open door makes you go faster in this game. Um, of course. If you got like two open doors, like you, you, you cannot be beaten. You cannot. Yes. Just don't try this at home, though. <laughs> Please not, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Create own car. We can't. Not in this demo. Yes. This, by the Sadly. way, is the gameplay demo you can play here at the booth right now, in this very moment, if you want. Just come to Gamescom. It's as easy as that. Yeah, people want to see explore mode now. Explore mode. And let's after go. that, we'll do another normal race. Uh, but, but let's go to the explore okay, mode. Okay, let's go. Everything Jets wants me to do. Not everything, but <laughs> m mostly. About the racing game. About guys. the racing <laughs> <laughs> Create map. Yeah, we just kind of did that, but I think we can't do the oh, best map. I just, I just can yeah, yeah. drive. Nice. You let's can just go ahead and okay. explore let's the have world. A, let's, have a, let's have a nice drive. See the coast. Yeah. Oh, yes, explore. It does make sense. You can just... Why? Is it, 
is and there are ramps hidden in this explore mode. Okay, okay, so okay. So if you find a ramp, just go at it. I'm gonna find them. And I'm gonna use them. And... There's one! Uh, uh, use uh, the uh, ramp! Uh, uh, use the ramp! Uh, uh, oh, um... Oh, well, um, wow! Oh, fuck. Um, I parked. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you went to Gamescom as well? Uh, yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I kind of flew with my car. Yeah. Um, and I took down some trees. Nice. Yes. Yeah. I hope so you can adjust traffic. It looks a bit dead now, but it's a demo. I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. We'll find out once the game releases in full. Is there any other side I can, I can drive? On any sideways? I don't know. I mean, look at the minimap down there. You can drive oh, to the left. Oh, yeah. Uh, go back now, yeah. One left this time. <laughs> drive to the left. Drive to the right. Woo! Oh, wow! Uh, I think... Um, I kind of lost... You lost your wheels. <laughs> my wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff happens. But uh, the the rotating was kind of smooth, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. How long till Gamescom is over? I think it's over on Sunday. Yes, it is. But we, as THQ Nordic, will still be live tomorrow and on Sunday and today until I think 7:30 p.m. CEST. You guys are doing amazing. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. You're doing amazing as well. But there are no more ramps. But there, there needs to be a one more ramp. Where are the ramps? Let's take, let's let's watch out for a ramp. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, I'm I'm gonna slow a little bit down. Have a look. Enjoy the trees. Enjoy, enjoy the, the scenery. Works. Yeah. Yes. So, so beautiful rocks. Have you seen such beautiful rocks anywhere? Never in my whole life. There's a, there is a ramp. ramp. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Wow. Hit, hit me. me. Hit me. Oh, oh, oh. Hit me, hit me with you. This is kind of naughty. <laughs> it is. Hit me other side. Okay. Um, why is it still driving? Um, I don't know. Uh, there's some smoke. Other side. Your car doesn't look so good, Mr. Stark. Um, break through to the other side. You only have five what? seconds left. Oh. <laughs> How tall am I? I wanted to jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You wanted to jump by pressing something? <laughs> this is not SpongeBob anymore, Mina. Yeah. Uh. This is <gasps> recreation. Yeah, let's let's please the people yeah. and do one more normal race so you can, well, clean your name for the fifth okay. place. Okay. Try, try Hold harding. My beer. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Hold my beer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Have a look. Take, uh, take a lesson, chat. Cars can jump. She did everything right. <laughs> of course. How could I know? How yeah. could I not know? Yeah. It's the age difference. You're not that smart. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a oh, problem. Um, oh. This is because I think I'm so good. Speaking of not that smart. Yeah. No. It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna let them some time. So. Oh, yes. that's part of your plan. Yes. Yes. So they don't expect you. Right. I see. Because um, I'm going to win anyway, so I want to give them some lead, you know? Yeah. We'll, we'll see how good your plan goes. Um, Gamescom is easily the best gaming event this year. True. But my question is, is that like everything of Gamescom? Because I didn't see anything of any other companies in the big hall. There are many Woo! halls filled to the Woo! brim with companies showing off their games, Checkpoint. indie developers showing off their games. Three seconds behind, okay. Content creators playing on streams. Yeah, and there's so many content creators here. It is awesome. It is, I enjoy everything at the Gamescom. Yeah. I really do. We've got one right here. <laughs> right, I'm a content creator. Excla I kind of forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Exclamation mark Mina, M-I-N-A. No! to see more of her. Mm, why is this, isn't the boost working? Because you can't boost infinitely. Uh, why not? Break to drifting, use LT, yeah. Oh, he just crashed. 
Oh yeah, drifting. Okay, I didn't do that before, right? I try that. I'm good at drifting in Mario Kart, so yeah. it shouldn't be that hard here, right? No, it should definitely not. Um, yeah, duh. Um, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> New drift record. Funny Woo! pun there. Okay, the drift is kind of like hard. Okay. Oh, I'm first. I'm, uh, obviously, nice. I'm first. I'm obviously. Not I'm not surprised. Congratulations. Thank you. On thank first you. Place. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh, I even bet my time. Nice. I think this is the best time yeah. someone ever had on this track. Yeah. I, mean, I think too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I go ask the devs later, but I think this is true. The best time of this track. No one has ever beaten this time. Yeah, don't don't be hard on, on, on the brake. Yeah, just tap it. So if you if you be hard on the brake, it uh, kind of drifts um, like very hard. You have to just be, be, be gentle. But you got the controls, <laughs> right? As, so you you you, yeah. you got the controls yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, pretty quick. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, I sometimes confuse them, but <laughs> it's not the game. It's just me. <laughs> it's just you. Okay, I see. <laughs> What's your first impression again? I need to ask that. Uh. Yeah, don't, don't, don't mind Fabian, <laughs> guys. If you could see that, Fabian is coming in right here with a with a full body harness for his camera for the booth tour that's going to start soon, and he just I think he surprised Mina a bit. Yeah. And she was in it awe. Looks, it, it looks it looks funny. Um, your first impression of not Fabian but the game, please. Uh, okay, the game. Yeah, uh, I like it. Yeah. It is fun. It is. Um, uh, there are more uh, routes. I there think? will be more tracks okay, in the final yes. release. Then, then I will really really love it because um, it kind of gets boring. It's just one route, but I think it's just because it's not. It's, it's like the the, yeah, the playable the demo here yeah, at Gamescom. Yeah, okay, okay, so okay, if you okay. wanna if you wanna beat Mina's time. Feel free to try it yourself here Beat at Gamescom. Me. Beat me. Try. Try. Try me. <laughs> I think you won't be able to. You won't um, be able to beat her. Yeah, yeah but I, I really like that you can um, uh, do your own, uh, your own route. Yeah. That's, 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 that's quite amazing. And you can, you can mess with your friends. Yeah. And <laughs> make some pretty, pretty amazing and, and, and wrecking, wrecking ramps. Yeah, this is gonna, I think this is going to be very much fun. This, gonna, this is going to be a party, a party game. Yeah, so it's the a new great Mario, Mario Kart. Maybe, a yes. great arcade racer to play with your friends online or I think also cooperative on your couch. Not cooperative, of course, but competitively on your couch. And the map editor is some, something that many people are excited for mm. because like like GTA 5 the map editor for these races kept that alive as well people are so like creative and can show that via this map editor and i think many great tracks will be born out of this so the the the, the chat said that you can uh, also customize your, your car yeah, you should be able to okay, also nice, in the nice. final release because I think you're limited in the demo area for like mm, no, 50 minutes and then obviously. they don't want people to, yes. like in character creation, mm. cr customize their car for 30 minutes and then start to race. Yeah. So that's not a feature that's right in there in this playable demo. But like I said, you can get your hands on the game once it is fully released. I don't know the release date yet and I'm sure the devs wouldn't have told us either because yeah. none of the devs like to talk about the release date. Do you know if uh, uh, there are gonna be another things you can do with the route, like on just not only the ramp and the block? I, do you know I don't know. I think you can customize the music track, you can customize the blocks, ramps, and I don't know much more about okay, it. Okay, okay. But if you want to know more about it, just follow the social media of THQ Nordic or Recreation. I'm sure there's a Discord channel, but I don't know the link, so <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Go We're find prepared. that for yourself. <laughs> I mean, you know to use, you know how to use Google, guys. Yeah, Google it. And by the way, speaking of Google and knowing how to use that, if you want to find more about about Mina, Mina Kicks, then just type exclamation mark Mina in chat and you'll get the links to her Twitch channel where she plays lots of games. I do, I do. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on this couch. Thanks for being here again. Yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, True. Again. This was your second slot. Was it easier than the first one? Uh, uh, 
both weren't really difficult, right? <laughs> you didn't have to do anything except for playing a game. I, I didn't have to do anything except for having fun. Yeah. And being here. And that worked really well. Yeah. What well, also quite, works quite good. really well is our booth tour around Ooh. the booth here where we are also in THQ Nordic. The, the, the whole thing here or just in here? No, the whole THQ Nordic booth. Nice. Which is amazing. It is humongous. Fake. It is. <laughs> Humongous is a really cool adjective. It is. I've never heard it before. It's one, it's one of the coolest words in English. Am I right, guys? Please. Um, um, please. Please tell me that it's one of the coolest words. Humongous. It's really fun to say out loud. Humongous. See? It is. Okay, it, is. it is really fun to say out loud. Um, I don't know whether Dirk is ready or not, but... We can go into a short break yes. until he is ready. So just wait for two or three minutes and then Dirk will show you again what it's like out here at In the Cologne, THQ Nordic booth. At the Gamescom, THQ Nordic. Humongous. Humongous. Bye. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to the official THQ Nordic live stream here from our Gamescom booth, the fantastic looking Gamescom booth that we've already shown you in a few booth tours and this is another part of our most beloved Q quiz that we're going to play with those people standing in line here for um, Alone in the Dark because you, as you can see here there is a really long line if you want to play that game. I don't actually know, we can ask um, maybe the staff later how long they have to wait, but they do have to wait quite a bit. And we can offer something really special. I have a total of six quiz questions here. And when a team is able to answer the question I pose them correctly, they can choose either Either they move to the front of the line or they get some Alone in the Dark merchandise that we all also got here. We got mouse pads, we got t-shirts. So whatever they choose, they can win stuff. If they can't answer the question, then too bad they won't be able to win anything. And uh, the questions are mostly about the original game. So fans of the series will probably be able to um, answer this and if they've never played it and have talked to people in the queue while we were prepar preparing here then it's probably a little difficult and they can do wild guessing but it's almost impossible to win anything here so fast forward tickets for our queue quiz Good to have you here, guys, all over uh, the internet, on Twitch and YouTube. And if you did not do that yet, then please click the follow or subscribe button here on our channels because we'll have a lot of content in the next days coming. We'll stream until Sunday and every day is full of surprises for you guys out there. So make sure to check this out uh, wherever you are. And after we did the Q quiz, I will also tell you a bit about one of the next highlights uh, in the live stream today because um, as you might have seen there is like one big special stage here at the booth and uh, there's some action going on later. But let's talk about it when it's time for that. And now I'll move over to the queue and see who is willing to participate in our famous queue quiz. So let's see here. Um, who do we got here? Okay, there was some movement. Um, I can ask people. Let's 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 just start here, guys. Would you be up to participate in a short quiz about Alone in the Dark? Alone in the Dark. Yeah, come on. All right. have, have you have you played the original game? I, I have played a third one, uh, Edward Canby, and uh, one in 2008, which was in New York. But the last one I didn't play. I, I heard it was yeah. See me, uh, good, yeah. Okay, okay, so we are talking with experts here. Yeah? You can hear that already. So, you got a question to answer. I give, the, I give you guys um, one question, yeah. and if you got the correct answer to it, no, let's say you got to answer two of them correctly. Okay. If you got two of them correctly, 
I love a prize for you. It's still a surprise. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's see what you do. So we can together. you can answer together. Sure, you work. As you, you, you're here together, right? You work as a team. Why not? So um, I got the first question for you guys, and it's about the first game. When did the first game of Alone in the Dark come out? I would say 1992. Yeah, uh, you confirm that, right? And that's already the first point. Very good. 92, 92 is obviously correct. Very good. So, first point for you guys. I got some more questions here, and if you answer one of them correctly, you will earn the fantastic prize. <laughs> the next question is probably easy for you. Can you name one of the original playable characters? Edward Canby. <laughs> okay, you want to complete it and do the second one too? <laughs> no, uh, what was your name? <laughs> behind me? You can't look, you can't look. Look to me. <laughs> Pray something, but I think the, the one uh, that counts. Okay. It, it's fair. One counts. Good. So, you're winners, but yeah. now it's, you got, he is, no, he, but he, yeah, like, you, in his, um, in his, in his, you shine with his light, right? <laughs> so, um, good for you. See, we have one of, two possible prizes. The first, I gotta show you the first, would be either we have one mouse pad and we also got a t-shirt and um, you guys could get this. Yeah, I would offer, I would offer, yeah, I will offer something else. I will offer something else. Okay, no, 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 I, I won't say it's bigger. I would just say it's a different price. The prize would be that you can skip the whole line and get right in front of it and play it next. Is he with your group? So with our uh, guys, yeah, that would be. But I throw it. It's okay. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah. But what do we need to answer? The third question, correct? No more questions. No more questions. You can just you can just do it. So you want to take the merchandise? You want to skip the line? Yeah, we we'll skip the line. We we'll skip the line. Yeah. We we'll skip the line. Yeah. Okay, you can skip the line. So please, then you can step out. I promise you, I will take you to the front of the line. I do want to play the quiz though uh, with um, another person. You can you can all step out. Mate, mate, you got lucky. Your friends are really smart. We got to take care for the camera here. Your friends are really smart, and they won you a fast-forward ticket to the front of the line. Okay, great. Yeah. Win for me. <laughs> yeah, it's that's a big prize. It's good. Yeah. So you 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 go to my colleague over there, and she'll take you to uh, the back entrance of the booth. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the play. Okay, enjoy. Great. Thank you very much. You can go with them. Cool. Okay. So as I said, she'll take you. So this were these were the first two contestants, and they did quite well, I would say. Um, I will now make it a little bit more difficult. So there are more difficult questions here, and also I want to have them play a bit. I want to have them play a bit. Let's see here. Who's willing candidates? Okay, I think it's, it would be great to have someone like from in the middle. What did you say, guys? What would you say? Someone in the middle or even further in the back? No, let's let's move further to the back because then it's really tough. It's really tough. Guys, can I talk to you for a minute? I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> would you be up? Would you be up? Yes, <laughs> you can't go anywhere. Would you be up for a little quiz? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what's what's the crew? Is it the two of you or who is uh, who are you with? Two of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you can play together if you want. You want to play with uh, Arthur in the quiz? Yes. I got some prizes for you to win. You excited? What's the prize, though? I won't tell you yet. <laughs> I guess we're excited, yeah. yeah. It's a good thing. Let's, let's wait for it. So, I will now have two questions for you. And then you can win an Alone in the Dark t-shirt and a mouse pad. And I will give that to you for free if you answer two of my questions correctly. Okay, yeah, sure, go for it. Okay, let's see here. We'll start easily. Have you, play, have you played the original game? No. Hey, did you? I knew this years back from GameCube, but I haven't played it, though. Uh -huh. So, we, as I said, we, we'll start easy. 
how many playable characters did you have back then in the original game? It's an easy one. I'm taking guess it's like three or four. Okay, what's your take? Two. Two is correct. She saved your ass, man. She so saved your ass. Two is correct. Very good, very good. Thank you, thank you. It was a very wild guess. <laughs> okay, still, so um, we do have to answer the second question, though. I don't know if you're up for that, but um, let's see here. <laughs> I got to check which, which question you can answer. Um, have you heard about the, the, the teaser here? About the teaser? Have you heard about what what's going on in it? Um, I did watch the trailer, but I totally forgot it. <laughs> okay, so I need you right now. You can't, from that point on, you can't look behind you, okay? I'm sorry. What is the name of the girl in our playable teaser? You know it? Grace. Grace is correct. Do you know the last name? Don't worry, it's okay. That's very good. You, you, you got two of the questions correctly. That's really, really good. Um, and now you would have earned this stuff. But I can also offer some, something else. I could, if you answer a third question correctly. Yeah. Okay. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta say if you want to play it. You don't have to. Wait for it. You wait for it. So. You can win a fast forward skip to the end of the line. I mean, how long would we have to wait? I think it's at least an hour. Maybe even two. You gotta decide, I'm depending on you already. I, mean, I don't know the game. I don't know the game. He doesn't really know shit either. <laughs> so it's a very big risk. What do we do? I would go for the prices. And then take the price. You'll take the price? Okay, very good. You'll take the price. Here, you got a t-shirt and a mouse plate. Maybe you can show it. Can you show it to the camera what you won here? Congratulations. Very good. It's a mouse pad and an alone in the dark t-shirt. You got to, I mean, you got to uh, check out who gets what. Yeah? Is that okay? Thank you very much for playing. It's already. I'm a fair guy. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you and um, have fun waiting. Thank you very much. See you later. Okay. That were good contestants, uh, good in terms of wild guessing. They did that really well. Um, okay, let's, let's talk to one more group. I think we have time for at least one more group and I got more questions. I mean, I can also, I can also use them twice, right? Um, let's see here. So we still got a few mouse pads here and I like that play style here. I want them to, I want them to, uh, uh, who, who is maybe willing to take risks here. What would you say? Have a look at this queue. Are there any risk takers? What would you say? Anyone here taking risks? I'm not so sure. We'll see, we'll see. I'll go just, so there are three people. Um, there's another three. I would like to have another mini group of two. Ah, uh, it's really hard to decide. Let's see here. Let's see. I'll move. I'll move further to the back of the line. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Nah. 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 Now nah, we gotta move back. I'm sorry. We gotta move back here. And I'll probably try my luck somewhere down here guys can i talk to you for a second would you up for would you be up for a little quiz would you be up for a little quiz about alone in the dark um, you don't know the game ah that's really bad you get to know it then okay then enjoy and <laughs> enjoy it later but you won't be able to answer our questions um anyone else have you played the original game the rhythm game the original game have you played it no no Okay, then you won't be able to answer my question. I'm sorry. Have fun anyways. Okay, okay. We need hardcore fans here. Do you spot someone maybe with an alone in the dark shirt or something? That would be perfect. Those are all newcomers. I will just check out here. Let's see. 
guys, do you want to participate in a little quiz? Have you played the original game, Alone in the Dark? Have you? You haven't? None of you? Ah, too bad. Okay, let's see here. Um, has anyone here played the original Alone in the Dark? Has anyone played it yet? You all newcomers. Okay, still. Have you played the original game? Okay, they're all new to the game. Interesting. So that's probably because the booth is so freaking looking amazing that you just simply have to be here. Okay, I'll try my luck. Ah, okay. Now the queue is moving. Maybe that's my moment to shine. I'll wait. Who will arrive here? I'll use the spare time we have to announce that today at 5 p.m. German time, of course, we will have the wrestling ring behind me, if you can see it, yeah? We will have that filled with wrestlers again. And then this whole area will change into a wrestling arena. I don't know if you have seen the live stream yesterday with the wrestling action. It was insane. Like, every, every, every inch of this uh, place here was up, occupied with people and they were going nuts for the wrestling action over there. The, the wrestlers did really amazing stuff. I, I didn't watch a lot of wrestling yet in my life, but that was really cool to see. And it's right here at the THQ Nordic booth at Gamescom. So I think that's pretty fantastic. Um, so make sure to stay tuned until at least 5 p.m. But still, we got a lot more coming up than afterwards. And uh, okay, here are actually some new people and maybe I can try my luck here, let's see. Guys, can I talk to you for a second? Have you played the original game? No. No, any one of you. Have you played the original game? Uh, what do you mean with the original game? I played the PS3 game, Alone in the Dark Inferno. Ah, that might be a little complicated then for you. Anyone else played the original Alone in the Dark? Have you played the original Alone in the Dark? No. You're, you're basically first timers here. Okay, enjoy anyways. I need someone with game knowledge here. Okay, one more. Guys, can I talk to you for a second? Ah, okay, that's also fine. No, they won't talk to me. Another group coming up. Maybe those are all right in the back of the line. I'll try one last time and if we won't find any more participants then we'll have some more merch to give away maybe tomorrow let's see here who is there anyone coming up okay this is the the back of the line guys can i talk to you for a minute we're live on the thq nordic live stream can we, yeah can we talk to you have you played Alone in the Dark? Uh, not yet, no. Not, none of it? None of it, no. Okay. Have you? Any one of you? Okay, then the Q quiz will probably be a little bit too difficult for you because we got something to win here. But unfortunately, without game knowledge... We're good at guessing. We'll, yeah. we'll give it a try. Why not? Like, what do we have to lose? <laughs> you have nothing to lose. Maybe you'll have something to lose later. We'll see about that. Okay, cool. Then we'll do some really basic and simple questions okay let's see here get pre yeah okay get in quiz pose that's good really good that is that your quiz pose <laughs> yes it is it does look kind of deep i like it so we'll have some easy questions for you i'll maybe i'll say you gotta answer i have six questions in total if you have two of them correctly, you will forward to the next stage of the game, of the, of the, of the um, quiz. Yeah. Okay, so first question. We'll make it really easy. When did the first Alone in the Dark game come out? Wait, there, there is no multiple choice? No. Ah, <laughs> uh, see, I thought there were multiple choice options. Uh, 1909... Wait, do you actually know? Because she seems to do you know? Um, 1999. You can still discuss if you want. I wanted okay. to say December yeah, 2000. Something like that. 1999 or 2000. What? Unfortunately, it's not correct. It would have been 1992 even. It's much older. So let's, let's say this one is also, it's also one that you can probably guess. That was like the, <laughs> no, the second easiest. Now it's the easiest questions. How many playable characters did 
uh, we have back then and also today. Can you give us the like, time? Like, <laughs> it's, 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 I would say it's rather a low number. A rather low number? Ein oder zwei? Ein oder zwei? Yeah. Zwei? Two. Two is correct. Very good. That's your first point here. Nice. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, that's ah, it's a really, it's really difficult. Can you name one of the original playable characters? Name one of the original playable characters. Nope. <laughs> um, Alice. Alice. Alice, yeah. <laughs> Alice is not correct. You can have a second guess if you want. Typical woman name. <laughs> one more. Come, let's go for one more. You can discuss. Which one is it? Annie. Annie is not correct. I'm so sorry. It would have been Ed, uh, Edward and Emily. And um, yeah, it's close. It's really close. Um, okay. It's another one for guessing. It's another one for guessing here. Um, where is the house, the mansion, I will tell you the name. I would have had another question for the name of the house, but you won't know it, so I will tell you how it's named. It's uh, the Sado Mansion. Where is that house? What's the name of the mansion? Der Sado Mansion. Where is it located? In New Orleans. In New Orleans. You say the US? USA? US is correct, but it's not <laughs> close. It's not like, that's not... Good enough. As you said, New Orleans. Yeah. It's close to New Orleans, so I would let that count. Really good. <laughs> Applause. Second question, correct. Okay, guys. You, I can tell you, you have now... I need three of them. Yep. Let's see here. I got three Alone in the Dark mouse pads. When you play the game, as you... I mean, you, it's one of your favorite games. You play it a lot, and now you can play it on those mouse pads. Or... You can choose to answer one more question. You can, you can choose it before you hear the question, but you got to choose before. If you answer that correctly, you will skip the whole line and move directly to the front. We take the mouse We take the mouse Discuss it, discuss it, guys. Would you take him any? I mean, if you could decide if you take the mouse pads or move to the front of the line, just, I mean, without answering questions, which one would you take? We would take the mouse pads. I mean, what are, we the, take the, mouse what are pads. the chances? What you saw us guess. What are the chances that we'll get one more question question right? Oh, man. What what if the next question would be when is the new game release? <laughs> but if we answer wrong, we don't get the mouse pads. That's correct. I'm sorry, guys. So you gotta you kind you kind of gotta bet the mouse pads here. I want the mouse pads. Mouse pads, oh, yeah. Okay. Mouse pads. Okay. <laughs> Three mouse pads for you guys. Want to hear the last question? Yes, definitely. <laughs> the last question would have been, what is the name of the girl in our playable teaser? I don't know. I don't know. Gre Greta? Is it? That's very close. It's Grace. Oh, Grace okay. Saunders. But okay, you, that was really good. Enjoy the mouse pads. Uh, enjoy waiting, of course. And thank you for playing with me. Thank yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was really fun. What a good group. Really intense contesters. As they said, they were good at guessing and they did that pretty amazing. Unfortunately, they had no knowledge at all. So their basis for their guesses was pretty bad. Anyways, thank you very much for uh, staying with me here during this Q quiz. I do now head over into a slight little break and then Daniel will take over again with a lot more content and a lot more games that we have here at our THQ Nordic booth. And don't forget, in like roughly half an hour, we have the wrestling show live on the stream. So definitely check that out. Thank you very much and bye bye. And welcome back to the THQ Nordic live stream here live at Gamescom 2022. And I'm joined by three people, three wonderful people from Black Forest Games. We've got Bernard, 
We've got Vincent and Elena. Nice Hi. to meet you here. Hey guys, nice to meet you. Thanks and for having you. me. And we want to take a look at Destroy All Humans 2 reprobed and maybe some footage that even you have not seen before. Is that right? Yes. Awesome. I can't wait. So what are we doing here right now? Currently, the player is at uh, underneath the saucer where you have the menu where you can uh, access a lot of stuff. Like at the Poxmart, you can handle your upgrades for mm -hmm. start. Uh, you can, of course, enter the saucer, but let's focus on the upgrades. For, okay. The, in the in Destroyer Humans 2, there's a lot of weapons and a lot of upgrades with each of these weapons. Each, ev each and every single weapon is alien to the max and a lot of firepower behind it. I mean, it's it's the central element of Destroy All Humans 2, <laughs> isn't it? Destroying all humans in every possible way. Yes, and this possible is your way. arsenal. Yeah. So there was a lot of love put into it because it is the most important tool for crypto. <laughs> Maybe for anyone who doesn't know what Destroy All Humans is about, because he or she just tuned in or haven't heard of it before, what's um, except for or aside from Destroying All Humans? What is there about this game? Well, uh, as you can see, you're an alien who came to Earth to A, invade it, B, obviously destroy all humans and gather their brains for their DNA and <laughs> uh, subjugate anyone he, he doesn't destroy and apparently maybe even falls in love. Mm, spoilers. So will we find out what his love interest is in this demo? Uh, no, we want to keep that for the players to find out when they get their hands on the game on the 13th. We are releasing so soon. I'm That's excited. quite soon, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's next week. Oh my god, I'm so excited for it. And are you still very relaxed at the studio? Or is there many fires that needs to be put out? No, actually, we are we're pretty happy okay. with how it turned out. Like, uh, it's coming out for PC, Xbox Series X and PS5. We passed all our friends all of our submissions nice so we are at the moment slowly powering down because i just thought well releasing right after gamescom where at gamescom you don't have much time to work at the game is quite risky but you managed to do it yeah yes we delivered okay. on time and now we're here to promote and watch all of the players outside get their hands on the demo and the game and just see their excitement and love for the series it's it's beautiful awesome if it would be me i would not be able to wait so <laughs> it's coming so early after gamescom is a great deal in my opinion for sure and for everyone who tuned in on wednesday i hope you've made your flight here <laughs> yeah because you can in fact play the game here at the demo areas so if you like what you see and want to experience it for yourself come here or well wait some days to get your hands on it yourself. Um, just to make you even more excited for the game, please tell us what you're doing right now. What um, is our mission here? What's, what's going on with crypto in this? Right. So right now it was just uh, free roaming, showing off uh, most of his basic abilities like walking around, flying around, and it's just very satisfying control scheme, so it just feels very smooth in your hands. And once we want to dive into some real gameplay, I can just fire up the saucer here again, and we can always replay any of the missions you have already played. Okay. And I would suggest that we maybe dive straight in. Yeah, of course. Let's go. I love, I love the humor of this game. It's also, after destroying all humans, I think the humor itself is yes. a big part. A hundred percent. Like, nothing in here takes itself seriously. It's sarcasm, it's satire. Everything is silly. The weapons, the humans. Uh, please laugh a lot. We, do. we did well developing it. It must have been very much fun to do that, right? Yes, I think yeah. so, Vincent. You're right. It was so good working on it. It, the whole setting is in the 60s, and we got uh, so many spoofs and jokes are in there. And of course, the, our team also added some more jokes wherever we could. Um, with the higher fidelity, the worlds, for example, have gotten like a lot of detail in there. So our artists, and I haven't found everything yet, a, a whole bunch of Easter eggs, and like little small stories and jokes everywhere. <laughs> I, I love it. 
Uh, if, if you uh, find the Golden Gate Bridge, fly up, see what you can find there. Oh, that's a hint, guys. You've heard it here first. When you talk about Easter eggs, are those just Easter eggs from many other games or to aliens or from the original from back then? What are those All Easter eggs? All of the above, honestly. Okay. So it's nice. uh, something there for everyone, for the uh, fans of the original games, for fans who maybe know some of our, the other games that the studio made, uh, some of the genre games that are like defining uh, and that we also obviously love to play. There are a lot of hints and Easter eggs hidden everywhere. That's awesome. So exploration gets rewarded. Yes. That's nice to hear. And we just talked over the whole intro. <laughs> Was there anything important we skipped over? So basically the story is set in the 60s, as we said, and um, one of our main enemies in the game will be the Russian Secret Service. The of KGB, course. And they just blew us up. They found out about us. They blew up the mothership. And therefore we have to make sure that everything is safe. So as we guys can see here, basically where the first game left off, we're going to um, straight jump into here and uh, it makes way for a whole new plot to be defined. Okay, I'm very curious what we're about to see. If you've got any questions, chat, then just ask them and we'll address every question as best as we can. Um, Nixdorf asks, if humankind gets destroyed, how do you want to get destroyed in particular? Mm. I have a direct answer. If it's the fuel horns destroying me, I would want it to be as quickly as possible. However, every weapon is terrifying, right? You get disintegrated, you get anal probed, you get electrified. Uh, so you get eaten alive? Eaten alive. It's a meteor strike. It's a nice sight to die at, right? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. I like that one. That is very nice, yeah. <laughs> so, I think... What you're saying is there are many weapons you don't want to get hit by if you're a human and standing in his way. What weapons do we have here at our disposal? So right now I'm playing with the Zappomatic over here, which is basically crypto's bread and butter for the early game. Uh, as you can see, it makes it deals with the enemies just nicely, but also because we are already a bit further upgraded. Yeah. So and. There are about eight weapons totally in the game, but there are a lot of sci-fi abilities as well that come with it. So maybe Vincent or Elena, you want to talk a bit more about those? Yeah, definitely. Like um, uh, in the first, in the uh, previous game, also he had PK, he had um, uh, Hypnoblast, he had mm -hmm. Mind Treat, all sorts of uh, ways to, f to mess around with uh, humans. Uh, but in this game, we also have new abilities like the Mind Flash which stuns everyone around him. Mm -hmm. um, in the original, there was an ability called the Free Love, uh, which you will see in the next mission. <laughs> so it's a bit too little double, but, uh, and this, this caused uh, everyone to start dancing, which is perfect. It's a very fun it's ability. It's not, it's not a weapon, though. It's very nice and... We, we made it a device um, oh. so to add more active um, control uh, to the weapon, uh, to the device. Uh, so you now have to manage it a bit more. If, if there's too much enemies on you, you'll have a harder time to get out of that state. I but see. Why would you? You want to destroy stuff, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. And while humans are dancing, they won't see you coming. Oh, true. Every time I dance, <laughs> an alien could have been... <laughs> <laughs> Secretly probing your yeah. mind. Well, that's oh, unfortunate. Yeah. As we can see, uh, Fox is now kind of dead. And he's now a hollow box. He uploaded his conscience, and this is how he's going to help Crypto unravel how the Soviets were able to blow up their mothership. But it's far more handy for him to be just a hologram. He's more mobile, agile. That's Take what Crypto also says, yes. Yeah. But Pox does mind. He wants his body back. Well, does he, does he really, though? I can see how you're looking at the future. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, here you get to use the uh, PK quite a lot, and mm -hmm. uh, or, or uses automatic. He, he likes to use that. 
And one of the, the upgrades we made to the game that players that played the first one are also already familiar with. Uh, in the original, you could only use either PK or your weapons. In our okay. game, you can do it simultaneously. So you can raise a human up from uh, into the uh, into the sky while at the same time shooting, which is very, very fun and gives a lot But that's a lot of multitasking, and <laughs> I don't know if I would be able to do that. But when you say that's that's a new thing that is possible now, but um, but haven't been possible there, um, are there any other features you've improved upon the first iteration? Uh, I mean, obviously, as you can see, the graphics. Of course, yeah. Uh, we put a lot of love into like making everything as fun and shiny as the game deserves to be, because it is a, such a colorful uh, game in itself, and it, it deserves to look the part with fresh new graphics that match the uh, era now. Yeah. Um, Vincent? Uh, yeah, like we said, the upgrades. Uh, if he went, maybe you saw it when he was high up and uh, landed on the floor. There was a little blast that happened with it, um, I, and the super jump. So there's a lot of upgrades you can do uh, that weren't in the original, uh, just to allow you to express yourself even more. On and to customize your abilities even yeah. more. Exactly. And I see. Oh, also, I we added the skate to your uh, traversal abilities, which also wasn't in the original game. So now you can smoothly skate and ride around the, uh, all of the worlds. That's awesome. It would also be quite fun. handy for Gamescom to use. I wish I would have that, honestly. Yeah. It would be so great to get around here Good. that way. Talking about modernization, I am here using the Disc Locator weapon, which was a fan favorite from the original game in 2006. And they bounce so happily. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> and a car just <laughs> dropped onto him. Oh, well. well. Back in the day, it used to be more for the comedic value kind of thing. But right now, we wanted to bring it up to 2022 standards. And basically, we made this, this awesome bouncing weapon. Yeah. You can both have a, hold a charging shot and basically go bowling with all your enemies and cars and all the vehicles. Or you can just fire it in quick bursts, as I'm doing here right now. So you just kind of take care of the enemies while you then <laughs> switch with another weapon, finish them off like that. I think I would only play the game through with this bouncy weapon. Oh, yeah, but I amazing. don't know many other weapons yet, to be honest. So, so right. You can upgrade it fully, uh, focus on that. But if you ever get a feeling like, hey, I want to play another weapon, you can just um, uh, respect your uh, upgrade points oh, yeah. and try an auto weapon also at full max uh, power. Definitely. Okay. So I'll, be see, I'll be cycling a bit through other weapons right now and then um, after the cutscene is going to appear here and then we can have a little hint of all the destruction that is nice. The game. Awesome. Because um, to get back to Rixdorf's question, um, if you would need, if you would have to choose one of the weapons and this weapon is then used on you. What would it be for e every one of you? I would go for Meteor Strike. It's a nice sight before dying, right? It's pretty cool to see. That is yeah. true. Yeah. I would the Burrow Beast, maybe. I'll show it off in a bit. It's mm. very scary, but you kind of want to pet it at the same time. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know that feeling? Honestly, so. I want a Burrow Beast plushie. Yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Why too. isn't there anyone? I any? know, right? Yeah. So let's, let's, opportunity. let's show him off the famous uh, <laughs> Burrow Beast here. There he is. is. So there is a photo mode here, so the guy, so to, we can have a little of look course. at our cutie over there. Isn't he adorable? He, oh, yeah. I want a plushie as well now. See? See, I told you. Yeah. It's just fantastic. A man-sized burrow, burrow bee? Burrow, burrow beast. beast. Burrow beast. Yes. Yeah, I, I always understood bee, and I was just <laughs> asking myself. I mean, honestly, if that thing could also fly, oh, my God. That'd be the not most going anymore, though. That's no. true. But both, if it could do both. Think of the destruction and the mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, the meteor strike. Isn't it gorgeous? It is pretty effective, I gotta That's admit. That's too. Uh, and and gorgeous. Wow. But I suppose the photo mode you just showed off wasn't in the original as well. No, that's also okay. something new that we added. And people love photo modes. Yes, and you can take such great screenshots with this because it lets you pose and rotate and everything. Yeah. It's fantastic, especially with a game uh, in a, such a high fidelity like ours, exploring all of the extremely pretty worlds that our team worked on. I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon. <laughs> Which, oh, by the way, is also a location. Over the moon? The moon, yes. Awesome. 
Can you tell me more about locations? What locations will we as players be able to traverse in this game? All right, we start the game off here in the beautiful, beautiful base city. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to go to Albion, which is the equivalent to the slightly foggy London. Okay. Uh, we get to go to Takushima, which is gorgeous cherry blossom Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, Tunguska, which is... Uh, Radio, radioactive cold winter environment, for sure. Yes, thank you so much. And of course the moon. Of course. I huh? mean, if you're an alien, you have to go to the moon. Yeah, that's expected of you. And the source also has uh, uh, new weapons compared to the previous game. Oh, okay. Uh, we dialed the saucer up to 900. <laughs> <laughs> Just with a click of a button, you can lay waste to entire blocks of buildings with crazy effects there. Okay. Or um, harvest a lot of humans oh, in yeah. a rapid uh, mode, right? What is the Slurp Master? Well, the Slurp Master is a crazy um, feature, basically. So it, it ties in with the upgrade system. Oh, where I you see. can then basically get uh, humans uh, elevated into the saucer. And what would be, uh, what would a sci-fi game be without, you know... Human abduction? Exactly. Of course, yeah. Exactly. You need that once in a while. Of course. Oh, that oh, beautiful Oh, there beach. they go. Just imagine laying down there in the sun, and then... I hate when that happens. <laughs> I hate when that happens. It's every Tuesday. <laughs> we also have the anti-grav. Uh, oh, yeah. Which is, uh, well, it's uh, actually saying anti-gravity, uh, making everything go up and okay. actually go down. Oh, that looks so beautiful. Oh, oh <laughs> that poor car. Goes. Could also be used defensively uh, if you upgrade it. Uh-huh. They but it looks so nice when they fly up and then come down. Yeah. If you look in this area, we also added more verticality to the maps. Okay. We really get that San Francisco feeling there. Because we, we're going for the nostalgia of the, uh, of the original. Uh, and people remember it as San Francisco. But it actually didn't have a Golden Gate Bridge. So we added that to, the, to uh, this um, Bay City. Yeah. Because that's how people remember it. Of course. It sounds awesome. Such such i mean the detail in this game the details are amazing the, that you improve upon all that that was good on the original and then just not only repolish the graphics or something like that but then really dive into the game get get fanboys and girls become fanboys and girls of the game and then improve upon what's already there this was a key philosophy while designing the new destroy humans 2 remote yeah. because we all have the games we love from our childhood. So you play them, you fondly remember them, and then once upon a day you just boot it up again. And you start to play, and with a few exceptions you go like, ah, this was not that great. Yeah, as was I it really it that good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And therefore we wanted to design Destroy Humans 2 to feel as rewarding as the players remembered it to be. And I think we did a great job of that, honestly, if I, if I can pat the team on the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> no, our team did a good job. It looks like you succeeded, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we hope uh, players, uh, new and old, enjoy what we did. The game has a huge fan base, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. The original were much beloved, so I hope we, we do it justice. How many of the additions that were made by you maybe were from fans? Because there must have been lots of feedback you got from them, right? Um, we got a little bit of feedback, but mostly it's just like, oh my god, it looks exactly how I remember it, which okay. is the best feedback we can ever get. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. Oh! Free your mind. The Golden Gate Bridge. Yes, it is. <laughs> but what's up there now? Can you show us? Uh, that Easter egg? Oh, I think the players will have to find out themselves. No! <laughs> the first one that finds it, posts it on Twitter or uh, whatever media that we use, right? Okay, yeah. Yes, post on social media, let us know what you find. Yeah. And all the other nice Easter eggs we, we put there for you. There'll be videos on YouTube saying, I found every Easter egg in Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobed! And then they miss some. In, <laughs> in spite of having searched for everyone in the whole game, because I suppose you hid many and we many hit of them. Many, 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 many
because we want we want exploration to feel rewarding because yeah. it's so pretty uh, and it's so so fun to just like skate and fly yeah. and shoot our way through it and then um. obviously it, it, it needs to come with a re little reward. <laughs> Having the army chase you, try to catch you. But yeah, and it looks so so smooth as well. Uh, uh, I'm not a particularly good player and I can pull it off, so I think yeah. everyone at home uh, will have an easy time. Exactly. Uh, this is the skate I was talking about earlier, this wonderful gliding and skating. It's really satisfying. Yes. With the hold of a button, you just can traverse the whole map like uh, much faster than the cars can. And awesome. Very smooth. And you can use your abilities meanwhile, so uh, you, you come with me now. The game really wants me to become an alien because it looks like so much fun, <laughs> right? I mean, wreaking havoc, well... Yeah, destroying all humans was never so satisfying. Yeah. Also, that's also true. One of the other worlds. Uh, shall we go to one of the other maps? Uh, yeah. We can quickly take a look at it because we're running out of time right now. If we have another minute, let's just yeah. quickly show off maybe yeah. Takushima. Takushima. That would be lovely. Chat votes. Come on. Which one should we go to? Tunguska, <laughs> Takushima, Albion, or the Moon? I think Takushima is quite a good pick, yeah. right? Okay. Sure. Let's, I think so. let's 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 look at Takushima for a moment. I think we've got another minute. And you also saw Holopox, like when you go play through the game and you want to replay one of the missions, you can just replay that via the Holopox deck. Yeah. So fun fact, you awesome. can fight this monster, by the way. It's but you need to find that as well somewhere? Or you will find it. Okay. Or it will find <laughs> you. It will <laughs> find you. you? Okay. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Let me quickly jump up here and mm -hmm. show off the map. Oh. But this is only a small piece of it. Here we have the downtown uh, Tokyo, yeah. Takushima, as we call it in the game. There are castles in the background there. There are it's beautiful. temples, arches, uh, little... Many, many cherry blossoms. I love it. It's cherry. one yeah. of my favorite maps. It's so romantic as well. I know, right? Can you go there with your love interest? Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, awesome. Um, <laughs> 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 while you were destroying this beautiful castle, <laughs> shame on you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. Can't help myself. <laughs> there are limits to destroying all humans. Um, I want to thank you for showing off the game and showcasing it to the viewers. What can the viewers do if they want to keep up with the game, keep up with your social media? Where can they find you? On which platforms? Uh, I mean, the game will be out on uh, PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC on the 30th. And you can find us at uh, Black Forest Games. Okay, awesome. <laughs> and like you said, there are many players will tweet at you, will tweet those Easter eggs and stuff. So if you want to know more about that, do that, explore the game, tweet at them, and yeah, you can look at everything that players have discovered for yourselves or play the game yourself on the 30th of August. Correct. Thank you guys very Thank much. Thank you so much for Thank having you. us. It was a blast. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. And after a very short break, some others will join us, or well, they will join the wrestling ring. Then after a very short break, we'll have a look at a live wrestling match in and at Gamescom 2022. So stay tuned and see you soon. See you soon.
Gamescom, what's up? Gamescom, hello. It's the biggest man in professional wrestling, PPA, all day, pretty, Peter Avalon, and I am thrilled to be in Cologne. My first time here. Well, I've been here a couple days now, so whatever. It's exciting. I'm excited to see each and every one of you. There's even more people here today. I'm looking over there. I see some beautiful people, some not so beautiful people. I'll let you determine which one you are. Are you ready for some wrestling? Ah, oh, come on, you goofs. I asked a question. Are you ready for AEW? Rick, what do you think? Are they ready? I think they're ready! Woo! Let's get this match going then, shall we? The following match is scheduled for one fall. Oh, I don't like that. Yuck. And it is scheduled for 20-minute time limit. Introducing first, from Los Angeles, California, weighing in at 220 pounds, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. And introducing the opponent from Maxwell Street in Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 249 pounds, he is Colt Boom Boom Cabana.
And the winner of the match, Colt Boo Boo Cabana. Attack my friend Colt Cabana. Ah, Delco, you lost to him yesterday. Daniels, you lost to him today. And that's why you take it out on my friend. Well, Colt and I are Dark Order forever. And if you want to do this, how about the two of you take on the both of us right here in Cologne, Germany? Uno, not only do I want this match, but I want it right now! Now, 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 now! I'm 
So wait a minute, wait a minute. You want to do two versus two right here, right now in front of these people? And Elgo, do you want to do this match right now? No. Me neither. You're not getting this match today, folks. Sorry. You know what? I'm getting a text message right now from THQ and from Tony Khan, and he's telling me maybe not tonight, but tomorrow at 5 o'clock, it's going to be Angelico and Christopher Daniels in a tag team match against Evil Uno and Colt Boo Boo Cabana. So we'll see you tomorrow for that tag team match at 5 p.m. Thanks for coming. See you then.
Wow, yeah, that was amazing, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Really nice, really nice. Yeah. So one I saw live. Really nice show. Yeah. And so we are we are doing now some uh, yeah smoother stuff. Yeah. We are talking about things here. Yeah. Um, so we uh, who are we? We are developer. Yeah. On this game uh, Gamescom, and uh, we are presenting here our games. Yeah. Usually. And now the period of time of three years not to come here, yeah, was really, really, yeah. I think it's I, I don't can find the word exhausting or something, yeah, um, because uh, it's three days, uh, days now for you, five. Yeah, days for me, or it's, it's five to six days because yeah. we were exhibitors and had to, uh, yeah, make our booth work and uh, I went at DEFCOM and my feet are like uh, <laughs> dead now. I can't feel Smoky. them anymore. That's, yeah. that's good, <laughs> I think, or not. Uh, yeah, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, we should uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Björn. I'm a, a developer uh, from uh, Piranha Bytes. It's a small company here in Germany in an area called uh, Ruhrpott. Mm -hmm. yeah? And who are you? Um, Jenny Plankatz, I'm also uh, working at Piranha Bytes in Germany and um, doing RPGs. Um, yeah, uh, for a long time now, since uh, 2008, I think. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, Adrian, I'm from uh, Black Forest Games. We are also a game developer. We are doing Destroy All Humans. We are uh, from the other side of Germany. <laughs> yeah, that's our crypto. By yes. The way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's my friend now. <laughs> yeah. And where and are you? Me. Yeah, yeah. I'm Julia. Um, I'm from Düsseldorf. It's uh, New Cologne. <laughs> and uh, I'm an indie developer um, working in the industry for a few years now. I don't know. Uh, like now it's five or so. I don't know if you put it all together. Yeah. We work on uh, two little indie games like Exposia and uh, It's Hieronymus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just at the t-shirt here. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's about me. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, and we are from uh, Piranha Bytes. As I mentioned before, we made games like uh, Gothic, yeah, Risen, the Risen series. And uh, the last uh, thing we uh, released this year was Elex 2. Yeah. And so we are sitting here. Uh, we have nothing to do, actually. Oh, wh why are we here, Jenny? We have quite something to do, but we uh, don't have a game that can be played at the booth. Yeah. So we are um, yeah, talking with other developers or uh, talking to indies, for example. And uh, we are watching what the others um, are presenting and can uh, play games here. It's um, yeah, quite nice to be at a Gamescom and uh, try games by ourselves, I think. Usually we have to um, do several um, yeah, press... Appointments. Interviews. Yeah, and uh, this year um, yeah, we can uh, walk around and cosplay and um, do fun stuff like the people who are uh, going to the Gamescom. And, and who are no developers, for example. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. it's some sort of vacation we make here, yeah? It's yay! And meet each other, yeah? Enjoying each other's company here in this, uh, yeah, Gamescom. And what what is your job here on the Gamescom? Yeah, my job actually is because we have a release next week, was uh, actually uh, presenting the games everywhere. Um, we even had the lots of politicians here. It was... Uh, very new for me. You know, I think the last uh, decade was more okay. Video games, or they only nerds and uh, dangerous, and at least it, it seems like it's a bit more accepted. Um, but the most interesting part is actually to see the reactions of people playing your game. We have uh, the booth here, people actually um, waiting. Not for hours, like for Call of Duty, <laughs> uh, but at least for half an hour or so to, to play Destroy Humans. And that's uh, interesting to see and to see the reactions when they, when they play on the console to see their faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we were missing that yeah, for the last years because of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what is your uh, 
job here on Gamescom? Yeah, yeah. I, um, as I said, I have a booth here with yeah. the games ahead, and um, we had our little game, uh, our our demo there, and uh, it was the first time for me to be the exhibitor. So it was really, really nice and uh, interesting, and so. Yeah, uh, a totally different uh, thing because before I was business, um, yeah, always as a business visitor here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm searching the words too. Um, and yeah, so it was really exhausting, but I think I will, I don't want to miss this. It, it, it yeah. was, a, yeah, I think the best um, experience I could make now because it's, it's so different. I also like to go um, around and make cosplay and stuff, but this, this was also very intense, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how uh, are things going on? They come to you, people come to your um, station there, um, and uh, what 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 are you doing there? Do you show the the game or what what are you doing? Yeah, we show the game. We also have a little trailer. So yeah. uh, as, uh, from one of the games, we just have the trailer right now, and we uh, yes show it to people who um, who are really interested in it and talk with them, give them some uh, some stuff with uh, so they can yeah be informed when it's going on and um, yeah the other one is um, they really wanted to play the game really often and we yeah. were like wow that's really nice I think uh, so it the the graphic is really catchy and um, they were really interested in it and yeah and everything we are showing here is absolutely new yeah, yeah. or is it isn't it yeah. <laughs> how do you define it? Yeah, how yes, do you define it? Eh? Yeah. Because for, for, for us, it, it, it is not so easy, yeah, because uh, we know our, our ga uh, own games and uh, present it to the public uh, like we do, uh, like we mentioned before, yeah, with demos or with, with presentations on the, on, on the stage out there or uh, here in, in, in the stream or something like that. Yeah. And uh, do you like that presentation? Yes. Some kind of public relation and marketing? Stuff. Yes, a lot, and I uh, still miss it because yeah. um, usually, if you have a game at the Gamescom as a developer, um, you are very busy, and um, yeah, you can watch people playing your own game, um, and this is very interesting because you learn a lot. Yeah. You learn um, things that people do, and you um, didn't think about it before because um, yeah, in our games, for example. Um, very often people uh, walking through the, uh, walk through the games and um, uh, yeah pick their weapon and doesn't put it back <laughs> don't pull it back uh, and then <laughs> in our game you have to put it back uh, to uh, collect items and to talk to people and yes. something like that not to and make if, combat if yeah. you don't you can't pick any item anymore you can't do anything uh, just uh, so yeah. we think about, oh, is it right. a good idea maybe to put a tutorial into it or yeah. maybe leave it and um, yeah, stuff like this. And um, the other part is um, here is the entertainment area and you can see all the shows and the guys, but there is also a business area um, people usually do don't see. And in this area, there are very many uh, little rooms and in these rooms, um, there are um, different games that are presented to the press usually. And um, some of our developers are um, yeah, presenting the game the um, whole day from morning till evening. And this is, um, on the one hand, very exhausting. <laughs> on the other hand, it's um, very cool. And you have to be um, yeah, nice and happy and uh, yeah, fresh like in the morning, even if the last one comes into the door and want to watch your game. Yeah, yes. we always say convention mode, yes. and we are smiling all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's really. That's yeah. that's the case. Is this the same if you are standing in the business area and uh, presenting your game? Um, is this um, more difficult to be um, happy about people who are watching your game, or do you think no, I am happy about everyone who comes around? Uh, I think I'm happy about everyone because you get really good fit feedback um, and that's uh, that is a little bit different I think to the entertainment area because you can really talk to the people uh, more directly and uh, have this feedback so you can just improve your stuff a little more and that's uh, where we are at the moment I think and so it's uh, really nice to have this uh, experience um, but I, but it's um, also cool, I think, to see when you have these big entertainment areas and see all these uh, 
faces who are really hyped about something you created. I, yeah, I can't imagine what this must be feeling, uh, what <laughs> what this feels about. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the, ha the feet are aching, and but the head is still happy. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah, I, I yeah, the, the the body is not working anymore in the way, but yeah, you're happy. Yeah. To answer the first question here yes. in uh, YouTube chat, uh, are you two married? I think uh, you mean t uh, two of us, yeah. And uh, I, I think uh, they saw our trousers here. Yeah, it fits uh, somehow together. Yes, we are married. Yeah, we are. He, ma he made my trousers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I did. Yeah. What about you? D I'm do not you, do uh, you more married to uh, Julia? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what, what do you think? Is it, is it more fun to be in the public area or in the business area? What do you think? It's Difficult uh, question. It's yeah? hard to say. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Because the public area becomes very, very crowded at a time, especially. So you start uh, Wednesdays, which is where you only have a smaller group of uh, visitors in the entertainment area. And then it gets very crowded. And uh, usually every developer says that try to stay out of, when of, out of the weekend, yeah. because then it's hell. Yeah? Of course, the, the vibe is much better. You feel the energy. You, you see the people. And we are all nerds ourselves. Yeah? So. Uh, that's that's the kind of people we are meeting here in the entertainment area and that's the fun part but after several days of meetings talking not in your native language you probably realize that we are not native uh, english speakers yeah. that becomes very exhausting and then it's hot yeah it's it's loud so it's it's always nice to have this opportunity to go into the entertainment area and join and go back to business area find a place where you get a coffee for free um, or a coke for free and maybe something to food somewhere and um, and relax a little bit yeah cool and uh, the next question I uh, wanted to ask is uh, uh, I, I have to answer it m by myself but I can't uh, actually because uh, I don't know exactly when uh, was my first gamescom yeah as, as a developer know. or um as a developer, Just there were, was never a time uh, without being developer. I was uh, here on, on Gamescom or something, yeah. Interesting, yeah. me too. <laughs> I, I think uh, here, the Gamescom, the first uh, 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 took place here in, in Cologne. I was there, yeah, okay? But th but that wasn't the first, huh? because uh, this this uh, whole thing uh, took place in, in another town, in Leipzig, I think, yeah? Back then it's called Game Convention. Yeah, it had, it, 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 it had an, another name. What What was it? Was game it convention. Game, game convention, yeah. 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 And uh, there I don't know exactly when my first was. I, I, I guess it was 2002 or something like that. Yeah. When was your first convention? Game um, convention. I also, but, but I could, could go back in time. So uh, it was back then I was working for Electronic Arts. Yeah. And so it. Uh, must be more than 11 years, mm -hmm. probably around 14 years ago. Ah, okay. That means 2000, 2008, right? Okay. Probably around that time yeah. in Leipzig. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At, there was never a, another time. Uh, I, I was never at another company. I always were at Piranha Bytes, and uh, so. Ah, okay. It was a bit easier for me. Yeah. At, at, when was your first? My first um, yeah, games convention was in uh, Leipzig too. Yeah. And it was 2008, the same year oh, I yeah. began working at Piranha Bytes. Yeah. And um, no, it was the year before. Yeah. It was the year before. Yeah. And I was watching you uh, standing on a stage, and the game you tried to present had no name. <laughs> yeah. We called it RPB, yeah? The next role-playing game from Piranha Bytes. RPB, what do you have to do? Yeah, that's, that, that was really, really uh, weird. Yeah. It was quite funny. We didn't have really anything. Just just a poster with a with a fist on it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and I thought, right, one day I will uh, do this on my own. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> People liked it. They are um, yeah, screaming and they were happy and wanted to get a poster with a game with no name. And uh, that, <laughs> yeah. was, was, that was really funny. And what was your first convention? Oh. games convention? Uh, my first, you mean, uh, yeah, if you mean as a um, developer, I think yeah, as uh, developer, yeah. it was 2017, I think, because I worked for. Um, uh, for a studio uh, that now has the game, uh, the name Team Goji or Goji Interactive. Okay. And they exhibit here, um, also with games ahead. And so I was there for my first time as a developer, I think. Yeah. So, but it was uh, a smaller booth, and uh, now we have a bigger one, <laughs> and a little, yeah, opener now, so you can just walk right in. So it's a little better, <laughs> I think. <laughs> this is one of the most biggest changes that the uh, booths are getting better every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Every booth is <laughs> improving every year. I think I see a lot of different stuff that's that's happening. It's getting bigger and bigger with the booths. Yeah. <laughs> The reason why we are here, we are playing games and we are developing games and uh, that's the same thing for us, yeah, to play and to develop, it's, it's more, yeah, the same thing. And uh, yeah, you are playing many years as a gamer yeah? and so you get a pile of shame, you get a pile of uh, games and something, yeah. How many games do you have, Arya? <laughs> huh? Do you know it? I don't know it, but uh, to be honest, I have uh, um, access to all the uh, THU Nordic games. Yeah. yeah. So that's a big database, and yeah. I have uh, um, still a lot of box games uh, yeah. at home. I have my GameCube uh, still there. Um, I have also quite some new game, box games still. Uh, uh, I haven't played yet. Uh, I want to play, which... Uh, it's a bit of pity. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I can't count them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there more than hundreds of or uh, thousands of? Uh, yeah, more than thousands. About. No yeah? joking. No joking. <laughs> eh? no, more than the hundreds. Yeah, so, I think yeah. it's a it's a three three digit number. Definitely. Yeah. It's the same. Several hundred. Oh, yes. Yeah. Definitely. Several hundred. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hundreds, yeah. What about That's you? Why you have to oh. make your trousers yourself because there's no money left. <laughs> yeah, we have no time. Good yeah. idea. <laughs> play. Uh, yeah, for me, I think it's also a good one or two hundred or so. If you yeah. have all this uh, stuff in your uh, in the PlayStation, uh, like you have this PS Plus, where you get uh, games every every month and stuff like that, I guess it, I, it's always growing. <laughs> and the final shame is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Because there are always uh, games you want to play but don't have the time for. <laughs> okay, what yeah. that was that the idea of? Okay, I make it by myself. Uh, games? Oh no, I don't think so. I, I what, what was the? Uh, it was more like. Um, yeah, we had a lot of ideas uh, with um, with my colleague uh, Jörn, Jörn Friedrichs, and mm -hmm. uh, with Patrick Zimmer. So, um, and then there was this part. So, can we make this? Can we can we just uh, try it? Maybe it was so? the first initial idea of making games for you. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I understand <coughs> it wrong. Um. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, um, I think I, I love game all the, uh, games all the time and yeah. then I was like, uh, I want them to, I want to make them on my own because, um, yeah, just, just uh, to, to, I, I like the idea because I'm an artist that you can just create your own worlds and have your own ideas to, to, um, to get into a game and show the people so they can play a story you you just had in your mind and I don't know I, I like this creative idea it's uh, I tried animation uh, before in an animation studio and I was like no but it's a little more yeah it's not that complex and I like the complexity of uh, games and what you can just make with them because you're not so you don't have to fit in like that, like in indie games, you always can create really new art stuff and yeah, just try yourself out and I, I like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah uh, 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 my case is uh, there were friends uh, and decided to make games and I, uh, I decided to, okay, I go to them and make it too. 
that was uh, yeah, uh, 1999 or something like that. Yeah, and so yeah, I made it uh, for uh, six years or something like that, and then I decided, okay, I will never be a teacher again. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, that is my uh, story about that. And what is yours? I know yours, but uh, <laughs> maybe you want to tell it. When I was uh, younger, I didn't think that um, you can, yeah, make games and earn money with it. Yeah. I never thought about it. And um, I was a huge fan before. I played all the Pioneer Bites games, uh, especially Gothic 2, Knights of the Raven. Raven. I played it um, very many times and loved it. And knew some of the developers, um, like you, for example. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a, a chance. I yeah, didn't learn it. And they were searching someone who, um, yeah, who does QA, quality assurance. And I thought, hey, I can do this. I, I know the games. I can play it and uh, find bugs. And I, uh, yeah, the first game I uh, did this was Risen 1. And um, I think I did a good job <laughs> and learned how to, yeah, how to develop games. Now I'm a story writer and um, game designer and I still think nowadays if you really want to do this and um, you really want to learn this there are so many um, possibilities to to learn doing games you can yeah, you can do art like Julia for example you can write you can make music you can do 3d stuff you can uh, learn programming for example uh, at schools, at um, yeah, universities, and even at YouTube, for example. And uh, there is um, maybe uh, a place for you in the industry, I think. And what's, what was your initial idea of making games and responsible for all the stuff here? Yeah, so um, you missed the point. You can also do business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that's really... Decades ago, we yeah. were all doing live action role playing. Yeah, when it was extremely new, and yeah. we had uh, this group back then, and we had these friends. And um, somehow, one of my uh, still my best friend, he was uh, doing uh, comics for an uh, for an, uh, magazine uh, back then, uh, ASM. Um, back then one of the more famous then meanwhile they're not there anymore and he was doing uh, 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 Space Red that was a Space Red comics yeah. Oh, okay. and then uh, uh, we actually together um, so actually he um, concepted a video game or a point and click game and uh, we went to Sunflowers and pitched the game hey. so that was actually my first contact with video games and somehow all of uh, all of my friends from this uh, live action role group ended up uh, in the gaming industry. One was uh, at the Nintendo, yeah? one was uh, um, later EA, at Piranha Bytes, also Steffen Rühl, you might ah, know yeah. him, yeah? Yeah. Um, another one, uh, um, yeah. all ended up in the industry. Yeah? And for me it took, uh, one was at Spellbound yeah? Yeah. Entertainment, and um, I ended up bit later at Electronic Arts in the finance area and then uh, uh, this old friend of mine from Spellbound yeah he asked me okay who would you like to join Spellbound because we need uh, someone for the money <laughs> <laughs> so I joined Spellbound and um, yeah I tried to take care of the money but uh, <laughs> one day the money ran out yeah. what is a, was a hard job yeah. yeah and then we founded BFG and somehow now I'm uh, I'm sitting here as a game developer. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and I love it. Yeah. Cool story. Okay, you say game developer. We are not so famous developers, yeah, when you not look yet. into the world, yeah. Uh, what w would be the um, most uh, interesting guy for you to m uh, having a dinner with him when you think about big names in the game industry? Who would, oh. it, would it be? Start start with the others and give me three minutes to think about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Julia, what, oh, what is it, your name? It's it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to decide, but I think it would be Hideo Kojima. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, uh, yeah because I love of how what he's doing and uh, he's really a big brain like that and it's just impressive to mm -hmm. to see what he he's doing and that yeah. he is really in every progress of his games he's always in in uh, yeah he's always working with his people on that and what would be the reason to talk with him to learn about his skills or just to hear his stories um yeah i think uh, I, I just wanted to hear a little bit of his stories, yeah. but also learn some yeah. things because uh, if you have a team, and I think he's really good to in this to to just um, uh, coordinate everyone and ah. to 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 see okay, how can I make the best out of uh, it with uh, with the sound and yeah. to make it the most atmospheric thing. I don't uh, know many of his games, but I uh, played uh, Death Stranding yeah. and I loved it, really. Yeah, me too, me too. That <laughs> uh, was really a great game. Yes. Yeah, w what, what would be uh, my uh, favorite um, developer who want to have a dinner with him uh, is uh, Warren Spector, I think. Yeah. Okay. Because I can imagine why. <laughs> yeah, be because he he made ga he made games uh, that similar to to our games and uh, mm. inspired our our making games uh, a lot. And uh, I like games like uh, System Shock or uh, oh yes. So, so um, um, yeah, and uh, the the best game in this um, uh, genre I played uh, the last years was Prey. What came out uh, 2017, I think. Yeah. As a newer one. Yeah, it, it was similar to to the uh, System Shock uh, stuff we made there, and uh, yeah, I think uh, that would be my name. Mm. What is your name? You can. Ron Gilbert. Ron Gilbert. Yeah. I yeah. asked uh, the uh, Monkey Island guys yeah. at the booth if he is maybe here, Aww. but he is not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't expect it, but it, it um, yeah would be nice because uh, it was the um, first game I really, really loved in my life. Um, I was a child and my brother was playing it and I was allowed to um, yeah, to watch <laughs> him playing. And um, so I um, yeah, l uh, watched a lot and uh, loved all the whole um, series. Yeah, Monkey Island. And I'm uh, looking forward to see the new uh, part now. Um, and I would be happy to talk, um, yeah, to talk with him about his vision about video games and point-and-click adventures and his ideas and what is the difference maybe between quests and um, RPGs and point-and-click adventures. I would really like to talk with him about this. Yeah, there was a, a question in the in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. I cannot read it anymore, but um, I forget it if I don't say it. So I say it now. Um, and they asked um, if we are playing games or what games we are playing uh, besides our own in our free time. Um, so maybe we can do this question after. Adrian, <laughs> Adrian do you have okay. one name? Yeah, I have... Um, yeah, actually, my main game currently is... or uh, There are two uh, Apex and um, oh. Oh. also uh, Back for Blood, because I'm a big Left for Dead fan. That's for me one of the, the purest uh, games ever made, where it's really this, especially the first one, yeah. where you have this uh, it's really focus on co-op and you have this this uh, feeling, you have this tension building up, yeah, and that's great. And Back for Blood is some kind of, uh, uh, for me, it's a, you can't compare it quality-wise, but it's still that kind of game that I like and I feel it. I'm playing this with, uh, with my wife, with my friends. In Apex I'm playing with a friend, it is more really purely on the shooter side. And that's also the person I would like to meet would be Jason West from Respawn, because I liked how they built the company, how they left Activision and said, okay, fuck you, I do Respawn and uh, um, I'm signing a contract with EA, how they have a focus on one genre and they even don't, didn't care about the business model. Um, they are doing great shooter games, and they did try with Apex, and uh, also made a great, great game there, uh, in with a different business model, but still a very core game. Okay. So, 
cool guys and you never hear something about crunch on their side and a good company culture and that's why I love that. Okay. And uh, when you talk about uh, business, uh, you said uh, business is uh, becoming harder. Is, is, is it the case? Is it really ha getting harder or is... Uh It's always hard. Yeah. You have this, uh, you have these waves yeah. in uh, in the industry, and generally, you know, we are working on a project that take three years, five years development time. Yeah. yeah. And our industry is moving so fast. Yeah, it might happen that uh, the industry changed in five years completely. Yeah, everyone was uh, doing okay. I'm doing uh, um, pay-to-play games. Uh, and five years later, everyone wants a games as a service, and you're coming out with your games you started five years ago. Or we are just uh, um, releasing next week Destroy Humans 2. Um, and we started three years ago, and we decided, okay, we go for the next gen. Uh, no one knew that uh, you are not even able, uh, able to buy a next gen console. So now we are, have a game out with a much lower installed base. So all these things are moving so fast and still you have to make decisions for a release in three or in five years. Uh, that's a challenge. Yeah. yeah, and business is a question of platforms we learned yeah, mm -hmm. here in this uh, discussion. And what do you think the, um, is the one uh, uh, biggest in the future? What, what, what is the uh, platform of, of the future? What do you for think? me there are two answers. Yeah. One answer is Clearly, and that's that's all the data is showing. The platform of the future, and now is uh, mobile. Oh, yeah. Because that's this big part. Everyone is playing on mobile. Um, even more people. Then you get older, you have less time. You're going to mobile. Yeah. So that's that's very easy to say. That's the main platform. Um, and the other answer is uh, there might be. There might be um, streaming as another um, platform with a big future. Because you don't need a console, you don't need a high-end PC, you just need... You mean um, stuff like Stadia, yeah? Stadia, with, with but Stadium, better, yeah. <laughs> but working. Yeah, yeah, I will be <laughs> okay, yeah. And that, that again, would, um, would be good for us, as so streaming and flat yeah. rates. Ah, okay. Because that, as a developer, that wouldn't force you to get into this um, monetization model where you have to find a good monetization model, keep people, make them paying, keep them paying yeah, without losing um, losing your your belief and your passion because you want to ha make a great experience for gamers and you don't want to think about, okay, how can I make that they play and pay some more money. And with these flat rates, you take away this part because uh, they play anyway only what they want and they play 15 euros uh, um, a month, yeah? and you can focus on doing a great experience without being forced into this uh, free-to-play model. But this is just the beginning. We don't know yet, and that's uh, how how will this work for developers? Yeah, we had uh, we have a clear structure currently. You have a developer, you uh, have a publisher, you get a share, um, you get royalties. And that's it. They're from each unit sold now. What? How is this working now? How will this work? This is still to be found out. Ending? We are we ending up in a Netflix model, or in a in a f movie model, yeah. where where you just get paid yeah, for for uh, the work you're doing per month, yeah? Yeah. and you still have the risk to be fired because all these uh, actors, all these directors. Yeah, they have work for one uh, one project, and then they have to search for another one. Okay, that would be the death of uh, full price titles. Is that yep. true? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? You're the yeah. youngest person. Yeah, here I'm the youngest world. person, but I have to agree with Adrian yeah. a lot because I think uh, the problem is here. We also have this problem with waste all the time because uh, the platform often gets older and then you have again the problem to get a new one and with the PC it's even more a problem because all the time you have the to buy a new graphic card or something like that and all this is going away when you have the streaming uh, pl uh, yeah stream gaming or, or cloud gaming I think it's a, it's a word um, 
and um, also that you have these flat rates. Yeah, they're coming everywhere now. Also, I think uh, is not also Netflix working on one of this. I, I don't know. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I, I think you mentioned yeah, and um, so I think um, it can also open a, a whole new world to it. But you, I don't know if the full price title will die in a way they they just now uh, from the beginning is in this in this uh, in this flat rate integrated and you don't have to buy this and that and yeah I, I think people will load download this more often than the other one and so you get also the, the full price money in a way later so okay. I think it's, it could be that way I don't know <laughs> Do you agree <laughs> Years and years, the PC is dying, is dying, is still dying, and when is dead? <laughs> the PC. I think we still have time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's time left. Uh, <laughs> yeah, may, maybe we, uh, the PC will be integrated in this uh, kind of uh, platform yeah. business case, huh? something like that. Yeah, I agree too. Yeah. The good okay. thing is that. As we are sitting here, we are all small enough, even if if 90% of the market is somewhere else, there will be enough gamers for our games, uh, for, for our business to do just really pay to play on PC or console or whatever. That's the good thing for us. Yeah. True. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, when we buy games, we are also buying merch. Huh? What is your favorite merch? Or let, let me ask you another uh, other question. Uh, you you go on a convention. Uh, there is a lot of merch, yeah, uh, throwing into the crowd here from the developers or for the uh, from the uh, um, um, uh, uh, here um, Who's? producer uh, um, um, publisher, yeah. Oh, okay. So, and uh, some some cues I saw there. Yeah, the uh, the guys are waiting for stuff. For demos, playing demos and stuff like that. Uh, for what um, merch would you wait four hours or something like that because of the crowd and the, the long queue? What would it be? Sneak peek. Sneak peek. Oh, that's, that's, oh okay. I would wait four hours for a sneak peek. Of, of, of what? Yeah, system uh, system shock sequel, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Well, this is no no merch. I I yeah, wouldn't no. wait uh, okay. four hours for a merch. Maybe we, <laughs> I, I, I get later. I get some uh, favorite. Yeah, for me, I think merch. merch it's uh, it's like when you have uh, uh, they can't throw it. I know, but figures would yeah, be okay. something. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, I love plush toys. I'm I'm really into it. If my husband, uh, I don't know if he's watching, but he would say, yeah, yeah, she has a problem with that. Wow. <laughs> She's, she loves plush plushies, and so I think yeah, they they catch me all the time. Yeah, you know this. <laughs> this guy was like, yeah, it's so cute. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm really into it. Yeah. I think that would be what I'm, I would wait for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, and what is your opinion? Your favorite? I like, I like figurines. Figurines, yes. yeah? yeah? Okay. So okay. Um, I had uh, before Apex, I was uh, deeply into, uh, into Overwatch, and I have such a cool uh, diva uh, at my oh, desk. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, this, this and I love one. having this one. And by the way, yesterday, um, Andreas. Uh, the co-managing director and co-founder. He uh, bought to uh, at the lottery at the party ah. the tickets. He won <laughs> a Destroy Humans special edition and an Alex uh, ah. special edition. Yeah, this will end up in my. In my <laughs> <office>. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah. What What is my favorite merch? I think T-shirts. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. It's it's a very hot in here. Yeah. Uh, there was a, another question. Yes. From yes. The chat, yes. So I sure. uh, yeah. do it now. So um, somebody asked, uh, do you typically work on developing one game at a time or multiple and different games at the same time? Only one. Yes. Yeah, this is very um, uh, different, and it depends on which um, yeah, developing studio you are working. Yeah. But um, yeah, we at Pianiabats are working at one game at a time, and it um, yeah, 
usually um, it's about three or four years, yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About, yeah. Three years, four years. So. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, definitely one, uh, one game per team. You can't do more than that. Yeah, that's, and uh, you need also, game development is also about uh, passion and commitment, yes. yeah? And if you have people working one game and they get crazy and they think about it all the time and the evening and the weekends, and let's say you are, that you're doing uh, um, LX5, yeah? And everyone is thinking about, okay, cool ideas. And then you come up, okay, now we have uh, also starting with LX6. And then people start, oh, oh, I have a idea for this one. And then how, how will that work? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't, no. no. What do you think? Ah, uh, yeah, for me it's a little different because we had to pause the one game for a, a few months now and then we started another little one so that we're uh, still developing and have a little one for Steam later. And uh, I think for indie, uh, new indie game studio it's, it's, a, it's a good way to have a little one that you can just uh, get out really fast and then have another big one <laughs> where you can <laughs> go and have yeah passionate work like uh, both are passionate works ah, but work, you know uh, the, the the big one is like what you make over years and uh, yeah i think that's the difference because yeah now we are working at two games at the moment but it's because uh, we have this break time in between and so we can make another one in between so yeah i think yeah. yeah, cool. <laughs> it is not the best uh, condition in here, yeah? Uh, it's <laughs> even yeah. uh, out there because of the heat, yeah? We are yes. <laughs> flushing away here, yeah? And so uh, uh, what do you do against the heat <laughs> um, on this convention? It's very special, this convention. Uh, uh, drinking a lot. Drinking a lot, yeah, yes. that's good. And uh, wearing um, trousers that are very, um, ah. uh, yeah, light, weight. Good. I don't, yeah. So yeah. don't know the right I, word. I, th I think everyone knows what you mean, yeah. But I try to, do, <laughs> try, to <laughs> try to say, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, I, um, I've seen many people who did other things. We have a colleague and he is uh, walking around with some kind of um, a water pistol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, he is um, yeah, spraying water on different yeah. people. Of everyone who comes in to closer just, to him. Uh, yes. yeah, yeah. Really, really weird. It's yeah. nice <laughs> when it's really hot. I like oh, it's it. It's cool, yeah. yeah some okay. people don't, but I like it. Yeah, it's really cool, yeah. It's a good idea. Is it um, often a problem for our PCs if you have a booth uh, yeah. in the um, entertainment area and many people are there playing the games, then uh, the PCs um, got, get too hot and then, uh, yeah, some um, are dead for <laughs> some time, sometimes, and this is not so good. But it's, uh, yeah, quite difficult if you have no um, um, air conditioning. Yeah. It's really a problem at uh, conventions, yeah, when you are presenting a game and, and you're using PCs or other platforms and it's so hot, yeah, yeah. Uh, because yeah. Uh, they are quitting just sudden death, yeah, and so you are, all the work you make for it, yeah, is, is gone, yeah. Um, what do you think about the heat? What do we are doing against? For me, it's... Uh trying to plan how I dress in the morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for example, now I had a business, uh, some business meetings in the morning. I yeah. had uh, tried to uh, have a nice shirt and I had my, my backpack with me with the T-shirt. But somewhere on the way I lost my backpack. Oh, okay. no. Someone out oh, no. there finds one BFG <laughs> with a BFG T-shirt in it. Uh, I take it. <laughs> but um, so now I'm sitting here completely overdressed, uh, even more warm than uh, needed. Yeah. Um, but I think the only way is just you have to get through it somehow. Yeah. I think we will uh, do this stuff uh, a bit longer. Yeah. How, how many days will we stay here? Two, two more days. All yeah. the days, yeah. Yeah, all the days. Well, what about you? The whole weekend. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Wow. Respect. Yeah, so, some kind of uh, vacation here for us. Yeah, we yeah? are looking yeah. forward really cool. to a long time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have the feet like me after that. Yeah. I think so. Okay. <laughs> I already have them. Yeah. <laughs> ah, cool. Uh, where do you uh, look for when you are uh, searching for your next cool game? What do you want to play? Do you really go on conventions and look for search for it, or what, what, what was the place? What 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 is the, the browser? Or what, what, what Are you talking about the game to games. play for yourself? Games yeah, to play for yourself yeah. because we we are going to convention, yeah, because we are presenting our games. But the people out there, yeah, are searching the next cool yes. cool stuff, yeah. And yeah. what about you? Yeah, I think I I love the the idea of a convention. I I often find games I, I never saw before and uh, they make a lot of fun we even had yet now I, I don't had a lot of time this time to get in the entertainment area but I uh, found I think two or five games that I was like yeah we could t uh, buy them and have some new stuff for uh, at home to play with friends or something like that because I think good couch co-op uh, games are rare now <laughs> and uh, I found some so I was a little bit like yeah now I have cool new stuff and um, yeah I often found new games at the convention because I'm not really into always a look at social media what's new or stuff yeah. like that because it's uh, yeah then I never would get away from the phone <laughs> so, so yeah what about you I uh, often read um, yeah different magazines uh, at the internet I'm searching for the uh, next hot shit <laughs> what is uh, yeah, releasing uh, during the year yeah. and I'm searching for different games, especially um, horror games. I really like them. I also hate them, but I, I, I like them too. And um, I'm very interesting, uh, interested in um, yeah, watching what's next. And then I, um, yeah, of course there's um, a lot of um, Werbung. Uh, advertising. Yeah. yeah, advertising at uh, yeah um, different platforms like uh, Steam, for example, or uh, PlayStation or Xbox. We have everything of this. We know you have access to all the games of THQ Nordic, yeah? But what else do you what play? What else? For me, yeah. I'm always uh, I'm so deep into the, the industry and business all my um, all my uh, social media it's all about games all my friends is about games so I think I have a generally quite a good overview of what's happening and what's coming out even um, talking here to developers because um, it sounds strange but we talk about what we are doing, even if it's not announced. As we have a good feeling, what's happening out there? So I have a quite a good overview. So convention is more like oh, looking at the stuff I like anyway, or it's coming out. Um, Need for Speed. I'm a Need for Speed fan. I would oh, love yeah. to have played Need for Speed here. Unfortunately, it's not there. Um, and um, then I just seeing something where okay, that could be interesting. Not here. But really on, on social media, and then I follow up and try to get uh, get hold of it. Yeah. It's more like there are special things like on mobile platforms or whatever. That's where I don't have this this clear overview. So, for example, I don't know if you have played Genshin Impact. <laughs> <Yeah>? <laughs> yes. So for me, that came out of nothing, but but it was already extremely successful and famous. Yeah? And when I first get I didn't play it for long, but I tried it out. Yeah. Uh, was, this was something that came as a surprise for me because it came from the mobile, mobile part of the, the industry. Someone told me a uh, System Shock uh, sequel or something. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, is, yeah. is on the way here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that could be the next hot shit for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah a remake. <laughs> it was, yeah. yeah. It, and the, the the queue was so long at the at the business um, day. Yeah. <laughs> that I don't want to see the queue now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> but, uh, it's really, yeah, I was also really hyped for No it. chance for me, okay, I see. Or the remake. A remake. Remake, the yeah. Remake, remake. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's really cool. Okay, it's, it will be. It's system show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, 
for you is finished today. Yeah, this is the last thing you will do That's here action. on Discover. That's action. Yeah. Okay, and then you move home. And yep. uh, um, four hours drive, German Autobahn. Okay. And then finally back. Okay, we are part of uh, Nordrhein-Westfalen and we are here in Cologne and this is Nordrhein-Westfalen or county here. Yeah, and we are not so far away, one hour with, uh, with a car or something. You too? Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, so now nah. yeah. um, that will be in two days or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Um, we have uh, some questions I see there, many questions about our next game we are working on. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, we just released this year uh, Elex 2, and now we are working on the next thing we're doing, but we, we're not, not able to tell anything about that. So. Uh, early in the developing. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, it will be uh, uh, some day. Yeah, huh? in the meantime, oh. you can play Destroy All Humans uh, 1 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, have a look at uh, some indie stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh, cool. yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, this was uh, some kind of uh, convention talk with developers uh, and we hope uh, you enjoyed it and uh, now have a nice uh, stream here and uh, we are hoping that from now on then in next year we will have the next Gamescom and uh, have a nice time. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Ever since you took that damned scepter you haven't been yourself. You brought us here, then abandoned the fight, abandoned your men, and even abandoned your vows! For what? So you're alive, brother. My lord! The honor is ours, brother. There's no turning back, no rest, no doubt. Advance it! Whoa! What manner of beast? Beast! It falls! When through Sneman now, he's beast! I see you have brought friends. In God's name! What happened to you, brother? On the march! Back off, Graves! By your command! Fate is curious, don't you think? After all I had to suffer and sacrifice, it puts you in my righteous path. You! Don't make me do this, Theo. Fight Forever video game happened here. All right, so now what? Um, well, are you hungry? Um, on second thought, don't eat that. But now, it's finally time to reveal AEW Fight Forever to our AEW fans at the THQ Nordic Digital Showcase. Check it out, Tony. I will be me, the okay. one legendary DMD, and you will be Adam Cole. Oh man, this this game is awesome. I told you you would love it. Yeah. I told you. Am I ever wrong? No, never. no, I should. I should never. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. This game is it's, it's tremendous. Are there any weapons in this game? 
are there any weapons? <laughs> Look how easy this is to play. You didn't have to figure out a million freaking buttons, Got even though it. I could have, because I'm a dentist. Oh, I know that. But I just picked it up today and started playing, and I'm already the best at it. Yeah. And mm. career mode. Wow. Mini games. Wow, I'm really excited you tell me about career mode, I can tell you that. Yeah. And I almost lost my mind when I found out that AEW Fight Forever has mini games. How did you find out about the mini games? You told me. AEW Fight Forever, coming soon. D and D. Knock your teeth out, Shivani. <laughs> well, at least I know a good dentist. Breaking news here in Sledgehammer County. After a sharp increase of car racing activity in recent days, authorities now report a staggering amount of items and racetracks popping up out of nowhere. Jan, what do you make of it? Well, Bill, it's like you say. Random bits and pieces of racetracks, along with all different kinds of items, have been emerging all over the county. And, wait, I'm just getting word that these pieces now seem to be rising into the air, forming an ever-expanding aerial racetrack and eclipsing the sky above Sledgehammer. Bill, I've never seen anything like this. You have to wonder who is behind this and where does it end? Told you. Look at all those snails the I monster kidnapped. Look, it's Gary. So how do we save Gary without that monster snail seeing us? Gary is the monster snail. Huh? They grow up so fast, don't they? These massive amounts of candy bars must have given him a sugar rush. We can't take him back home like this. We have to cut off his candy supply first. Already on it, buddy. <laughs>
to the rescue! Jelly extras were very convincingly beating me up. Welcome back to the THQ Nordic live stream here, live from obviously Gamescom 2022. Cool that you're still here. Yeah, I'm glad you tuned in. Um, you, I hope you didn't miss me because, you know, there was a wrestling slot. There was this talk you just saw for one hour straight. And now we're back with some gameplay. I think you all need that right now. And I'm joined by two wonderful people to make this even more exciting for you guys. Lena Mara, hello. Hello. Welcome in the stream. She's a content creator. If you want to know more about her, just um, type exclamation mark Lena Mara wrote, written together so you can get to her Twitch, ch Twitch channel or social media and so on. So keep that in mind. And beside her, there's Nathan, one of the developers on Stunfest World Tour. Hello, how's it going? Well, I'm fine. Good. How are you? Yeah, good, man, good. Awesome. That's great. That's a great start. And we're going to take a look at the, well, pre-alpha, you said. Pre-pre-alpha. Pre-pre-alpha. Pre-pre-pre-pre-alpha of Stunfest World Tour. If you have any questions for me, for Lina Mara, for Nathan, then just go ahead, type them in the chat, and we try to address everything we can. Okay? So maybe we just jump right in. After you, grab it. And and All right. For anyone who has never heard of Stuntfest, maybe you can like give a short synopsis of what yeah. we're going to see here. So I can give the basic overlay. It's uh, basically an 18-player elimination uh, showcase of stunt persons. The entire idea is that stunt people from around the world have come together at Stuntfest and are challenging each other head-to-head -head in multiple different events to basically be the best of the fest. Uh, the basic gameplay loop is you join the stunt show and you compete across a, uh, a myriad of different events from races to distance jumps to height jumps to destruction derbies, etc. You employ different vehicles, different gadgets, etc. to um, be faster, crash harder, stunt better than anybody else and, and ultimately win. <laughs> um, every event you get points or if you lose you don't get points and then after a certain while the, the people at the lowest the leaderboard get removed from the game whereas the others get to keep going and eventually there will be one winner who'll then be able to jump from this giant blimp above the entire arena back for everybody else to watch him just crash land back on the Awesome. That sounds nice. really awesome. Will we get to see that as well? Uh, you won't be able to get to see the big drop in, but you'll get to see okay. a, little, a little vertical slice of all the stuff we've got going on. Okay. I'm very excited to see what are your, um, let's say, experiences with racing games up until now. Oh, I don't have that much experiences with racing games. I just played like uh, Need for Speed or something else, but uh, I am, yeah. Very excited to see this game, and uh, let's have a look. Okay, then be interesting, then. Have very much fun, and, well, let Nathan guide you through yes. what we're going to show now. Yep, so right trigger will accelerate, right. and left trigger will break, and it's pretty much this is the tutorial here. Maybe it's not connected? Yeah, let's let's um, put this controller on right. first. Let's ah, so it works. Yep. So if you just follow this road, this road is a tutorial that's built into the game, and it'll basically lead you to the stunt uh, fest. You can see in the background Charlie, our blimp. That is, okay. as you can see, the platform hanging from underneath him. That's where you'll drop in once uh, it, well, if you ever win. Why is he called? Oh yeah. Oh well. Good start. <laughs> <laughs> I will never drive with you as a driver. I'm a very good driver in real life. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe that helps you in this game as well. Why is your blimp called Charlie? Charlie. I haven't answered that one. <laughs> all I, all I was told he was called Charlie, and I was like, okay, cool, that's fine. <laughs> that's all I need to hear. <laughs> I never really questioned it. I was just like, yeah, cool. 
Yeah. Uh, so if you avoid the ramp and keep following this round, you'll get to the tutorial. That's the uh, the tutorial skip. Instead of pressing start to skip, we figured why not put a ramp in there because it seems more fitting to awesome. the game. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and here comes our, our really big thing. If you press A, oh. if you press and hold A, you'll eject. Okay, so I have to. Oh. So you have to keep going, and then as you're going, hold A. Once you release it, you'll fire out of the car. And then oh. you get propelled forward. Then you get propelled forward, yeah. Awesome. And that's when you'll then get access to all your gadgets that you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. From left to right, we have the grappling hook, uh, the jump jet, the hang glider. The uh, aerial nudges, which uh, Lena just used to. I just wanted to try. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the last one is the car summoner, which allows you to resummon your car back onto your current position. So okay. You keep going. And the idea is you combine driving, ejection, and the array of gadgets to, yeah, basically d destroy your rivals, beat your rivals, get the lead. Yeah. yeah. Um, as I say, not only that, but you can also use your car to. Uh, <laughs> make it difficult, shall we say, for other races. So I do like this? Yep, there you go. And then if you land on that bounce pad, you'd like jump, or you oh, use A ah, on the air to okay. keep going. So where's my car now? Uh, you left, I think you left your car maybe back there. there oh, you no, go. so I have to run there. So you could, or if you tap B. Ah, so, right. back. Yeah. so the idea is you'd eject from your car, and then you'd uh, maybe use the aerial nudges to gain some speed, and then maybe uh, you'd summon your car again. And then oh, no. as you, you gain the quicker. momentum, you, you keep going faster, and you. It, it basically means you can keep up that speed while also going vertical at the same time. I, now, right now, I really want to see very experienced players do exactly that because <laughs> I, I imagine that is pretty awesome to look at with all the options you have here. Um, Sinlink asks, but can you run over someone who's trying to sabotage you? Uh, if somebody is out of the car and chooses to position themselves in front of yours, uh, they may have a, a certain accident, yes. Welcome to Stuntfest. So this is the big arena area. This entire area is our hub world, as it were, where you'll spawn in with other players. You'll be able to show off uh, your car liveries. You'll be able to practice all the different elements of the game. So this area is actually quite a large area, not just within this arena, but within the canyon itself. You have areas where you can practice using the glider so you can get good at that aspect of the game. There's um, almost like a ski ball set of ramps where you can use yourself as the ski ball <laughs> practice the uh the throw the, the ejection mechanic there's also a target range where you can you have to practice hitting the targets with the character when you eject them yeah and all that feeds into all the different aspects of the game that you'll be finding throughout your average stunt show so you'll play in this area where you can meet up with friends etc practice set challenges for each other um oh no not the audience uh -oh. thankfully they're, they're godlike in their presence <laughs> Everything. Uh -oh. I wouldn't visit some of these fests, to be honest. <laughs> well, it's a good stunt fest. Everybody's involved. <laughs> Those poor guys. Okay. Damn, that's what I wanted to hear. I'm in, says Sinlink. Awesome. That's awesome to hear. Those little drones you just passed, the little, like, hovering batteries, when you hit those, they'll recharge your um, your packs in the bottom left-hand corner. Okay. Um, and if you're feeling comfortable with the controls, we can get you started in a race or something if you'd like. Oh, we can do it. It's very hard to control. Yeah, the, we can. what we'll do is if you hit the start button real quick, and then, sorry, can you just pass me the mouse quick? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Uh, we'll quickly show the garage off, which has uh, a selection of three of our vehicles, uh, currently ready to go. We have the truck, uh, we have the muscle car, and my personal favorite, the supercar. Um, <clears throat> as the game progresses throughout development, obviously we'll get more cars and you'll be able to customize them, uh, both with parts and with uh, how they look as well, so that you can make it really be a bit of a splash of your vibe throughout the game. Uh, and alongside that, we also have a selection of different characters uh, that are different stunt persons from around the world uh, all coming together to be part of the stunt fest. Uh, my yeah, personal favorite uh, is this guy, and I'll, I'll probably let you figure out why he's my favorite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because he looks like you without hair? A little bit. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> um, and then we will drop you into uh, our Eagle's Nest, uh, which I think is probably one of our best examples of everything you can really do. This is uh, a race, so it's a checkpoint-based race with two laps. Um, but the idea is that you have to look for um, different shortcuts and uh, different ways that you can try and get ahead. Some of these might be like really obvious uh, if you just press A really quickly. Uh, some of these might be really obvious, like if you look to the top left-hand corner, uh, you can see that little splash of turquoise. That's a, a nice way of sort of giving people players a little bit of a nod of where certain shortcuts might be. Okay. So you'd be racing along here, you'd hold A, you'd eject through that little canyon hole there. But there are other shortcuts that are a little bit more hidden, or even ones that 
uh, you have to figure out entirely because they won't be into two at all. So it's 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 rewarded to um, you get rewarded for uh, exploring the map. Yes, very right? much so. Okay. So the idea is we wanted to make uh, an, uh, uh, an, elim an elimination tournament and include some uh, variation of uh, a skill ceiling. So you might be a good racing uh, game player, uh, and you might not be very good at the stunts. So you'll have to keep practicing the stunts so they yeah. get a nice all-round skill set. Or you might be good at like maybe platformer games, so you have to practice more at the, the driving uh, scenarios uh, or more vehicular scenarios. And that way you then get better and better the more you play it. When I first started this, I was awful at both aspects of the game. So I snuck in some time when none of the other devs were looking and really practiced my skills and eventually got much better at it. Okay, oh, I, I have see. to go on the right. Yeah, you want to go oh, up and around. All right. But it's just so much fun to see cars crashing into stuff. Yes, and so that's we will have a slice of that in a second. Yeah. Once you've got a little bit more familiar with it, I'll spawn some bots in. Uh, normally, it would be a multiplayer race. Unfortunately, at Gamescom, we don't have the uh, opportunity to bring in other players. But I, uh, we have got some, some bots ready to go. Uh, the bots are very early in development. Okay. So they're very aggressive. Yeah. And they're not the smartest in the world. <laughs> but um, they, they're a pretty good mimic of, of, of some of the uh, styles you will see within the game. Uh, we will be looking at doing uh, both bot play and mul uh, multiplayer play uh, once we get further on down the road. Awesome. Uh, but the bots right now are just for, for Gamescom demonstration. And you said 18 player multiplayer, yeah? 18 player, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So so right now we are doing act we're actively doing play tests. So yeah. you can jump in the Discord where I hang out regularly. Um, uh, every other week I grab a bunch of 17 people from the Discord. Oh, awesome. We all jump in, we, we play it, and we, we get some feedback from how people are finding it. Uh, if you want to respawn, it's just a share button, and you can oh, all right. reset you again. I and jumped off the car and... <laughs> <laughs> Where can one find the link to that Discord? So it's discord.gg forward slash stuntfest, but you can find all our social stitch on the Steam page. Awesome, awesome. And like always, it's awesome if you guys would wishlist the game because that helps always. out the devs. Yeah, massive help. Massively, yeah. But uh, by all means, join the Discord and, and ju hopefully get in the next playtest because it's always great. One of the things that we at PowWow really want to uh, drive home is the transparent development and getting involved with the community from the get-go. With a game like this, it's the community that really drives a lot of it, apart from the pun. And um, I th we we're already trying to make it so that the community get involved yeah. and, and help suggest different things. So we have discussions going on about different characters they'd like to see, different uh, paint jobs for cars, etc. One of my favorite ones, a uh, suggestion that we've had, is uh, an ambulance and an ambulance driver, <laughs> which I think kind of suits this game for. Yeah, but... Probably they won't be as friendly as you expect them to be. No, I think it'd be a bit of a, a false sense of security as an ambulance <laughs> comes barreling towards you. Yeah. What would you say, how steep is the difficulty curve exactly? Because the skill ceiling is very high, like you already said. Um, I, I suppose it's easy to learn, hard to master? Very much so. So it's, <clears throat> it's one of those ones where, um, when it comes to the different events, grasping the, the basics of that event, comes really simply, like, for instance, a distance jump. You're just trying to get your character as far as possible. Yeah, OK. So, OK, that's, that's pretty straightforward. But then figuring out, OK, when do I use my gadgets? How, what, what's the best, uh, the best path through the different um, obstacles and where the pickups are that you can combine to really get uh, going? It looks like you're making pretty good progress. Would you like to play with some bots? Oh, yeah, I think uh, I'm getting better now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you feel like you? You, you've been getting better now, uh, so is the difficulty curve too steep or is it just okay? It's okay. okay. At the beginning I was just, oh, damn, I'm not going to get it, but... A bit overwhelming, better. maybe. It point. is, yes. Yeah. But now you uh, look like a proper stuntfest driver. I think I will get a pro if I play this. Uh... <laughs> would you, would you want to consider like driving like this in reality? So doing stunt fest driving? In in real life? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's not good for the crowd as we saw before, so I don't want to damage some people. Okay, then let's try to right. win some races. Hopefully that should work. 
this canyon with 18 players is probably pure chaos, says someone in chat. But I think that's the goal of the game, isn't it? Very much so. <laughs> uh, so we'll quickly spawn the bots in, and then I'm just going to start the match. So All it's right. going to go black, and then you'll spawn at the start. Okay. Fine. Good luck and fun, Lena. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so they will they will try and go through you. So be prepared to suddenly be like slammed into the walls and all over. The place. All right. Uh, so right now, as I say, the bots are, are, are very in development, so they've all spawned the same cars. But normally, you'll have uh, a, a myriad of different cars joining you. And if you've noticed, there's cars dotted around the map, since there's one that you just passed there, and there's a couple that come up on your left here. Um, while you can be uh, destroyed by other players, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're out of the game. Okay. And this works really well in our Destruction Derby races, because normally the Destruction Derby, uh, when you get destroyed, that's it, game over. But in ours, you can actually use that to your advantage. So say you're on a very little bit of life left. Uh -huh. You can eject early and therefore rob somebody of destroying your car because you're not in it anymore, so it's not yours. Smart. Grab one of the cars from around the arena and then jump back into the arena with a fresh car. So that gives you the chance to keep gaining more points. That means that you're not constantly out of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, only when there's no more cars left or if you're out of a car for a prolonged period of time do you get uh, disqualified from that round. How easily does your car get destroyed? Can you drive against some things and crash into stuff, or you will you quickly be dispatched of? So one of the things about our vehicles is they both they all have strengths and weaknesses. So yeah. what you want to do is have it so players work out what their best suits them from the tools uh, the tool sets that are available. So this can range from making sure your gadgets complement your playstyle or back up areas where you're weaker. So you could say, for instance, you're really good at the driving. Yeah. So you're like, well, I don't need to worry about having driving gadgets. I could have gadgets that only focus on the stunts. And those gadgets will get you further I and see. further. So doing that, uh, you can work out which works best for you. And when it comes to the different cars, for instance, we have the truck, the muscle car, and the supercar. The truck is the heaviest one, so when that hits you, you're going to know about it. <laughs> uh, supercar, not so much. Yeah. But the supercar will leave you in the dust in a straight line. The muscle car is really good at drifting. Again. Awesome. So you're able to customize your experience and your, well, your strategy mm -hmm. very much. Yeah, very much so. So you can okay. either boost your strengths, so you're guaranteed to get first place if you don't uh, completely mess up or you can cover for weaknesses and maybe not necessarily always come first, but not come last in other races. So it can help back up skills or, or cover weaknesses so you can get as many points as possible and stay in the front of the pack. Okay, I see. But you can also customize your experience so that you can just troll everyone else and ram into everyone. <laughs> Sabotage your own. I don't enemy. see why not. Okay, awesome. I, I, with most players that I've met so far, I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> I suppose you often play that in your in your studio as well, right? Yes, yeah. There, we've, we've gotten... Ooh, ooh that was close. The Very good. Nice. <laughs> it's actually gotten quite competitive uh, within the office. And yeah. there's, one, there's one shortcut on this map specifically that's right at the end. And it lulls people into a false sense of security because they'll be coming uh, down the start, finish straight, they think they're in first. Then all of a sudden somebody ha uh, hang glides in. Yeah. It just takes first place from them. And the amount of rage that I've heard over our de from our dev team about that, because <laughs> uh, it's always me. She already became a pro, but can't keep up, someone says in chat. <laughs> yeah, you're first out of ten. Nice. I try my best. It seems to work. So can I do like a special move, like uh, throwing flames or something else in the Sadly late game? No. It would be cool, admittedly. Oh, Sadly right. not. Sadly <laughs> not. Awesome. Uh, after this one, we'll, uh, I don't know how much, do we have enough time left for another mode? Yeah, I think yeah, so. We've cool. got some time left. And I very much would like uh, to see you mm -hmm. drive in a race she already did, so we can, like, yes. no offense. No, no, no. See I the difference in your <laughs> skill level. Sure. Um, so wait, you've, hmm, you've kind of set me up here, because now if I did really badly, then... <laughs> That'd be, well, <laughs> a, dis a disgrace, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Disgraceful, but... I already, uh, when we did our, we had a big play test a couple of weeks ago called the Summer of Stunts. Yeah. And I was undefeated until eventually someone defeated me, and I have never lived it down since. Okay. Every well, time on on Discord, he, it, he it rubs it in my face. you. Yeah. yeah. But I think you won't be as disappointing as you think you might be. <laughs> Let's see. After she wins this race, apparently. I lost my roof and. <laughs> It looks like it's hot there anyway, so having a yeah. roof is probably a benefit. All right. 
Well, we have we have some events that don't even involve the car. Uh, the hang glider, which is a gadget um, you can use, is also a core part of one of the races where you use the the hang glider to do the entire race. Okay. So awesome. sometimes you may not even see a car, uh, and then sometimes the car is just a tool rather than one of the main gameplay aspects. Cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Good, I'm glad you like Thank it. You. And you did great, Lena. Yeah. Thanks. Perfect. I've never seen someone pick it up that quickly. Wow. Uh, so. You're kidding. <laughs> no, like a lot of the people that we've uh, seen so far spend a lot of their time leaving pieces of themselves behind as they bounce up <laughs> the, the canyon. Okay, let's see another map then. Uh, do you want to do another map first or that race again? Which would you like to do? Another map first. Another map first. Cool. I'll hand this back to you then. I'll All right. Another map. We leave your hopefully awesome performance. <laughs> if to I, the so end if of I can stretch this out long enough, then I can avoid making a fool of myself. Is no, 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 no. We do that even <laughs> if your slot goes on till 12 p.m. or something. Uh, of course, if you just hit A again. All right. Uh, so I'll let you practice first. Basically, what you're doing is uh, driving full speed towards that yellow barrier and ejecting, and then you need to get as far as possible. Okay, so I'm just pressing, holding, and. Just press, uh, yeah, so literally just go, go as fast straight. as you can, uh, and then once you think it's time to eject, eject and then use the uh, the tapping A to do the somersaults to try and get as far as you possibly can. Okay. There are pickups that can recharge your in-air jumps, etc. so see if you can find them and figure out which way to go. Oh! This was too late. <laughs> that was great. Uh, yes, it, it went was. very far. <laughs> so if you hold the share button, it'll reset you back to the beginning and you can just try again. Uh, oh no, that was the wrong. Uh, Is it this one? Uh, that, that one. Oh, all right. Awesome. Okay. I noticed somebody's seen our bot names as well. <laughs> what is so... We have a certain theme. Okay, I need to... Why? I I, that. So I have to hold it. You have to, you have to let go to then eject out. All oh, right. Okay, I got it. A lot of people overlook the ejection mechanic when they start racing and stuff they yeah. get really focused on the race and they don't think about how they can like eject and stuff because it is such a well unusual gameplay element in racing games yeah exactly which makes it even more interesting for me so then when you tap a you'll somersault forwards oh okay and then if you're not pressing any direction you tap it you'll go directly up and those little pickups there the little orange floaty batteries okay if you get inside that circle radius oh, it'll no. recharge how many times you can do the a thing okay so the idea is you want to find out the best way to get forward while also finding the pickups to keep going even further and then that's when advanced stuff cards start coming into play like we have um, a, a term for a, a perfect nudge which is when you're just about to hit the ground if you nudge in time yeah. it will recharge because it's like oh. a, a perfect version of it so it's also like very much even um, even more detailed than I expected yeah. it to be. And oh no, I thought I can. Everybody thinks they can bounce with the balloons. This. I think we're going to have to make the balloons bouncy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. What's the high score? What's the farthest someone went? Um, I think a few of our dev team have got to the end. Okay. But they won't tell me how they've done it, and I can't get them. <laughs> and I keep asking them. The, the worst part is they've even sent me footage, which I've used to, to make uh, social yeah. media things, and I still can't figure out how they do it, because when I try and replicate it my side... But aren't cheat codes still a thing for devs? Don't tell them. <laughs> okay. There's, there's a reason I won all those games <laughs> in, in the, the playtest. Oh, let's oh. dive into the water. It. Looks Do I have to land on something to uh, so that I get my point? you have to land on, the, uh, on solid ground, and it puts a flag down for where you got to. Oh, OK. Yeah, if you land in the water, you have to just dive. All right. OK. But once you feel like you've got the grips to it, I'll spawn some bots, and we can. OK. Oh, so bots are in this as well. We have bots in this mode as well, yeah. Uh, once we uh, hopefully get to potential release, et cetera, Bots will be our, our version of a single player mode. If you want to practice, etc., okay. they can they can do so with bots. Can you imagine you want to practice a hell of a lot? Yeah, it can definitely be uh, helpful. Yeah. Okay, then let's see this with bots because yep. we're running out of right. time a bit. Um, so if I open the console with the just mentioned cheat codes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh well. Good luck. Of fun. Oh. So okay. I will say very quickly. You'll notice the screen will go black and white. Um, that is because when you hit something, you get a concussion. But because our bots are still so uh, in early development, you get the concussion for the bots hitting the wall. So you'll notice it going black and white. Uh, we are aware of that. Okay. 
Um, how stable is the game right now? Rickstoff asks, just read that you're planning the early access for this year. Um, from the playtests we've had so far, um, we didn't, or at least I didn't encounter any stability issues. We didn't really have any reports of uh, stability issues. Um, there's no set in stone date for, for anything like that. What we're doing currently is focusing on the playtests, um, allowing people to get their hands on the game at select points so we can judge how people are finding it. Once we're comfortable, we'll, we'll start talking more about early access. Okay, okay I see. If that even happens. Nice, let's see how you do this round. And then, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> But I think you're getting the hang of it. Ah. I'm getting there. Not bad, that's your, your <laughs> best shot yeah. at it. Okay, let's see how you do sure. a race with all your yes. epic skills. And I thought I was getting away with it as well. Nope, 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 nope. I didn't forget that. <laughs> what do you think, Lina? Will he do better than you? No. Okay. <laughs> That's the commitment I want to see, the confidence. <laughs> no, of course. Let's see about that. Maybe he makes a fool of himself like he pre predicted. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a long games con, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm also <laughs> tired. I understand that. It's a good excuse, to be honest. Okay. Let's see. And of course, I will annoy you with questions yeah, while you drive. <laughs> we also already have plans for a competitive scene to push that scene. We would like to do something like that, um, a competitive scene, etc., that you can then use to to brag to your friends, etc., and maybe have certain rewards tied to it. But we have no, again, no set in stone stuff for that. As okay, of but there are plans, and if possible, you'll get into that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Awesome. I, I personally am a very competitive person, uh, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so having something like that is definitely uh, something I would like. To. Yeah. I, I I can imagine that very oh oh that many players yeah want to do competitive play in this game as well. Warpixel just wish wish listed it so it makes a good first impression <laughs> to the stream. It's a whole new gameplay now. Yeah. It's, <laughs> well, it's just more experience, I suppose. Yeah, once, we once you've done the tracks enough, you'll learn where all the, yeah. all the little nuances are to it. If we would have let you play like 10 minutes longer, I think this would be the new gameplay as well. <laughs> of course. I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> oh, that's a great oh. shortcut. Oh! Almost. I spoke too soon. <laughs> I think I got that once in the entirety of Gamescom, but I try it every time just in case. Just in case. But it would look pretty awesome if it hits. <laughs> Guys, if you have some last questions, we've got some minutes to address them. If not, well, you need to be forever silent or ask them in Discord or in one of the other slots we'll have tomorrow and the day after that. But use your chance now. So you can use that grappling hook that I just used, not only on cards that I dot around the map, but other players as well. Um, we're working oh. on the animation still for all the different... Um, for the grappling hook and a few other things. Oops. Will there be mod support, Grix asks? No. Okay. No, we are working potentially on um, user-created content, but more within like a, a map creator, etc. Oh, but okay. That's still um, heavily in progress, as with a, with a lot of aspects. Yeah, of course, because it's a pre 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 alpha. And does spectator mode exist for online play? Not as of yet, no. Okay. Um. I th but I think the map editor, if you really get that in there, people will... They are so creative, the communities so of games... So creative. ...that keep the games alive after years and years. Yeah. It would be awesome to see that here as well. So we're already kind of doing that in some ways, in that we're taking feedback, as I say, from the community regarding all aspects of the game. Yeah. Uh, one, one really nice bit of feedback we had recently was uh, an evolution of Destruction Derby, where it featured a King of the Hill area where Whoa. it would direct the, the focus of destruction yeah. rather than endlessly chasing all the other competitors. I you see. now have an area that you have to go if you want to score like big points. And obviously in a destruction derby, you want to force the players into one spot. Yeah. That's an interesting game mode. Will there be a Battle Royale game mode as well? 
potential. Uh -huh. Maybe something like that. Uh -oh. um, we have a. Uh, it's 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 called rodeo, and okay. there is one car, uh, and you have to be in that car to get points, and then people can kick you out of that car. I see. So it's constantly everyone's battling for that that one car. Okay. But generally, the entire stunt show is is somewhat of a battle royale in that it's a last man standing kind of competition. Yeah. But there's no Fortnite circle. No, 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 no. Like that. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, Lena, what's your first impression of this game? Oh, uh, at the f at the first start, I was just like, uh, oh my god, what am I doing? Yeah. And, uh, now, as I see this, I'm just like, whoa, what are the possibilities uh, to play the game? Because I was just driving around and uh, hopefully get uh, to the destination. And yeah, it's very great. I think there's a great potential and... Yeah. And I myself would very much like to be as skilled as you in the game because it looks <laughs> like so much fun. Yeah. Um, how, how long do you reckon does someone have to, well, learn the game and try to get better at it until he is as good as you are? So I've been with Pow Wow for five months now, so at least five months. Okay, I see. But then you can do stunts like that. Thank you very much for showing off this game. Thank you. Thank you no very worries. much. No pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. And Thank I you very much for playing it. Yes, <laughs> thanks for showing this to me. No, my pleasure. <laughs> and I think you've got a good first impression of this as well. Some of you already wishlisted it now. And if you want to get your hands on this pre 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 alpha demo, you can come to Gamescom, right? Uh, if you want to get your hands on it, go to discord.gg forward slash stuntfest. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there'll be a link to a format you can fill out. And then I literally just grab people at random uh, to come and join me on it. Okay, awesome. So you've got better chances on Discord than yeah. here. <laughs> um, but yeah, join the Discord, and then I think you also get updates on everything concerning this game. And probably at some point, or re also the release date. But right now, eventually, we can't say anything about that. Thank you very much, like I said. And we're going into a short break, like three or four minutes, and then we will show you again SpongeBob SquarePants. The Cosmic Shake. So stay tuned for that. Until then, bye. There is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. Where thousands of young to salvation have gone. Oh God, she knows I'm one. Don't let them get inside, compare. They're not the good guy. Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. Maybe the dark man just likes it when you suffer. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition?
I know you have thousands of questions, but you need to trust me. Listen. Don't do anything dangerous yet, okay? The plane for millennia has been like a paradise, but that changed recently. This darkness is a bad sign. Be careful out there, and please come back in one piece, okay? Not to go alone. It's too dangerous for you. Hang on, Lux! I'm coming! I do understand why Asim was mad. Now that we finally have a new Lux, he is worried to lose you. Breaking news here in Sledgehammer County, after a sharp increase of car racing activity in recent days, authorities now report a staggering amount of items and racetracks popping up out of nowhere. Jan, what do you make of it? Well, Bill, it's like you say. Random bits and pieces of racetracks, along with all different kinds of items, have been emerging all over the county. And, wait, I'm just getting word that these pieces now seem to be rising into the air forming an ever-expanding aerial racetrack and eclipsing the sky above Sledgehammer. Bill, I've never seen anything like this. You have to wonder, who is behind this and where does it end? And welcome back. This was a really short break, wasn't it? We're getting better and better at those breaks. Well, I'm joined now again with Lena Mara here. If you want to know more about her, again, just type exclamation mark Lena Mara written together and you get her Twitch channel and the other socials, I think, as well. And beside you, there's again AJ. Hello. We've seen you sometimes now here. Yeah, glad to be back. <laughs> Always helping us with showcasing SpongeBob SquarePants, the cosmic shake. And that's what we're going to do again now. Awesome. Looking it would also it. it would have been a surprise to sit you in front of another game. Yeah, I would have said. I, would have said. <laughs> um, I was expecting that game, to be honest. OK, <laughs> cool. What's your experience with SpongeBob? Up until now? I have to say, um, I'm not that into Spongebob because I don't uh, look the series or something else. But uh, yeah, I just play 
now and we will see what the game will do. Yeah, let's let's see your first impression. I'm, I'm very interested and curious what you're going to say about SpongeBob. Um, then pick up the controller and let's jump right into it. I can only say I hope it will sparkle the joy for SpongeBob in you. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> because it's definitely a series that is not only for kids, but also adults all the same. Okay, this is a short tutorial, right? Mm-hmm. And we see the glide function here. You have to, to put this, uh, put the button, button oh, now. You can, or? At the bottom, you see you can skip to these tutorials. Oh, all right. Oh. Just shows you what to do. All right. Let's and get now this. we dive into the world. And what is the first wish world, as they are called? We're going to see here. Western is going to be the first wish world out of Ooh. seven different wish worlds that we have in the game. All of them are themed about an iconic episode from the original SpongeBob series. Okay. So besides Western, what we have is a karate-themed world in rock, rock, uh, bikini, uh, bikini Rock Bottom. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be many other seven, well, we have seven different wish worlds out there. <coughs> the others are prehistoric, you're going to find. We have a medieval-themed one, a pirate-themed one, and others that I don't want to spoil already. <laughs> You can also hit people by pressing, I don't know what it was. The X button. The X button, okay. And I think it'll be best if you follow the the blue arrows to get as far as possible. So blue arrows? Oh. Yeah, they're pointing where you should go. How much platformer experience do you have as well? Uh, a little bit, but... Okay. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Let's see, because she picked up um, what we oh, oh, let just played, Stunfest, she picked up really fast. So let's see how well you're doing it right here. <coughs> so the goal here is basically collecting the cactus juice from the cactus that you saw up there. Oh, okay. <coughs> that was, that's what Mr. Krabs tells you at the beginning. So he asked you to collect the cactus juice for him. Okay. So that he can store it. Well, we all know that he wants to make money. Probably, yes. Oh, like, like this? It. Just go there and then the button, to, uh, is the button ah. one, so keep it pressed. There you go, and you collect the juice, and you can continue. Yes. Nice. How does cactus juice taste? Are you asking me? Yeah. <clears throat> well, we didn't do tastings at the office. No, no, nobody brought us cacti. <laughs> I think, Lena, <laughs> the... the um, Is this the wrong direction? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. The bubble shows you where to go. You got the... You got the and the... Uh, yes. Well, at the top it shows you which direction to go. Or you just follow Patrick, Woo! your buddy that is with you throughout the whole game. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe I explain why Patrick is actually a balloon and why he's following you. Yeah, because in the series he is not a balloon. Yes, he's not a I balloon, but correctly. he is in the cosmic shake. <clears throat> so what happens at the beginning of the game is that Patrick and SpongeBob they get these magical mermaid tears. Okay. And they make a lot of wishes for all their friends. Uh huh. Patrick wishes to be a balloon, but they overdo it. They make too many wishes, and all of these wishes then basically collide and destroy the very fabric of reality. And this is how they create these seven wish worlds. I see. Where all of their best friends from Bikini Bottom get dragged into. Mm -hmm. And, well, SpongeBob and Patrick head out to help and rescue them. If you would have lived in the SpongeBob universe, what would have been your first wish? Whoa, that's a very good question. <laughs> I think my first wish would have been to be Gary. Why, though? Because he's, my fa he's one of my favorite characters. Lena, just so you know, Gary is a small snail pet from Spongebob yeah, it's a okay. that is behaving like a cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it was laughs> okay. meow, meow. But that sounds cute. He is, it is he's pretty extremely cute. cute. Except for some, some passages of this game I saw in the trailer where he is less cute. Well, <laughs> as I said, there, there is not always the best things happening for them in these wish worlds. That's why they need to rescue them. I see. And that's why they head out. But as you mentioned, yes, Gary will be part in the Halloween world that we have in the rock bottom. Ooh, okay. It, it looked pr uh, pretty horrifying. Yeah. No, it's not that horrifying, no <laughs> worries. It's just a little bit creepy, but on a SpongeBob level of creepiness. Ooh! Ooh! ooh, ooh. <coughs> you need hey, a hand? You're still, you're still at so bot top left, you can see that we brought the uh. underpants back from Battle from Bikini Bottom Rehydrator. And everyone knows the more underpants you've got on you, the powerful you are. Yes. Okay. okay. We all know how important underpants are. Yeah, all of us. I wouldn't go outside without <laughs> underpants. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh. <clears throat> well, you do. I plan to mention, mention it again because you see the pizza box. The pizza box. For big fans of the series, they will remember the episode 
where SpongeBob and Patrick deliver pizza. Classic okay. red pizza. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> very good acting there. Thank you. <laughs> I did my well, best. It's a very good example for one of the details that we actually put in the game. Mm -hmm. So what we tried to do is to bring as many references as we could to the original series. Yeah. We put a lot of details all around the world. In every level, you will find references. <clears throat> so I encourage the people out there, please go and watch the uh, gameplay trailer that we released last week and see how many references. Let us know how many references you can actually find can just you, by watching the trailer. Can you tell me roughly how many references are in there? Like, oh, that's too difficult. Oh, I mean, okay. It is so many that we put. More than 100, more than 200. What? <clears throat> I would be a very, a very well educated guess, to be honest. Okay. You need to go the other direction. Oh. Right. You're going back again. That's fine, but because yeah. Oh no, I'm stuck. No, jump off the ledge. That's fine because Patrick is there and he's gonna save you. Oh, everybody Aww. needs a Patrick. Yes, because he's your best friend. Yes. <clears throat> I mean, that's one of the main and core features also of the game. Is what we wanted to focus on is show the relationship that SpongeBob and Patrick together have. It's such a core element in the original series. Yeah. <clears throat> so in the end, I think we're just for SpongeBob we recorded over 2,000 lines with the original cast from the series. With the original cast? Yes, we got them going. So Clancy Brown for for Mr. Krabs. Exactly, we I got Tom Kenny, guy. Tom Kenny yeah. for SpongeBob, and the French narrator. This is one of the things oh. that he's doing. Oh, you're stuck there. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming up. Can you jump when you, oh, oh that was <laughs> the Patrick, wrong direction. Patrick is always there for you. Patrick is always there for you. He's the best. It. Yes. Oh, Rickstaff asks a good question. Did you develop? Uh, did development of the game change anything about how you see the SpongeBob series? That's a very good question. I would say no. Okay. <laughs> because it just got us deeper and deeper into the universe of SpongeBob. I always make this comparison. The, the, the universe of SpongeBob for us basically was like a treasure box in front yeah. of us. And we were, we were taking out so many ideas <clears throat> that we tried to get into the game. And actually, we were also very successful bringing most of the ideas that we have into the game. Especially having all these seven different worlds all themed around a different episode. Yeah. Like the prehistoric world, for example, that we would also see in the gameplay trailer. Yeah. <clears throat> Where you have the sea bear in there and many other references that actually come from this single episode. That's awesome. How did you decide which episodes to focus on? It was, it, it was very difficult at the beginning. Yeah. But what was very important for us with all the seven wish worlds that we have, that they differ very strongly. So they all I have see. a different taste, they all have a different art style, they give you a different feeling. Uh, the original soundtrack that is made, we worked again together with the same composers that we had for Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yeah. So we got to work with them, which was really amazing, and they made a wonderful soundtrack, a very adaptive, adaptive soundtrack. So depending on if it's a stressful situation, the sponsor is just running around, the soundtrack will adapt to the situation that you're playing right now. I see. Okay. And the other cool thing that we got to do is we were working very closely together with uh, Nickelodeon. I need to Actually, kill. you're right now in one of the challenge arenas that we created. Okay. Where you need to defeat all the enemies before okay. you can actually proceed. I said kill the enemy, but killing is no. not part of We do this not game. kill. We do not kill in Sparkle. We only defeat them. Of course. So don't forget to get the cactus juice. There you go. Uh, I couldn't uh, before because the yes. enemy was there. Yeah, the enemy is watching. Now he's going to the long flight back to Mr. Krabs. It's satisfying to get those bubbles. I like the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hungry right now? Mm, Everybody maybe. loves the pizza. <laughs> <coughs> so now you can return to Mr. Krabs, and he will tell you that you need to you deliver him the cactus juice. Oh, okay. Guys. Mr. Krabs in the series is a very greedy guy. <coughs> so if you get back, now you need to deliver the cactus juice. That's what he's telling you. How can I deliver it? Juice, juice in the, the barrel yet. yet. Juice in the barrel yet. Did oh, you okay. drop it there? No. no. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Okay. There you go, now you can proceed to the next area. How long is one of these areas going to be? Well, the total playtime, what we're aiming at is eight hours uh -huh. total. But there will also be uh, revisiting what we're building. So you will get abilities later in your level. There's around 15 abilities that SpongeBob will learn from the game. Awesome. Some of them are exclusive to a level, some of them you will keep. <clears throat> so for example, in the karate level, you learn the karate kick. Of course, what else? And there will be parts in the earlier levels that yeah. are blocked out to you until you learn this ability. And then you can travel back to unlock more currency so that you can unlock more costumes. I see. And 
Speaking about costumes, because you just said this keyword, and I'm very <laughs> interested in how many costumes there will be and what they will look like. So right now we uh, have over 30 costumes yeah. in the game. We wanted this to be a very core part, because for us it was difficult to decide what should SpongeBob actually look like? Having just the basic SpongeBob throughout the whole game, yeah. I thought that would be boring because there is so many different ways how SpongeBob is actually dressing up throughout the whole series. Yeah. And so we put in over 30 costumes. Most of them, uh, some of them are themed around the levels. So in the karate level, of course, uh, you will get the iconic red big hands that SpongeBob is having in the episode. So yeah. you can do your karate with Sandy. Uh huh. And in prehistoric, if you watch the trailer, you will see that. Uh, SpongeBob is in his prehistoric outfit, and all the outfits you can unlock through the game, they do not have an effect on the gameplay. Uh -huh. What we wanted to do is give the player the choice to play with the SpongeBob that you like the most. Oh no, I'm stuck. Oh, oh no, what happened there? Oh no, oh, you I... found an invisible wall over there. Oh, invisible. <laughs> Whoa. That's how you get those fast and, and quick speed runs. I think, yeah, I think, yeah the, the speed runners will now looking will be now looking at this and they're like, okay, okay, they, they're already taking notes. <laughs> yeah. I already see them taking notes. Speaking of speed runners, <laughs> I think you're aware of that. That's a very interesting thing to see. But okay, before mm. before you answer my question, maybe you get her out of there. I just walk around. Let's see where you can get. Yeah, I okay. try. <clears throat> because the speed runners. There was a very big community mm. for Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. So <laughs> you're definitely aware of the speedrunning community, but you need to get this 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 right because yeah. um, the other audience you have are probably, well, mostly Can kids yes. and younglings. Of course. Now, what we focused on, what we wanted to have, is a very classic, straightforward jump and run experience. Yeah. Like the, what <clears throat> the players can enjoy because the focus is very strongly about the narrative. And it doesn't look like you can escape from there, right? Yeah, can you reset, it looks respawn? like I'm not getting out of there. Yeah, we would actually need to restart there. Okay, how can I restart? End the session. And reset? Ah, do reset player. Sorry, I forgot about that one. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. That's fine. Now you're back. There you go. Nice. Now we're good again. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, you were talking about the difficulty of <coughs> yes, the every difficulty, audience. Yeah, so um, what we put in, you see on the, on the left side on the screen, the main objectives that are displayed there. You have the objective pointer that will always give you a direction where to go next. Uh huh. So that's the platform where you use the bubble shoot. You saw the tutorial because it's the right button. Um, RB. Also, okay. There you go. And now you've got a bouncy platform. But these you can turn off, so the, the, all the help that you have in the game you can turn off. But we wanted to make it as convenient as possible for the younger audience. Yeah. <clears throat> but the more experienced player can turn them off and give themselves more of a challenge if they want. Okay, to. so you can suit the experience, the, play, the gaming experience to your liking. Yes, exactly. So okay, that's cool. Thinking about that. That was very important was to basically speak to all audiences because SpongeBob is not only bound to the younger people yeah. out there. <clears throat> I mean. Also, I am a big SpongeBob fan. <laughs> so are you? Yeah, of course. There you go. And I found out about that when I was watching. I think I was like 16 or 17 when I rewatched the um, the older SpongeBob uh, episodes. And I, when you're too young, you miss so many jokes. If you're at full health, you won't be able to collect. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You miss so many jokes in the series when you're too young to get them. That's true. And then you can really enjoy them once you're older. There is also some of those in there. As okay. I said, we were we had the great opportunity to work with the writers directly from Nickelodeon. They reviewed our scripts, they helped us out, they wrote some jokes for us. And I suppose they love that you do this game, that you develop this yes, game. Yes, they did. They had a lot of fun. Okay. They really awesome. liked our ideas, they liked our interpretation of their actual content. Okay, and that's a compliment, right? It's the biggest you can get. I mean, it's the creators of the show, yeah. yeah. <laughs> were you watching lots of SpongeBob before you worked on this game? Yes. I mean, okay. I, I basically, I think I started watching SpongeBob since when it started coming out. Okay. So yes, I'm old dead old. <laughs> 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 but it's always been one of my favorites. Everyone at home can now Google how old you might be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I want this game for free, says Brian Cutler. I don't think it'll be like that. No, it won't be for free. That's for sure. Because all of this commitment and work that goes into a game like this, it should be well rewarded, guys. 
There's so much love. No, and as you can see, yes, we did put a lot of work in there. Yeah. All our artists, our animators, our programmers, our testers, never forget about them. Our sound artists, <clears throat> all of them did an amazing job. Um, Max Rocket asks, question for the dev. Will we be able to see Dead Eye Gulch and Mrs. Puff's boating school and is Mary Jo Catlett reprising her role as Mrs. Puff in the Cosmic Shake? Well, there will be a ref. Mrs. Puff is definitely in the game. Okay. She appears in multiple levels. Awesome. And also her boating sp school will be in the game. But how it will be displayed, how we uh, put it, in incorporate it into the story, I do not want to spoil it. Okay. Alina, um, you picked it up, I think, yeah. pretty well because yes. this is the farthest yes. someone yes. has come yes. into the demo impressed. right now. I'm highly impressed. Yeah. What is what is your experience? Did you, well, did, do you think you picked it up well? Was it getting easier and easier for you? Yes, um, I like platformers and the gameplay is very smooth and it works well. And I think, yeah, it will be a good game. And I'm a fan now. <laughs> maybe maybe I will look SpongeBob Success. now. <laughs> what? Start watching SpongeBob. Where, where should one start watching SpongeBob? In the first I was always or? recommend start at the very beginning. OK. Because the old Steve Hillenberg humor is also what we oriented ourselves for that game on. Because we are old school fans. <clears throat> and these series are still able to be watched today. Yeah. Also, the younger audience will know these episodes. So we basically get everybody that knows SpongeBob from the very beginning until today. Everybody awesome. will get the references. Everybody will understand what we're pointing at, what we want to show to the players, and also the experience that we want to give to them. Yeah, so Lena, please enjoy SpongeBob from now on. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I will. What is your favorite character from what you've seen so far? Mm, I think the the green... Um, I, I, I was riding on this. The green seahorse. Sea yes. Horse, yes. So you're a sucker for animals. Yeah. yeah. Love those. <laughs> awesome. It was a short time uh, playing this, but I loved it. <laughs> I saw it and I was like, mm. of course, riding in a Western level. So yeah. there's many more sections with the seahorse yeah. that you can use him. Yeah. And yeah, so please, I'm really looking forward for you playing the game then. Yeah. Do you have a favorite mechanic in the game? <clears throat> I can always or, always mention the karate kick. It's okay. one of my favorites. I see. Because <clears throat> it's one of these abilities that reflects what more of the abilities have is not just for moving through the levels, but also using them in combat. Mm -hmm. So they usually have functions for both, and they help you a lot and bring a lot of fun. Okay. So for us, combining all these abilities that you learn throughout the game, combining them, expanding them, chaining them, it was a big challenge, <clears throat> but it was also a lot of fun. <laughs> That's awesome to hear. Um, your community, by the way, already wants you to play this game once it comes out. All right. Hey. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Double success. That's safe. We will do this. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, thank you, guys. And I'll make sure oh. you get a copy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, see, this is how friendships are made. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I can see the question there, when does this come out from Byron Cutler? I cannot tell you yet. What I can tell like you... Like every dev says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I can tell you, within the next weeks, it shall be announced. Oh, there's so an yeah, announcement? Please follow the Teach, Teach Nordic's social media channels. Or your Discord? Do you have a Discord server? No, I don't. Okay. But you stay with the official channels. Okay. Those are the ones. And in the next couple of weeks, there and will there be a release date for the Cosmic Shake. Yeah, awesome. The Cosmic Shake, by the way, is an homage to the Harlem Shake. So it is a dance Not move. really. Thing. But <clears throat> every, everybody has his own interpretation of the Cosmic Shake. Okay. So what would be your Cosmic Shake? A cosmic Shake? Uh, maybe like a dancing move. Okay. Yeah, sure. but what, uh, what kind of dancing move? That's your cosmic thing. shake. Yeah, go, <laughs> this I is a cosmic do. shake. <laughs> and while we're doing the cosmic shake, thank you for joining me, both of you. Thank you for playing. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for having me again. Thank you for giving your first impression. And thank we keep you. on shaking. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do a short break where we, well, dancing on. And after the break, I'll be back with the, um, well, showing you what comes up tomorrow and what you can, well, look forward to in tomorrow's stream. But until then, we've got a short break, like two minutes, maybe one minute. So stay tuned. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody. Like I said, this break was very short. And I think you saw during the break pictures of what it looks like here at Gamescom right now. And it is empty because 
there's only 20 minutes of Gamescom left for today, so people are like searching their way, looking for a way out of the halls to get to the buses and to the train stations and so on um, before they are too full because I can guarantee you that this Gamescom is very crowded and I think as um, there are as many people here as in the Gamescom as before. Um, no, I would love to, but I live in South America. You would like to come here to Gamescom? Well, just book a flight. Maybe just book a flight, that's always a possibility. And then you can come to our stand, to our booth here, THQ Nordic. We're in Hall 8 and there are many games you can try out here, the gameplay demos. There are live wrestling matches to, to look at. That's awesome as well. So I think it's cool to visit Gamescom this year again. Um, the amount of people is insane, says Warpixel, so trust him. Trust him. Stuntfest, baby! Yeah. Stuntfest, that was cool, wasn't it? What was your highlight today? Because some of you, I think, watched the whole stream. And yeah, that dedication, thank you very much. But what was the coolest thing you saw today? That's a question I want you to answer me. Because I've answered lots of questions. The devs answered lots of questions from you. So yet yeah, now's the time to answer some questions from me. Don't disappoint me, chat. AEW Warpixel says, Stunfest again, Cosmic Shake. I really love this show, I watched it all. Nice! That's cool. I'm glad you enjoy it. Lena Bug Fixing Games Live was great. Yeah, I think she helped the developers a lot. <laughs> Recreation moments, they were great as well. Mina Kicks did a great job playing Recreation. I've got something in my teeth, excuse me, please. And and you 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 put the camera on that shows me directly. Is that is that right, tech guys? Is that right? Well, let me let me help you with a good shot here. Is it gone? Is it still there? I think it's gone. Thank you very much, camera guy on point. Stuntfest and SpongeBob AEW Cosmic Shake was the best. I'm glad I could please you. Other things. We did today with Spellforce Conquest of EO, which I was very much looking forward to because I'm a sucker for turn-based strategy games. We did The Valiant with Brad and another developer, I think Jimbo was his name, where we showed off lots of content which was never seen before. Um, we played, of course, SpongeBob, we played Outcast 2, we, sh we showcased Recreation, Stuntfest, like we did just, um, I think, half an hour ago or one hour ago. We showed you a live wrestling match here behind me on the wrestling ring, which was pretty awesome. Now it's, yeah, well, pretty empty. Say hi, Evil Uno and Angelico. <laughs> yeah, they were there as well. Alone in the Dark, Not Command and Conquer, Outcast 2 was your hi were your highlights. Awesome. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I want to let you know what's going on tomorrow because I think you might enjoy that even more than you did today. So let's take a look at the program graphic in a few minutes <laughs> because the tech guys just told me it is not ready yet. But you will have a look at that soon. Um, lol, he read it. What did I read? Are you still going? I was in here this morning. Yeah, I'm still going. I think I hosted this show for like 10 hours today and I did that yesterday or no the day before yesterday as well tomorrow Lena my wonderful co-host will again host this show all day long and I've got a break where I can pull the strings behind the scenes organize some stuff which is always great as well more booth tours to let people in front of the line yes there will be more booth tours today and I will as, al um, as always mess with people, annoy people, and put people in front of the line to annoy even more people. I still have a bad conscience about what I did on the first day of Gamescom. No, it was yesterday. It was yesterday, in fact. That was... That was horrible from me, because to let you know if you've not seen it, I... Well, I pretty much put four people because they answered a quiz question right. I think it was about Destroy Humans 2. They answered a quiz question right and correctly, 
and therefore I put them in front of the line, let them skip the queue to the game, and the queue was long. And if I say long, I mean enormously long. And just imagine being or waiting for two hours to play Destroy All Humans 2, and then you're the next to go, and then some guy comes in, brings four people in front of you, and they will get in there before you do. That must feel horrible. And I still, it still haunts my dreams what I did there. And I will do the same tomorrow, so you <laughs> look forward to that, please. Um, I swear I really love the vibes and everything else at Gamescom. Yeah, same. I really love working here because, in fact, this room is air-conditioned. So it's not as warm, as hot in here as it is in the halls behind me, which is a great privilege to have. Also, behind me there's this balcony from which I, which I have a great place to watch the wrestling matches on. So, and, well, that's... It's not a downside per se, but it's kind of weird. I mean, it's not that weird because you're also seeing me right now, but the people that are staying or walking here behind me in the hall can see me through this glass. So they can watch me from behind and my, well, the back of my head. I don't know how attractive it is, to be honest. Wow, get some sleep. I will get some sleep tonight, I hope. But thing is, there are also many parties here at Gamescom. You gotta attend. And, well, that and working the whole day, it's pretty exhausting, but it's also so much fun. And we will have this fun until Sunday. In fact, we will stream tomorrow and the day after that again. So stay tuned for that. And speaking of tomorrow, let's show the program graphic for tomorrow because there's much going on there, I promise you. We've got the morning show with Lena and Flo tomorrow morning. Then who the fuck is Handy Games? Handy Games, spoiler alert, the indie publisher, indie game publisher from THQ Nordic, and they will talk about that a bit. Then Stuntfest with Lena and Lumina at 11 a.m. and then 11.30 alone in the dark, probably. Then 12 p.m., a booth tour with Daniel, that's obviously me. 12.30, Outcast with two awesome guests, 2 p.m. The Valiant, 2.30, the exit from Handy Games. Let's go on and show you more. Destroy All Humans 2 at 3 p.m. at 3.30, a booth tour with probably me, I suppose, because Lena is hosting here. Um, then Endling at 4 p.m. and then SpongeBob SquarePants the Cosmic Shake, Max Rocket, yeah, there's more SpongeBob for you. Then at five, there's again the wrestling match. Then we've got Stuntfest. Then we've got Tempest Rising at 6 p.m. and 6.30 six, uh, Spellforce Conquest of EO, which is, I think, one of the games I, I look most forward to to play on my own time. Then Recreation at 7 p.m. and at 7.30, we say goodbye again. But of course, there's even more. We still have the Sunday to look forward to when tomorrow's stream ends. But to end, tomorrow's stream needs to start, of course. And that'll be tomorrow at 10 a.m. I hope you like the stream today. I did, of course. And I hope you'll tune in tomorrow morning as well. Or if you live far away in America, tomorrow in the earliest possible mornings. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, but I can't change the time zone Germany is in. Everything you just saw is CEST, of course. Um, I can't wait as well, so I hope you don't miss the stream too much and you will, well, um, will not be so uh, like um, the word, the word doesn't come to my mind. You won't be missing the stream as much as I do. And um, then we see each other at the booth tour tomorrow. You see Lena at 10 a.m., like I said. Until then, have a great day. Have a great night. And until tomorrow, bye. <laughs>